Yeah! Get the f*** out of the country! This is Jewish country only! We don't need Muslims here! Yeah. Welcome to The Daily Wrap-Up, a concise show dedicated to bringing you the most relevant, independent news as we see it from the last 24 hours. Oops. <laughs> hate when I do that. Sunday, October 8th, 2023. Thank you for joining me today. Really important show, actually. One of, I mean, there's a, we've covered a lot of important things over the years, but important today for one in one particular reason that I think this is probably one of the most comprehensive Israel focused shows that I've done in a long time. And I've done a lot of work over the years trying to break down the reality of this topic, going all the way back to when I was new to the topic over a decade ago, trying to understand the nuance of it all and realized right away that there's a lot of lies flying around. And over the years, it's evolved here and there in different parts, more understanding, you know, the, the realization of, of what different aspects are funding different things. And sometimes it appears to be the reverse. I, I learned through Robert a long time ago that the, for instance, the, like the PLO or, or the Palestinian authority are not what they appear to be. And that's an important dynamic in all of this, not even necessarily for today, but just to realize how much of this is misunderstood by, I would argue the majority of people out there, even the honest people who are trying to, to see a balance, take a balanced perspective and try to understand the, the, hardships of both sides of this dynamic. And I don't, and I mean that in the civilian sense, the people that live in Israel that don't want any part in this and sometimes support Palestinians and people in Palestine that don't want any part of the di the back and forth and, and sometimes support Israelis in the, in the sense of civilian concept. And I think that most people seem to be missing certain parts of this. So I think today is important to go through and just break this down as best as possible. We had an outstanding interview with Vanessa Beely yesterday, which was the daily wrap up. We just focused alone on that topic. And again, today, there are so many things that I that I had planned yesterday on getting into. Probably, I mean, all the things I was talking about, the, the transgender focus, I have a whole segment that I've been planning to get into. I mean, literally, it was probably going to be maybe two shows, super long ones. And this happened, and I this deserves our attention. This is, a, this is an event that is likely, is capable of changing everything around the world. And it doesn't just have to do with what's going on in occupied Palestine. There's a lot more at play here. And I think that's why this is so important to the U.S. government, to, to most of the, of, what, of the West in the European powers. I mean, all around the world, especially the Middle East. I mean, obviously, and we'll get into a lot of that today. So let's get into, well, first, starting with the follow-up from uh, yesterday's interview with Vanessa Bealey. The, the clip that I played there in the beginning was from... Uh, Mint Press News, just showing you the, some of the sentiment that plenty of the Israelis or, or Jews or Israeli Jews share in regard to how they perceive the Palestinians or rather just foreigners alone. As we've talked about many times over the years, the Ethiopian Jews or, or any kind of migrant Jews that aren't white are treated pretty much just like the Palestinians in most cases, or even Orthodox Jews that speak out about the Zionist control over what they pretend is going, well, specifically the concept they claim is that Zionism is using Judaism to manipulate Jews. You can believe it or not. The point is they're Orthodox Jews that are trying to get your attention to say that you're being played by the Zionist government and they get beat up by the IDF. And then the Western powers don't tell you that when they say that it's all about protecting the Jews. Right. There's a lie going on right there. If you can't see it, you're choosing to ignore it. Now, the point is that there's politics around all of this. So try to take a step back from your opinions, from what you think, you know, and and keep an open mind what we go through today. Many, much of it you may agree with. But my point about all of this is that even myself, I question what we're being told, what we're looking at from either side of this, because every side has an interest in trying to get you to see or think what they want you to. That doesn't mean it's not the truth. But in many cases, it's not. So let's start with this again. Great, great interview slash daily wrap up from yesterday. Israel declares a state of war, which technically wasn't official until today. And I'll show you that clip. But that was Netanyahu stating that after attacks, despite 75 years of war on Palestine. 
which that was my first thought. It's just really insulting for them to pretend like they're declaring war when they have been at war with Palestine since, I mean, oh, more than 75 years ago, but definitely from the first Nakba forward. And we're talking about the context of framing this as we're starting a war, st we're declaring a state of war, because that gets the average person who doesn't really know anything other than what CNN and Fox News tell them, which let's not miss how in lockstep all of the supposed two parties are when it comes to Israel in particular, but usually war in general. But the idea that if we're now in a state of war, that means before you know, everything was fine because of what they just did. Now we're in a state of war. It don't 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 you know, mind any of the torture and imprisonments and displacement or or murder or I mean on and on and on or the bombings and the uh, the extrajudicial assassinations. None of that's mattered up until now because that's we nothing happened until yesterday. That's how most people might take what they're being presented by pretty much everybody in the Western controlled media or just the mainstream media around the world. We talk about a lot in this discussion. Now, very quickly, I'm going to show you a couple things that I don't want you to miss that we went over yesterday. That is, well, first of all, the point of how insulting it is and should be, if you care about human life, that nobody seemed to blink when predominantly civilians were killed in Syria days before this started or this this ver this surge started hundreds of syrians mostly families their children and it was it was a ceremony to celebrate the graduation of new military recruits so obviously this is not even remotely a military target other than the fact that you may be okay with murdering young cadets their families their family's children and they're related you know and mostly there to celebrate what they're doing and then a couple of military people there to support what they're doing because that would later become military people but the point nonetheless is this was a a, a terrorist attack no matter how you spin it nobody seemed to care now, no, none of the ones that are screaming foul right now with what's going on currently, while they ignore one half of the story right now and only point at a lot of unverified information flying around. The point is that this matters. If anything, this is human life. And then you could, of course, tie this back, especially to people like is to groups like governments like Israel that routinely bombs in domestic civilian areas in Syria without any issue, not even a report from the Western media all the time, because their narrative is, at the very least, because Iran's there. Well, that's not a crime. That's an ally of Syria. So you're saying you're okay bombing civilians, which is what they do in Damascus all the time, whether or not this involves Israel, because Iran, who is an ally of Syria and invited to be there, is present because you don't like what they're doing? You know what that would mean if that was a valid bombing target? That literally everyone around the world could bomb anywhere in the U.S. whenever they wanted because of what the U.S. does all around the world. But that wouldn't fly, would it? Or in reverse with Israel or anything else. The point is, we all know that somewhere in our minds. And we just pretend, or those that don't want to see this, pretend like there's something we don't understand. Look, it's so much more complex than that. Yeah, no, it's not. Which is the real point here, which I'm kind of jumping to a tweet that we're going to get to in a minute. It's really not, actually. But the fact is that nobody blinked an eye when this happened. No one even talks about it. But now we're all screaming about something else. Which, yes, there are things happening here in regard to civilians in Israel civilian you know occupied palestine or civilians in gaza all of this is terrible nobody should condone any of this in regard to civilians we get to the military aspect well there's a conversation to be had about how this has been going on and how this is an like this is like saying in a war which is what this has been since we can re remember that this is an occupied territory as has always been maintained by the un narratives on twitter don't make a difference when the un has always maintained this reality and you can legally prove it and we'll get into the Geneva Conventions and what that means regarding armed rebellion. But the idea being that if they continue to be at war with this occupied territory and they're fighting back, when one fights, it doesn't become a terrorist attack. That's what we're talking about. Now, when you bring in civilians, yes, there, be, there is a whole dynamic there. But if we're going to start to cry foul about civilians being targeted in war, then let's take a step back and still care about what's happening now. But let's not forget that Israel does this on a regular basis, that the U.S. government does this on a regular basis, that the U.K. government does this on a regular basis, that the France government, French government does on a Should I continue? But see, nobody cares about any of those in this context where they're only pointing out one side of the argument. I care about all of it. I care about the Israeli citizens that are being hurt right now because of either Hamas or Palestinians or people pretending to be those. And that's possible, too. And we will get into that. 
because it matters, because they're civilians, because they're human beings. But see, I am the weirdo. I am the extremist, apparently, today for caring about both sides. And we'll get into that as well. Now, Steve Clark points out, you'll note that there was no condemnation from the West in regard to 80 dead and rising from the terrorist attack in Syria. 240 plus injured, including children, a huge number for Syrian hospitals devastated by war, which they refused to allow to rebuild, you know, because freedom, right? Their selective morality is something to behold. I truly think people most, I truly think most people out there recognize the hypocrisy. I really do. And before we get even further, let's make sure we understand something. Think, I'm so happy to see Sarah Abdallah back on Twitter or back in general, whether Twitter or elsewhere, because she really does bring an important perspective. She says in the last 50 years alone, feel free to check this for those that would like to pretend this isn't true. The United States has invaded and bombed the following countries. Now, my point is it's way, way more than this. But just for the people that want the specific and the main important declared kind of conversations. Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Grenada, Lebanon, Panama, Iraq, Sudan, Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, Somalia, Pakistan, Libya, Mali, Syria, Yemen, and on 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 and on. Spare us the lectures about human rights, Blinken. On August 30th, here's what he said. Governments that violate human rights are almost always the same ones that flout other parts of that order. Yeah, you're. I mean, what's hilarious is I know he knows somewhere that he's sort of speaking about themselves. And so uh, the Israeli government or plenty of other governments, and that includes on any side, the Russian government, the Chinese government. These are the, these are the entities that regularly give lip service to certain parts of international orders and then ignore them when they want to. That applies to any of them, guys. This isn't about U.S. only, but in this context, that's going to be largely a focus today. But the point is these power structures do not care. They care about it controlling your life. So you're right, Lincoln, because that is what the U.S. government has historically, provably, verifiably done repeatedly since its inception. It says, such as invading, coercing, and threatening other countries. Gee, who, I mean, what an interesting statement. Could we go over the numerous large examples of Syria and, Leb and, and Libya and Afghanistan and, and Bolivia and Venezuela coercing, invading, and threatening? Come on, guys. I mean, this is just embarrassing. Or breaking trade rules. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Or, you know, UN mandates or agreements via NATO or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it only matters when our bad guy friends don't do what we tell them they're supposed to do. We'll continue to take a stand for human rights for all, says the leading human rights violator of the world. But this is where we are. And I truly, again, think most people see this, even the ones that don't want to say it out loud because it's not politically advantageous for them. You know, like the left right paradigm People that I really don't respect, let's put it that way. <laughs> but let's let's go into some of this information. So the security cabinet approves declaration of war as of three hours ago today from Jerusalem Post staff posting this, basically saying that they have now declared legally, they say, that this is they're in a state of war, which I guess that then interestingly points out that they've been illegally at war with them this whole time. But, you know, who's going to talk about that in the paradigm? Article 40, it says, allows the government to order significant military action that may lead with a level of, of probability close to certain to war. The prime minister will be able to make certain decisions with only the approval of the security cabinet. Great. So what we're really talking about is martial law, which is really no different than what they're trying to do with judicial reforms in a kind of theocratic way, but also just what they've already been doing for a long time now. The cabinet also requests that the Knesset approve the activation of emergency regulations. So here we swing it right back into emergency declarations. So now one second it was COVID, the next it was climate change. Now we're back to war. It's all the same deal. Emergency. Give us the power to do what we want behind the scenes under a guise that we need those powers because you need our protection. It says, which would allow detainees to be held for extended periods without being brought before a court. So literally no different than what's currently happening with Palestine? Yeah, got it. Okay. So this is just the legal cover for what they've been doing for 75 years. Easy to prove. I mean, one of the most easy things to prove in this entire conversation. It's embarrassing. You know how many people are held? I don't know the number off top, numbers off the top of my head. I mean, oh, I just realized something. I'm supposed to be not talking as fast today. I didn't even get it for, for somebody important in my life that has a hard time listening to me when I speak very fast but I'm all ramped up and there's a lot to talk about. But my, the point is there's a lot of people detained in occupied Palestine. Robert's been writing about this for years. There are so many, with, I mean, indefinite people that are held without trial 
for extended periods of time that end up being indefinite or people that are held for arbitrary reasons and let go years later. I mean, it's obscene, but it's no different than what the U.S. government does around the world. It still happens well past Guantanamo Bay, but, you know, that's not fun to talk about for people that are rah-rah America, as some put it, but West backs Israel's right to defend. We'll get into that a lot today. Middle East nations demand ceasefire. Well, what's interesting is the right to defend, and we're going to get into this today in particular. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing that they still push this line. Does anybody, I mean, anywhere in the world, actually state that someone somewhere doesn't have a right to defend themselves? Take a second and think about that. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. So why is it so important for them all to unanimously stand up and say, they have the right to defend them? Yeah, we all get it. Everyone in the world has the right to defend themselves. That's one, not what's happening here. But clearly it's about setting a certain kind of narrative. So going forward, it's, you know, the preemptive self-defense argument. And we'll get into that as well. Dan Cohen writes, well, actually, let's go back before we get to his point. And this is about this whole dynamic of the way people perceive all of this. Now, first, what we're going to go through here is sort of this kind of discussion that some of these tweets are getting into about, you know, this is not new. As much as they really want this to be something that is new, this is just happening. And, or as Tracy is going to try to argue that no matter what the reality or legalities or human rights situations, what they're doing is only going to make it worse. So do nothing because I'm pretending to be smart. That's what it appears to me. Or, you know, that I've got a hot take on the situation that somehow... You know, a lot of these like kind of rebels in their minds, these people that are like quasi mainstream pundits on Twitter that act like they're like the rebellious ones from 10 years ago. <laughs> they're just cutouts from corporate media with a slightly different point. But Rebach Brown points out today should be a day of celebration for supporters of democracy and human rights worldwide. As Gazans break out of their open air prison and Hamas fighters cross into colonial co colonializers territory. The struggle for freedom is rarely bloodless, and we shouldn't apologize for it. Now, with that point, you still have to acknowledge, or at least I would argue, and I may, there's, there's plenty of people out there that are going to argue that what happens even with the detained in, civilians or people getting shot, that that's just what happens in war. And, you know, they're not really wrong. I do not, I'm not saying they even condone it. They're just pointing out that reality. But my point is that I don't, in any sense, want people to go, yeah, that's just what happened. I don't think that's the right response. It matters when civilians are hurt in any sense. If we're going to care about it when the U.S. government does it all over the world, we should care about it when it happens in any situation and defend it, whether or not they're Israeli or Iranian or whatever. But the point is we must realize how that then gets weaponized, too, and how then people in situations like that can fake things like that, like the made on square lie or false flag that was carried out to justify what happened in Ukraine or the lies in Venezuela about them shooting sniper or in Iraq or the many times they pretended that civilians were killed to justify their illegal actions. All that being said, what she's arguing here from a broad perspective is justified that we're in a situation legally where people have been under a boot for almost a century and they're fighting back. Now, that, again, is important in and of its own, in its own discussion. That is a valid point. Now, all the rest of the screaming and flailing is about the fact that that's not how people argue that's simply not true, even though it's easy to prove. But when we talk about the fact that there are people that are doing terrible things while this thing is happening, which we should argue is legally justified, because it is, via the Geneva Convention of the United Nations, that the things that are happening should be called out, just like I call them out in any circumstance. That what they did now, again, this is if we are able to verify one that the people carrying them out. And I would say the same thing in any other situation. I caution the same thing when it happens in Ukraine, whether Russia says it or Ukraine. You guys know this. When it's, Russia says they did this, well, we said this is something we need to verify. And then, and then historically, when you can look back and see that one side in particular, like Ukraine, has been caught lying over and over, well, that has to factor into your perception. In this case, what we know is that you have people that have been under a boot this entire time and are taking some of this out on average people. And I don't condone that. Nobody should condone that. But at the same time, as I said yesterday, you can understand why they may be in that position and still argue aggressively, but they should be held legally accountable for what they just did, just like a U.S. Marine would if they raped, murdered, or robbed somebody in any other foreign country, despite how that rarely ever comes to fruition. You see where I'm going with this? I'm going to really nail that point home because it's important. Now, what this says under context, it says the actions of Hamas have been, and this is why I think it's funny. This is why these community notes are just sometimes, it's just like any other time before the Elon era of Twitter. To me, most of the times they're not, they're more towing lines than anything else. 
but it says the actions of Hamas have been described. Oh, let's see. I didn't know it did that. Has been described. It's easier to read it this way, actually, as terrorism by every Western government. Well, what does that even mean? All that really means is the every Western government, which, by the way, that's not even actually true. I could point out different, but just to take it from their point, that Western governments have a political side in this. Or it could mean that it's terrorism. But the point is, just because they state this from governments that are their, their jobs are to misrepresent realities to sell you on things that will benefit them, maybe we should question that. But it's funny how they just put that in as the fact check. But it says, democracy and human rights do not condone violence to achieve a political end. And Hamas has not cited democracy or human rights as reasons for their attack. False. And this is what I think is hilarious about this. I mean, I, now, I was going to have... Um, I. I interviewed with uh, Fiorella Isabella um, uh, a couple hours ago. We'll play as we go further, further on and get to her point. We had to record it earlier because she she had more stuff to do today. And I was going to be connecting with Sam Hussein to get his take on this, but he was he's going to protest at the White House, actually. And he it turns out that the, the settings just aren't going to be able to do it, so we're going to have to postpone. But he does have an article we'll point out again in a second. A few critical points on Israel and Hamas. Now, I'll read some of these in a minute, but one of his main points is Apparently, nobody cares that Hamas has put out their own statement. Just showing you how egregiously dishonest all this is. Whether or not you feel that you can trust what they're saying, as a journalist, of course you should go, well, here's what Hamas says they're doing it for. So this is why this is important when you can go to this kind of point and they go, well, they have not even talked about what they're doing. Yeah, they have. Right away, in fact, they came out and told everybody Operation Aska Flood, as Al-Aska being the, the mosque that's very important to the Muslim culture, they say, is a strategic track to respond to committed Israeli crimes. Okay, so right there, we already know that they're doing this under their statements because of human rights. And yet they go, that's not true. They haven't even said that. But also the absurd part of this fact check, saying that democracy and human rights do not condone violence to achieve political ends. Guys, that is literally what governments do around the world. Just because they scream the word freedom does not like they go and they act like that's appropriate. What do you what do you call what's happening in Ukraine and all the U.S. and everyone trying to support that? Or what do you call every time the U.S. government has tried to intervene for democracy? Is that not violence? How insultingly stupid is that? But how about we go a step further and realize? I don't know if I have it lined up next. I don't. But. And we'll get to it. The fact that, as I've said many, many times, the UN has always maintained, because it is, that this is an occupied territory. And the Geneva Conventions made very clear, some people have started to point out it finally, that they have a right to armed rebellion because they're occupied. Not if they're attacked first. It doesn't matter who goes back and forth first. If they're illegally occupied. So they can get arms and fight back for their territory at any point, at any time. Now, that means military, not civilian, right? So when you're saying that democracy doesn't condone violence, it literally does. Literally condones violence if you're an occupied territory. So this is, again, these are readers adding context that don't have any clue likely what they're pointing at. But either way, this is an important thing to understand. Now, this statement is independent of whether there are civilian actions and either side breaking the rules. We have to be able to pull back from the larger point there. Like, this is the same as realizing, or, or you know, the, the any number of the wars you want to look at, where you have a situation where you can argue there is a moral standing in there, and then people within that act in their own regard, their own, they do what they want in every war in history. And you could take that and argue that because of their actions, that means everybody in that position is bad. Or you could take it with a grain of salt and realize that in any war situation, people will act. And that's not meant to condone. Please hear me on that. Any acts of violence that are happening. I'm going to go over some of the most egregious, the, the, the few that I'm able to actually prove and what, what I can tell is going on. Now, I, there's one that seems to be an IDF member that's being misrepresented as somebody who's a civilian. So if they're an IDF member, that's a military target. I'm still not condoning rape or murder or any of that kind of stuff ever, ever, ever. But the idea is that if you're a military target, well, that becomes a valid target in the eyes of war. But there's also a German tattoo artist that it appears, as far as I can tell, that has seemed to have been confirmed by at least some corporate media, again, still question, that was the, the person that was killed in the back of that truck. And we'll talk about that. Again, I, 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 from yesterday on, I've never been the person to say that, that thing, that's not possible. But Vanessa and others have already argued that the people that were in that video do not even look or act represent like the people that they know have interviewed and talked to in these factions that more alike or more 
emulate, represent, and act like the people that they've seen coming from Syria, which is, again, one of the reasons we'll get to at the end. It's important to understand that they have already been moving these Syrian extremists into the Ukraine war and elsewhere. There's evidence that we can show you and we'll get to of them being moved right up to the border of Israel. Why? We'll talk about it toward the end, but we went, I mean, Vanessa and I talked about it as well. The idea being that there's a lot more going on than just what you can see on Fox and CNN. Now, Kim Iverson points out the war raging in Israel, occupied Palestine, was 100% provoked. Understand this, guys. It's just like the lie they gave you in Russia, and as she's going to say right here. It's, it's, you just, and again, that may not justify it in your mind, but you need to be honest about the fact that 75 years of illegal occupation, you know, it's kind of justifiable to respond to. And a long time brewing. Like the current Russia-Ukraine conflict, many have been warning of this for a very long time. Israel has been subjugating and torturing an entire group of people for decades. How long did anyone think they could go before rising up to defend themselves? And they have many times before this, actually. War is horrendous. She says, I'm horrified by all who die on both sides of any war. Israel needs to get serious about negotiating a genuine good faith peace agreement with Palestinians, or this will happen again and again. Well, sadly, either that's her, in my opinion, kind of throwing a nod to some of the people that think there's some kind of a resolution to be had here, or that maybe she doesn't realize how egregiously extremist the current Israeli government are is. They're not doing this. The, the religious Zionism party or the, fa the, fa the faction of the coalition currently in power is aggressively saying never, ever, ever going to have a two-state solution. Saying openly, these people don't deserve to exist. We will never let them do any of that. And then Biden steps up and goes, we just talked to them and they want a two-state solution. So they're either lying to the Biden administration, who is unable apparently to listen to what they say outside of their own meetings, or they're lying to you as well. And Netanyahu is just the same. They've said this many, many times. You know what? Why don't we start with this? Since I'm making that point kind of right now, the reality of what they've been saying about these people forever. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to find similar statements coming from Palestine about Israelis, civilian or otherwise. But we should then realize not neither side being justified in the kind of statements they're making, but realize that your one side is being illegally occupied and raped and murdered and stolen from and displaced repeatedly for 75 plus years. And that kind of does add some level of justifiability for their perspective never justifying acts of violence against anybody ever. Except, you know, I would add to that the caveat of even from like a libertarian standpoint that I will, and I've always said this, that if you are attacked, your family's attacked, you have a right to defend yourself. But that's where this defense narrative comes into play. That's not really the point that is relevant in the context of a larger nation against occupied territory war, other than the idea of going back to the very beginning of the first occupation. And that's where it started. That's the simple fact. Some reason I'm having trouble finding it. Of course, I just played it. It's an important clip going over the different statements that he's. It's uh, been read off in, in front of the Irish Parliament. I just there it is. Look right over it. Here it is. Let's play this real quick. This is the Defense Minister Moshe Yalom uh, talking just a couple of weeks ago. Israel is going to hurt Lebanese civilians to include kids of the family. We went through a very long discussion. We did it then. We did it in the Gaza Strip. We are going to do it in any round of hostilities in the future. That's the Defence Minister. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Military Chief of Staff, Benny Gantz. The next round of violence will be worse and see this suffering increase. He headed up the military assaults uh, on Gaza, the last uh, two. This is the Minister for Education in the Netanyahu government. There will never be a peace plan with the Palestinians. I will do everything in my power to make sure they never get a state. He also said, if you catch terrorists, you simply have to kill them. I've killed a lot of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that. Uh, this is the Minister for Justice. Palestinians are all enemy combatants. This also includes the, mother, the mothers of the martyrs, they should follow their sons. Nothing would be more just. They should go, as should the physical homes in which they, are, which they raised the snakes. Otherwise, more little snakes will be raised there. That's the Israeli Minister for Justice in the last few months. The Israeli Minister for, uh, Deputy Minister for Defense. Palestinians are beasts. They are not human. Uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs 
CP Hotley, this is the last one. My position is that between the sea and the Jordan River, there needs to be one state only, the state of Israel. There is no place for any agreement of any kind that discusses the concession of Israeli sovereignty over lands conquered in 1967. Now, these are the official statements of several ministers of the current government of Israel. In one case, actually advocating genocide of all Palestinians, including children, and calling them snakes. Now, can I ask you, Taoiseach, uh, do you not think that if we're defining terrorism, that is the language and thinking of terrorists? That it is absolutely unacceptable in civilized politics, in civilized international relations, for the heads of government of a state that we carry on normal relations with and who you met in Paris to advocate those sort of views when we know they have also led on to the deaths of thousands of Palestinians, uh, innocent men, women and children. What have you... Very important. And he's always been speaking out about this for a long time. I, you know, it's just, it's, that's, so that's 2015 he was saying all this, right? I mean, think about what he's saying there. No, no two-state solution. Never, ever, ever, ever. 2015. You know what they were telling you then? That that's the next thing that's going to happen, and it's only the Palestinians that won't let it happen. And they're literally screaming as, to anyone that will listen, it will never let that happen. It's only worse now than it's ever been. Talking about the idea that the mothers of these people need to be taken out and the homes in which they were born. Like, let that bleed into what we're watching happen right now. As you're watching an occupied territory respond against the occupier. And yes, with it seems some cases of violence and, and civilian attacks and so on, which I don't condone. And then you see the wholesale bombing, as you've seen repeatedly, near weekly over the last 75 years, of civilian locations. Not by accident, not by a lone IDF soldier, but from the direct order of the government in bombing civilian apartment buildings, bombing civilian locations, and then proudly discussing it. That's because you just heard them say that's what they should do. This is the point of where people refuse to acknowledge the obvious stated reality. It's like ignoring the neo-Nazis in Ukraine telling you that they want to murder people, telling you that they want to spread the white race around the world, and then going, no, no, you misunderstand. Just listen to what Fox or CNN tells you that they actually think. It's willful ignorance because of two-party paradigm team sport politics. Makes me sad. Well, as she breaks this down, this person steps in and goes, it's way more complicated than that. All right, very hot take right there. That's, you know, well, feel free. And Anya Parmpel points out, mm, it's not. <laughs> it's just, it's simply not. And that's the point. It's really not, guys. You have other dynamics that can be discussed in their own framing, right? The, the consequences of what has been happening and people of their individual actions, what they're doing. But the bottom line, the legalities are pretty damn black and white. It's all of the nonsense around it and Israeli propaganda and, and globalist propaganda that changes the way people perceive the basic provable legalities of all of it. Now, here's somebody who steps in, and this is also a very common sentiment. You're, I mean, we've heard this for decades, and this person's just showing, you know, Jerusalem, or the, it says mosques in Jerusalem are inciting war against Israel. What you know, just per people's perspectives on where this is all starting, it's pretty embarrassing usually. But this person says, and this is a quote you've probably heard before, if the Arabs put down their weapons today, and interesting, of course, they always frame it as a Arab versus Israel, despite the many different normalization deals that they've already had. But you know, let's not let's not let's not stop being racist just because we have deals with them, you know. But it says there would be no more violence. So if Arabs around the world apparently many of which have already made deals with Israel to normalize, put down their weapons, there would be no violence, they say. But if the Jews put down their weapons today, again, ignoring the fact that there's far more than just Jews in Israel, including plenty that support the fact that, you know, you get the point. It's embarrassing the way this is framed. It's inherently racist. But it says, if the Jews put down their weapons today, there would be no more Israel. Well, there's levels of truth to both sides of their point. Right. The idea of saying that if let's just take Hamas were to put down their weapons, well, there may be no more violence immediately, except I can I, I even take that back immediately because of the reality that Israel, every time we've seen this happen, has gone around to punish them. 
include and that's collective punishment, bombing civilian areas in the great, the larger Gaza area with no concern about who gets killed because Hamas did something we don't like. And they warn them if they do something, we're going to bomb in there. And nobody cares around the world, despite that being the exact verbatim definition of collective punishment, which is a war crime. Doesn't matter. So I would say right there in the first part of it, wholesale falls. Because there will continue to be violence because they're showing themselves, as we already started the show, you know, I'll continue to show you the rest of the show, that they don't want them to be there. Whether, However justified you think that may be, the point is you can't say if they put their weapons down, there'd be peace or no more violence because that's exactly the opposite of what they're telling you from the Israeli side. But if Jews put down their weapons today, there would be no more Israel. Well, possibly because Israel is an illegal occupier and we can prove that going back to the very beginning. But here's the real point on top of it right now is that if you left it as is, this will continue to happen. And here are Israeli settlers who will openly tell you what they're proudly trying to do, which is ethnically cleanse, which nobody wants to point out because it's uncomfortable for those supporting exactly this. We take house after house. Uh, all this area uh, will be a Jewish neighborhood. They're, we are not finished. What you're watching is them kick out Palestinians. And, and many times, by the way, just simply non-white Israelis understand that. Kicking out these Palestinians from their homes because Israel says so. Now, there's all sorts of narratives flying around, but let's not forget that these people were displaced already and moved to places where they're currently living. In some cases, exactly. In other cases, where they ended up you know, from where they were put. And then over the last 75 years have repeatedly tried to get permits for their homes. And repeatedly said no by the Israeli government. And then one day they go, oh, well, you don't have a permit. So we have to use this to make a pool or a gym or a park for only Jews, which is exactly what they do. And that's somehow not racist. Okay. How does that make sense to anybody? It's illegal. And the whole setup is a secondary displacement of people that were already illegally displaced. And the very idea of these settlements are considered illegal around the world. Even the United States government is going, and Biden has made numerous statements about why they shouldn't be doing this. And yet they keep doing it. And yet nobody cares about that. Isn't this insultingly ridiculous? This is why I think most people are aware of this right now. you got the screaming paradigm sides right now who act like they're the majority of every conversation, and they're not. The average person watching these shows is going, yeah, this is pretty crazy. It's very obvious. Now, what he's saying is here, we're going to remove these people. This area will soon be all Jewish territory. This is not okay in anybody's eyes other than the illegal occupiers and the Israeli government that supports them. It will be a Jewish neighborhood. We are not finished the job. We are, we are going to the next neighborhood, and after that, we'll go more. All right, so from neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood. So who exactly is going? To, is the one trying to, right? I mean, right now, like, well, let's put it this way too. Let's not forget. And I'm glad I didn't skip past this because it's hard to factor in all of the different, you know, probably, well, I mean, let's just about a century, honestly, if you really kind of rope in, I mean, maybe even more than that, quite frankly, but the 75 years from the first Nakba point, that there has been numerous attempts from the Palestinian factions to try to have some kind of a solution to try to find some kind of a two-state solution where they could live by side by side, which is, by, by the way, what was happening before the Zionists decided to occupy this with British allowance. It, they, they, it's easy to prove. They were Jews and Palestinians were living side by side. And in case there's, you know, the last kind of willfully ignorant person out there who's still pretending that Palestine never existed, I'll play this one more time just in case you missed it. The fourth prime minister of Israel, a founding member of the location, telling you that there was Palestine and that she used to be one. I mean, where, when were Palestinians born? What was, all, what was all this area before the First World War? When Britain got the mandate over Palestine, what was Palestine then? Palestine was then the area between the Mediterranean and the Iraqi border. You say there's no such thing East as Palestine. East and West Bank, no. East and West Bank was Palestine. I'm a Palestinian. It's a little uncomfortable for the narrative, isn't it? Now, I'll also include an article that Robert recently put up. It points to something interesting in regard to what Netanyahu just did at the United Nations, where he held up a map that was, I mean, dishonest, but nobody was willing to challenge. A map that quite literally showed 
Netanyahu, or basically, basically the argument was showing you a map that made the, made the claim that Israel as it is today is the way it's always been. The reality being that they have continued to encroach even post like past the point where British gave them the mandate over Palestine. The Zionists took control. There was an allowance of sir. Oh, there it is right there. Actually, as I was talking, there's an allow. The, the point is that there was a certain amount of area that was given. And even that, I mean, then at that very moment, that was an illegal occupation, which is always maintained from the UN going forward. But the point is that the reason they frame it that way is because they also know that collectively the world at least outwardly pretends that the illegal settlements are in fact illegal and shouldn't continue to be happening until there's more of an agreement. But what's happened ever since then is they point to the Palestinians and say they're being terrorists and they won't let this happen. So we're going to keep encroaching on their territory. It's, it's just wholesale illegal from top to bottom. And by the way, I got to be honest, apparently, I, if you guys didn't know, Netanyahu had a stroke. You could tell by his face. The point, though, is what's interesting is this is maybe examples of how he maybe got played by the pals, the Pfizer argument as well, but not for today's show. The whole injection game, because they really focused on them. Oh, you know what? I wasn't showing the screen. In any case, all I was doing was talking about this while uh, I was showing you his face, which is very interesting. But I'll include this article for you to read. How does Israel's claim line up against historical record in regard to his map? And he goes over all of that. So let's go back to the video and finish that. A dream that uh, all East Jerusalem uh, will be like uh, West Jerusalem, Jewish capital of Israel. And the only reason Jerusalem is currently considered Israel is because of the Trump administration, just like the Golan Heights. Illegally just pretending we're going to give it to you, even though that's not even... a something that legally the U.S. government can do. But it doesn't matter, though, because this is all the actions of illegal kind of extrajudicial governments that don't care about the laws. They care about using them to keep you in control. I see this as a continuation of the Zionist project, is what he's saying. The return to Zion. Is it at the Arabs' expense? The interviewer asks. And the Israeli Jew says, yes, of course it is. But, God, but our government institutions were also built at the expense of Arabs who live here. Yeah, I mean, it's not even hidden, guys. And this is the difference between what you get told by people speaking openly about this in Israel or what your government tells you what they're trying to do is seek peace. It's just not the reality. I have plenty more to show you on this exact point. <laughs> so it says, and so was the state itself. In point is created at the expense of Palestinians. Is that lovely, right? It's all about freedom and democracy, we're told. Well, Joe Dwyer points out those condemning the violence in Gaza now, but who have been silent about the four Palestinians killed in the West Bank yesterday, or the six Palestinians killed in the West Bank last week, or the countless settler attacks and raids on Al Aqsa in recent times, your hypocrisy is on show. Now, what's interesting is he's actually calling out people who are condemning the violence in Gaza, right? So there's all these different dynamics. you got people that rightly are going, if you only care about what's happening in, in, in Israel proper to Israeli citizens, and you've never made an issue about what's going on in Gaza every day before this, or in Syria uh, the few days before, then you're a ridiculous hypocrite. Or at the very least, making it clear with your statements that you think their lives are not worth the same because of where they live or what they look like which is really pretty much very easy to prove in many cases. But what he's doing is saying, those of you that are only just now pretending you care about Gaza, where were you the last 75 years? He's got a good point. But that doesn't mean maybe they, maybe they just woke up to it. I don't know. Well, I, all the support is necessary. I will welcome all the support for the just side of any argument. In my opinion, only thing I'm making, in the point I'm making there is the illegal occupation forward. In no way, I'll say repeatedly today, do I condone the acts of violence against Israeli civilians. As much as people will do, go out of their way to make to cut this in a way to make it sound like that's what I'm doing. I mean, it's like any number of these arguments today where apparently I never question viruses, even though I literally do it almost every show these days. But apparently I never do it if you listen to certain people who only want to misrepresent what I'm saying or anybody for that matter. There's an entire effort out there to just pit people who might actually be on the same side of an argument against each other to stop people in this movement from making any traction. And yet a lot of honest people fall victim to those quote supporters because they'll be your best friend until they keep, they blow up your entire operation from inside. 
I'm not actually speaking from an experience, but I know people that have had that happen. I've been on guard since I've started this whole work. But this is an important point. Vanessa Bealey points out what she showed on our interview. Zionist massacres. A, this is the a 20, a, basically a, a compilation of all of the horrific things that have happened. She goes, the Nakba, which, by the way, is, it means the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. Remember that as we go into a point in a second. Because understand, I'll just kind of jump ahead, that the Israeli government openly has just called for a Nakba, using the word Nakba. Like, it's incredible the willful ignorance of politicians and then the actual ignorance of a lot of people around the world that don't realize what they're calling for and are supporting what they're saying because bad guy terrorists, they're told. When you call for a Nakba, you're calling for the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, not just militants, all of them. And that's why Netanyahu comes out and says, if you're in Gaza, get out because we're going to bomb everywhere. We'll get to that in a minute. But realize in an open air prison where you're not allowed to leave, that's a game that they're playing on the ignorance of the average person. So when they literally murder everybody there, if that comes to that, they can say, we told them to get out without those people being aware that they would probably shoot them if they tried to leave or any number of examples where they're not allowed to leave, which is why these people had to bowl down the fence to get out. I mean, it's just so insulting that they would pretend that this is a choice for them to be there. But she says it has been a perpetual process of Zionist genocide against Palestinian Arab people spanning two centuries. Resistance is not only justified, it is a generational and regional obligation. Peace and Israel is an oxymoron. Wholeheartedly agree with that. Sam Husseini points out what, what many Palestinians are saying today, guess, and get this for those out there that are in the paradigm, in, you know, I think largely on the right side of it at the moment, who are actively supporting Israel in all this, many Palestinians are saying, give me liberty or give me death. And it's amazing how that can be ignored by people that will scream about the Constitution and about liberty and about freedom, but only because they blindly choose to take a line from the Israeli government that has shown themselves to be easily one of the most terrorist, egregiously dishonest governments on the planet. That's easily verifiable and has nothing to do with anybody's religion or ethnicity. But it says if your reaction to this is primarily to criticize them, which is what we're seeing online, you're probably an enemy of liberty. <laughs> That's, most of them don't realize that they might be, or I guess really that they are only selectively pro-liberty when it comes to the people they like, which is insultingly naive and ridiculous. But here Scott Ritter points something else out. Here are what we're told are a bunch of terrorists, even though I could prove to you that's not true. I ultimately will. What you're seeing in this for the podcast is a bunch of Palestinians with numbers spray painted on their backs, many of them with like a uh, road, uh, what do they call it, road burn. You know, where their, their skin has been scraped to the scraped bloody from being dragged when they're tied up or whatever else happened to them. Some of them with things jammed between their legs, possibly worse than that. If you get my drift, all beaten up, blindfolded, tied and gagged, laying on their stomachs, screwed about on the ground as IDF walks around. Now, to many people in the West who blindly take certain narratives at face value, they're going to say, good, they're terrorists, they're bad guys. Now, first of all, if you, let's just say for sake of conversation that there are Hamas terrorists running around victimizing people, which is certainly possible. I'd like to see evidence of exactly that, and I'll get into some of those points in a minute. But how do you know? Just because there's been a posted image, a la Twitter files, you just got Twitter filed, how do you know what those people are? How do you know that they were caught in doing acts of terrorism? How do you know that they're not just Palestinians that were drugged from their homes, as happens every single day we've seen for 75 years? Road rash. Thank you. That's what it's called. I mean, that's my point is simply that you don't know. And people are just going, yeah, murder them. People that are anywhere else talking about freedom and democracy. It's unreal what's this, what this conversation alone does to the mental state of people. And all Scott says is not, and this is actually an important point. He's not even getting into that. He's saying, not too smart, Israel. Hamas has a bunch of your guys held prisoner, which they do. Apparently, possibly 50 to 100, depending on who you listen to. And so he says, I wonder what's going through their minds when they see this photo and look at their captives. Now, here's a couple thoughts on this. Before we get into the bigger point about whether this is actually what they say it is, or the fact of what they do to their detainees, which we're supposed to not, we're supposed to ignore because we're told they're all terrorists. But even then, isn't it supposed to be a democracy? Don't they have rights in this alleged democracy? Don't they have the right to be treated appropriately and, and innocent of proven guilty? None of that applies here, guys. It's not a democracy. That's why. And we're lied to about damn near everything that goes on in this country. That's why it's one of the most security controlled countries in the world. 
And most of that is applied when you leave. Easy to prove that. Ask yourself why that would make sense. Because what they're protecting more than anything is information getting out. Many people have written about this. Ask yourself why that makes sense. Now, the point here, other than that, is there's a couple ways you could look at this. Now, either this is them taunting them and saying, you know, we're going to hurt them if you do anything. But the, his point is, well, doesn't that then put their people at risk? Well, yes. It's almost as if they want something to happen. And this ties in with a point we're going to end on today. And this very well may be a very long show about the possibility of whether this might have been allowed to happen. I'm not sure where I stand on it just yet, but there is some interesting points to get into. That's what I'm going to end with today. In, in, in regard to, and I mean, and as far as I can tell, that sentiment is coming largely from Israelis in Israel going, there's no way this happened the way they said it did. Our government betrayed us or th coming from Israeli Jews. It's, it's very crazy. So the question should be, do they want them to do something to their prisoners so they can then a justify a bloody response, which would then largely call in the support of people, whether they wanted to or not, or B that they want an excuse to be able to de-escalate this under the guise that they, like with the point being that they allowed these people to get captured on the Palestinian side so they can justify actions that would not look, that without that uh, people being taken on their side would look like them being weak. There's a lot of different ways to perceive this, but bottom, the, either, but the simplest way is that this is an unjust treatment of prisoners, regardless of how you, you know, I mean, just because you see them as negative doesn't mean that you know that they are, as I said, but also, Going back to things like Guantanamo Bay, the world roundly acknowledged that, and, and rightly so, as egregiously disgusting, inhuman, whether or not they were terrorists. You understand that? Because they're human beings, and many of them turned out to not be what we were told they were. Surprise, surprise. So we should care about this. The kind of person out there that would tell you, well, they're the, they did something in Israel that we consider to be a terrorist act, therefore we should give them no human rights, that's a bad person, guys, even if they're correct. You really need to understand that because that's a person that is almost gleeful about causing pain to these people because of what they were told happened. And even if they did, doesn't that doesn't it matter that they were illegally occupied? Doesn't it matter that their families were murdered in front of them over the last 20, 30, 40 years or that they were told that they're a terrorist as they were trying to fight for their own freedom? The point is that it's not justified in my mind of any side, but there's a there's a story here. And people coming out and saying murder them or bomb the whole place, turn it into a parking lot. Remember that. You got to glimpse through the door of the kind of person they truly are in their soul, a bad human being. Now, Jake Shields points out, this is Israel, the country we are funding. Stripping soldiers completely naked and likely torture, which is clearly what's happening. Both sides are committing war crimes. And, you know, I, I, I do, I would agree with that. Let's be clear. I don't know, I, from my research, and I'm looking just like I did with the Ukraine-Russia conversation, it, it seems very minimal in regard to what we can see happening on the other side of this. And of course, including the last 75 years of torture, murder, occupation. But if you have, please send me things that you're seeing, because I do see evidence of some people acting in ways that you would clearly argue are illegal, even going to the point of maybe a possible terrorist act. But I do think we should ask whether those people are playing a role, whether we're talking about the Hamas overlap and whether or not those people, as I'll read in a second from Sam, are as we've proven over the years, started as a useful tool to justify acts against Gaza, which I can then prove has in fact changed over the years. And they've taken, but there are still aspects of this, as even Vanessa Billy points out, of Hamas that are tied to groups like Israel and the U.S. government and would in fact act and aligned with groups like the, Sir the Syrian terrorists backed by the U.S. and possibly act this way. It's important to understand that. But so I just want to make that very clear. And I'll reiterate that many times today so it's clear. But Going from his point forward, both sides are committing war crimes, so can we stop paying for it? And I, I mean, that's a valid point, whether you whether or not you think both sides are. On top of that, let's realize how ridiculous it is that we pretend that Israel needs financial support from anybody, especially the United States, which we'll get to again today. They're going to be sending more, it seems, a hell of a lot more, even though there was a fake White House point, post that was put out, which is provably false, saying they were going to send something like $8 billion dollars wouldn't surprise me if it happens, but it's already been proven to not actually be what they said. So many grifters out there, man. And I'll get to one of the most egregious ones in a little bit. But who's here? And again, maybe I was a little bit harsh in this response, but I'm frustrated about this topic. So after he says this, or can we stop funding it? Here's my point exactly. She says, who cares? Destroy them. They're terrorists. Says Rachel. 
maybe, I mean, it, today especially, it should not be considered ridiculous to go, maybe that's not a real person. We know that that's happening today. But let's just pretend it is a real person. They do exist too. This is, and if that's the case, it just seems like a random, regular person who is exposing themselves as a morally ambiguous person that would sort of get excited about hurting people. Who cares? Destroy them. Based off a screenshot that you have no idea about the context? How do you know who those people are? And we're going to get into a point later today when they're pointing out that German woman who has been seemingly been murdered. They say, this could be your mother or your sister. Well, you're right. How about the fact that those people, that could be your brother, that could be your father, that could be your son. Does that matter? I mean, it's amazing how the same exact point in reverse is just, just taken with dead eyes. They look at you like you're a maniac because you make the same exact moral point in reverse. Here's what I said. And yes, maybe it was a little bit harsh. I said, you're a horrible and clearly uninformed human being, and that's being objective. And here's the point I want you to hear. You are the exact type of person that every government of the world hopes populates their lands. You know why? Because a person like this is willing to blindly and uncritically follow the narrative and the mob that it creates. Think about that. And she just goes, sure. <laughs> maybe it struck a nerve. The point is that that's a really ignorant thing to say. And it's disgusting. And maybe she's just a victim of the propaganda. right? Don't take it on her. But I think there's a lot of people out there that are just like that. Now, here's a point that I want to make. You know, they're all blindfolded, right? As you go through the comments, a lot of people are going to say, ooh, sorry, that's gross. That person's arm is mangled. The point is, you got people that are blindfolded, right? And so people are in here going, look, can't you see that they've got those, they're, they're all terrorists. Can't you tell by the things? They're, like literally people that don't understand even the context of the image you're looking at. The IDF put those blindfolds on them. But people don't understand that saying, well, you can tell by the what they're, they're terrorists, right? Well, let's make sure we understand that this is a common practice by the IDF with anybody, including young children who simply throw stones. And this is the image I'm using for today that I made very clear to put in the corner of the image from 2017. And even then, I guarantee people will act like I'm somehow lying or misrepresenting something. But it's an image that goes before all this that shows you that this has always been the case. Blindfolded Palestinian boy surrounded by Israeli soldiers in viral photo simply charged with throwing stones. And this, guys, is a daily occurrence. Is, it, is that a democracy? It's a child. Where is a family? For throwing a stone? You know what happens in any other place that they pretend to be a democracy? And I do, I do mean pretend. They slap him on the wrist. They take him in. They go, here, you're going you're gonna to maybe get a ticket or go to juvie at worst. But no, you blindfold the child and then you detain him without telling his parents for a long period of time. I mean, I saw a meme going around today acting like, you know, the... Uh, Showing, showing an Israeli person saying, we stole your lands, we stole your home, we killed your family, and but you're throwing stones at us and acting like that justifies the response. Now, look, that's not about what's going on today. Because they seemingly, well, unless we can get to the point of whether it was allowed to happen, we're surprised by the ability of what they're doing. And look, they, there's, you could see all sorts of examples of them. Uh, I'm now blanking on the term. Uh, air gliding, air gliding in. Things like that, very basic remedial things that apparently were allowed to happen or fooled them somehow. But the point is they had a lot more capabilities than I think many people realized, even though people like Robert have been telling you about this and Yemen and Iran for a long time, that they're just growing their capabilities because they don't want to be stepped on anymore. But the point is, this has been the case for a very, very long time to average people for doing very minimal things against the empire. And a broader sense, let's make sure we understand the true death toll here. Okay, this, this is from before this, and I'll give you the actual link to this next. Israel-Palestine conflict, human cost, and just from 2008, mind you. So let's be clear, this would be staggeringly higher in the hundreds of thousands if we went back to the beginning. Understand that, because that's not even up for debate. Even their own numbers will point to how many hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were killed and displaced around the world. The human cost from just 2008 to today. And the source for this is the United Nations. Look at this, guys. Just in a general sense, we're talking 6,407 Palestinian deaths. Now, that is predominantly civilians. To 308 Israeli deaths, which, again, I can prove to you, are predominantly IDF. And yes, the other side of that on both sides. Some of these Palestinians were resistance members, and some on the Israeli side were civilians. 
but it's predominantly IDF on the Israeli side and predominantly civilians on the Palestinian side. And we can prove this from their own documentation. But look at these numbers, guys. And every single year you are seeing this, it's because it never stops. 2008, huge numbers. I mean, it's just, it makes me sick to look at this and understand. I mean, look, this goes all the way up to thousands, thousands in 2008, thousands or over a thousand in 2009. Over 2,000 in 2014. All these different, this was the 50-day assault on Gaza. Here is the numbers directly from the United Nations for those that were probably already saying that's no, probably fake and now won't say anything because they were wrong. Exactly 6,407. And again, I can promise you it's more than that. That's Palestinian fatalities. Here's Israeli fatalities, 308. Very simple. Palestinian injuries, 152,560, many of which are lifelong injuries. A leg being blown off, an arm being blown off. Many, many, many times. Israeli injuries, 6,307. Most of these, mind you, and I'm not making this up, you guys can go through this for yourself, are reasonably minimal, especially compared to using mines and butterfly bullets and all sorts of dangerous things that are wildly illegal around the world, but nobody cares that Israel uses them on people in occupied Palestine. Over over and over. Now, Sam Husseini points out a few important things in this. He says in regard to the whole you know, general points being spread, he goes in a recent interview, which he understands will be released on Wednesday, he got into how the chessboard was basically set for Israel to pummel the Palestinians. It was especially driven by the U.S. government's drive for normalization. And Robert has been talking about this. Again, please go back and check out the, the, uh, the you know, any lots of things, by the way, on on this website, on you know the last American vagabond. But make sure you, if just for today in particular, that you go down to the foreign policy point here. Some of these are for me because I you know focus on it sometimes as well. But most of this is going to be from Robert, and he's gone over this repeatedly. We're going to get into this one in a second. But the information here going back a long way. He, he's been making these points for a very long time. The normalization deals, the manipulation. I mean, the Sudan is a great point. The Sudan being a place that was considered a state, a state sponsor of terrorism. And you can prove that the numbers they're pointing at did not change. In fact, got worse. And they said, you know what? We'll take you off that list if you just normalize with Israel. How do we not see what that shows us? Many of us do. Which is either they were never actually terrorists and it was only a ploy to lie to us about what they were doing to get them to normalize with Israel. Or they don't care that they're terrorists because they just want to get them to normalize with Israel. And they're willing to overlook that if you just come on our side. Either way, that's horrific, guys. And that's what they did. And Sudan said, okay. And they took them off the list. I mean, think about how ridiculous that is. It's the same, and this is going to be an important point later in the show, of pretending that we're going to invade Afghanistan to stop the Taliban, then working with the Taliban for 20 years, and then leaving all the equipment for the Taliban, and, and even coming to agreements with them and having talks with them, and then acting like they're the terrorist bad guy still to this day that is working with Russia. Even though they were the Mujahideen that were used to manipulate Russia from the very beginning with Israel, with the U.S. government. And yet today, apparently right now, they're the bad guy working with Russia because it works for the narrative. It's embarrassing how bad this is for them right now, and that's why I think people see through it. But the normalization deals are about manipulation, about control. And it says this and other things, Turkish President Erdogan, meeting Netanyahu for the first time recently, made it apparent that Israel was positioned to inflict massive violence against the Palestinians. He says, I don't know, but suspect that Hamas came to the same conclusion and decided to strike first. Now, we'll get to in a minute about t Turkey standing up, Erdogan in particular, and saying that we will defend Palestine. Now, I don't know if you take it at face value or not, but it's a NATO ally, and it's an interesting point. As Robert and I were talking about earlier, I don't trust Erdogan his connection to the Muslim Brotherhood, and many of di many different examples of, I mean, even him standing up and taking the side of Israel in many cases when it comes to anti-Semitism and on and on and on. The point is that it, it, I'm not sure where he stands, but the statement alone is important. Now he says that uh, Hamas is being discussed by so many in this point I was making before, but until he posted it late Saturday evening, apparently no one had posted Hamas's statement. God, that's so dishonest. And it says for, what, for why they did the attack. Words do not words don't do justice on how perverse it is to not simply even look at the stated justification. It's, it's embarrassing. He goes on to point out that Archbishop Desmond Tutu backed divestments moves, basically the BDS movement in regard to Israel and plenty of other people have been continuing to stand up for it. Here he is speaking on it. He gets into the Iran point that I'm going to leave to a later part in the show. 
But he goes, just as with the U.S. Uh, first of all, I'll say this. Um, oh, it goes still point on Ron. Basically says, just with the U.S. government backing the Mujahideen who became the Taliban in the Afghanistan in the 1980s, Israel helped the rise of what would become Hamas. And that's the point about this manipulation. We know that they basically created this to be able to use against them or lie about what's going on to say it's all terrorists over there, which, again, is a line you'll see people toe. I think Laura, Laura Loomer is still saying that stupid thing. They're all terrorists. Palestine never existed because I'm a Zionist. Childishly stupid. But the point is that you create the thing, you wake the problem, and then you point at it, but they, they've seemingly lost control of it to an interesting degree. Or maybe not. Some people are arguing that this is coming to full fruition. I don't think, though. I don't think so, but we'll get there. Oh, and then I have this uh, statement that he's tagged in here on the way back, trying to come up on the way back machine, but apparently can't even get this to come up anywhere. Not surprising. Seems from a whole internet standpoint, they're like, nope, you can't even look at what Hamas wants you to see or what they're saying. Very interesting. But let's get into some level of credence to the hatred, the negativity, the, you know, the reality that there is no sentiment that I can see of, of specifically Israelis, and in particular from within then, Israeli Jews that do not think that there is any place for any Palestinian or Arab, Jewish or not, inside of this area. Understand that, because you cannot make that about anti-Jewish anything if you've got them hating other Jews, guys. It's about Zionism and anything else they don't want there. And again, there's a lot of Jewish people that have been taken by all this, as the Orthodox Jews around the world are telling you they're doing. Plenty of people have put out tweets about that today, arguing, look, these are just colonializers or, or occupying powers that have manipulated the people under their control to sympathize with their illegal justification. And you see that around the world. You see that in Ukraine. You see that all over the United States today. People that can't seem to see through the fact that our government is manipulating us. But let's go over some of these points to show you that there is a very clear sentiment that is there is no place for these people, despite what they want you to think they're trying to accomplish. And this is the video I opened with. Get the out from our so for some context, this is a woman in a parade, I guess, for Israelis walking by as you have uh, random Palestinians just on the side. Now, you understand this is inside of Israel proper. So these are likely Palestinian Israelis or just Palestinians that live in the proper in the Israeli area, not from Gaza. And they're telling them, get out. You're not welcome here. Just because just they're standing on the road. That is just pure hatred for any Palestinian or any Arab. That's all it is. And this is a common perspective, as I'll show you more from Abby Martin covering it. Our country. Yeah. Get the f*** out of the country. This is Jewish country only. We don't need Muslims here. Yeah. Okay. So a, a, a Jewish Israeli saying this is Jewish country only. Then why is that not racist? We don't need Muslims here. Why is that not racist? Can you imagine the reverse? If you've got Muslims screaming at Jews saying this is Muslim country only and we don't want you any Jews here, they would freak out and it would be a huge story around the world. It just simply shows you that they're either people in the corporate media are either completely lockstep with the agenda and are willing to ignore the other side of it, or they really don't think these people matter as much and they only cover it when the part that they care about has an issue. These are racist, guys. These are disgusting people that are actively pretending these people are lesser than because they've got a different skin color, and they're the ones telling you they're fighting racism. You know, sort of as stupid as pretending they're fighting white supremacy and Nazis as they literally fund white supremacist Nazis. It's like anything else we see today, a group calling themselves anti-fascist who are literally espousing fascist talking points. It's absurd where this world is today. But trust me, guys, I think that there is a level of coordination to what's actually happening here. Now, here is Abby Martin, or actually, let me see if I got the next one. Oh, first of all, I want to include this because this it's, it's a smaller point than it all, but it shows you the general sentiment as right now you're there, you know, Israel and the Zionist government are largely trying to draw support from the Christian world because that's always how they want this to be framed as you know the white European Christian Jewish you know Abrahamic really. What, oh, I guess that doesn't even apply, but just the just the Jewish Israeli. Western countries against the Muslim world. That's how this has always been framed, except it's not even remotely accurate there. I mean, we pointed out things like in Syria, which before the invasion, is, I don't know if it's the same today. I don't think it is. Actually, I think it's been changed because of that. And that's likely the point. Syria had the third largest Christian population in the world or excuse me, in the Middle East. 
And yet, that, why doesn't that matter? You're acting like they're a bunch of Muslim terrorists that are trying to kill Christians in America, and yet they've got the third largest Christian population in the Middle East. We're being lied to, like every like pretending that Assad's bombing children because he likes to. They lie to us, guys, on a daily basis. My point, though, is there's been an ongoing action that seems to have targeted Christians around the Middle East, and we have to consider why, especially when you see Israel pushing the agenda. And here's an example to maybe connect that point for you. Right-wing extremist Israelis defend the fanatic settlers spitting on Christians, as they, as they literally call it, an ancient Jewish custom. So this guy got arrested, and he's the one saying that. Israeli National Security Minister openly said, quote, spitting at Christians is not a criminal case. Amid several incidents of Jews spitting on or near Christians in Jerusalem's old city. Uh, this, this person arrested wrote in a uh, Twitter post, it's a good time to mention that spitting near priests or churches is an ancient Jewish custom. As Jews mark the Jewish holiday, uh, Sukkot, on this week, this week, and this was on October 4th, several incidents of Jews were filmed spitting on near Christians and in the old city. The most recent spitting attack was filmed on Monday when a group of Israeli settlers carrying, four, uh, carrying the four species spat on a group of Christians, making its way out of the church by the Lion's Gate in Old Jerusalem, carrying a large cross. Yared, who served as a former spokesman at the of an MP with uh, Ben Gavir's, uh, uh, what is it, the Yehudit Party, and suspected of involvement in killing of a Palestinian teen in the West Bank rampage, also said that quote, "There's even a special blessing a Jewish in Jewish law that should be rec recited when you see a church." Spitting attacks on Christians are nothing new. The Global Religious Freedom Action Center recorded 21 attacks. Well, you know, again, this is a spitting, I think, is a pretty benign thing, ultimately. But it's trying to show you the sentiment. 21 in incidents of targeting Christians or Christian institutions in August. Now, just for a brief moment, for those that are dis dismissing this is not a big thing, reverse it. As always, reverse it for a second. And imagine what would happen if it was a common practice and stated as such for Muslims to spit at the feet of Jewish people in Israel. Oh my God, it would be the biggest story in the world. And you know that. It, it matters on either side. But it's very obvious the hypocrisy of it all. Anti-Christian hate crimes have spiked in Israel since the new government, described as the most right-wing in Israel history. They are. They're openly fascist government. The religious Zionism faction of the coalition, that's their title, has been openly called extremist by the, even the ADL. I mean, it's ridiculous. The lies were told about this. The Israeli attacks against Christians include vandalizing church properties, assaulting Christians, obstructing their movement, and canceling visit permits. None of which matters because they don't talk about it. But here's the video so you can see it for yourself. A little bit out of focus, but you can see as they spit at the people carrying the cross, spit on them as they walk by. Just, you know, no big deal. Common thing. And of course, here's the point from today. To our Christian friends, your holy land is under attack by Iran-backed terrorist groups, because that's the narrative right now. All big bad guy Iran is coming seemingly stemming from Israel. And NATO does nothing to protect it. So at the same time as they're going, support us because we're on the same side, but they don't think that from an Israeli Zionist perspective is my point. You have them lying about the Iran involvement and then you have them saying NATO is doing nothing. It's very interesting the stance that's being taken right now. Spending on the same Christians that, we, that now support them after the recent attacks. Also, let's not forget that they've openly been telling the IDF in many different cases to aim at. Oh, you know, I forgot to actually grab one that I should have. Ah, I'm not going to try and grab it. It's going to take too long. I've written about this many times in regard to the medics, ambulance drivers, journalists that are targeted. Maybe I'll try and grab it. By the IDF. In many circumstances where they're, they journalists will tell you they were targeting us. They were shooting at us. Let's see. Do that. See what pops up. But in the meantime, here's the article from Haaretz. The IDF spokesman announces continue to shoot Palestinian children. It's amazing the stuff that we could, they openly state that. And this is the spokesman for the IDF. Tell it, continue to shoot. And the point is, they make the argument, well, they're throwing stones, or they're too close to the fence. And literally, people in this country that would cry foul if you, if you blinked back in, a, in a negative way at a child would, would not care about that because they're somehow in this contorted reality where those people are all terrorists. It's a child, guys. A child. 
Let's see. Hopefully it pops up. Before we come back and look again, we covered this in 2018 with a repost from uh, Global, Global Research. IDF snipers ordered to shoot Palestinian children. Israeli general confirms. Now, this is also a public discussion. Far too many people will say, oh, it's fake news because it's on this website. The point is, it's if, you, if you're not completely ridiculous and willfully ignorant, you might just take a glance at the source material, you know, because it's not a fake story. And you can literally prove directly from their own statements that they have continued to justify this. And you can point out many examples of children like this shot in the head, unarmed by, Palest by, by IDF. Or the example of the one we just saw where the guy was walking away unarmed, they shot him in the back of the head, and the guy got a slap on the wrist. It's outrageous to shoot at children. How does the killing of a child in Gaza they help peace? It doesn't. I mean, the point is this has been ongoing forever. I mean, as far back as you want to look. Now, please read this. My point was not to go through this entirely, but the point is that the evidence in here is undeniable. Here is the actual transcript from the general who said on the record that that is the case. It's quite amazing. Let me try one more thing. Now here is another important example from nine years ago. I think this was on a, a podcast or rather a Twitter spaces, I think with Syrian girl, where she was saying that they cheer when they bomb Gaza and people were aghast by that. How dare you suggest such a dishonest misinformation? Oh, except it's true though, <laughs> except it's easily provable, but all of the, Israelis on the, on the Twitter spaces were clutching their pearls and saying, how dare you? How anti-Semitic? Well, it's true. Like many things they claim are anti-Semitic. Israelis gather on hillsides to watch and cheer as the military drops bombs on Gaza. Civilians, guys. Because that's what we continue to see. And, and this exact incidence we talked about were bombing civilian areas. And we'll go through that today yet again where they target these things. And that's why I showed you this first to make sure you understand that they're actively doing so. No, it doesn't look like I'm going to find it. Well, here's an example of, no, that's not the right one. But the point is we've got examples of them shooting and targeting medics. Hmm, I can't remember which one it was. But I do want to play this video for you that you might have seen in regard to this. Here is a visual example of when they did exactly this and nobody even blinked. Now, what I just jumped past, by the way, is the Guardian acting like they couldn't verify this video, which is just unbelievably stupid, even though it has been ver perfectly and explicitly verified right after with many different platforms, as well as the fact that it's quite obvious that they're shooting behind the bunker, behind the fence, and that you can prove what they're looking at is Palestine. And what's hilarious is that there's no way you could argue somebody pretended to do this on the other side of the fence. It's just, it's absurd. But the Guardian will always be, we don't know for sure. You know, sort of like Vayers. We don't know for sure, though, right? That's just disgusting. They're disgusting people because they don't want to. They, it's, they're not, they're, they're cowards, put it that way. They don't have the courage to be like, yep, this, they did this and we can prove it because you can. Here is the, the, the IDF behind this hill and you can hear them, what they're saying, and they cheer and they posted this on their own social media. Is that on him? Is that on him? He says, wait, I can't shoot because of the, the wire, right? Because it's behind the fence. Come here. Get over here where you can see there's a small child there, it says. Now, what's even more disgusting is you watch, you read The Guardian, and it says, uh, what does it say? Oh, that's, where was, oh I, don't, I don't think I have it up, actually. They basically say a man. Even though in you can read what they're saying in their own transver, transcript, and it says there's a little boy right there, and they still don't have the courage to say boy. A small child, excuse me. How does he always bend over right when I follow? So they're admittingly aiming at a young child. Not the pink, I'm on the blue. Why is this done? In the head. Yes! As they cheer. Called him a son of a whore for being there. Go running to evacuate him. Of course I filmed it. 
disgusting. Wow, they hit someone in the head. All these Palestinians come running in there, knowing they're in the area where they might get shot in the head to save that child. What terrible people. What a film. It's a legend. Yeah, more than you realize. You're helping us reveal what you guys really are. I mean, just there's always people that will try to make up a narrative here, you know? It doesn't matter. If it is a child, it doesn't matter in general sense when you're arguing your, I mean, what happened to the democracy? You don't just get to pretend you're a democracy when it suits your interests and then go, but, but, but terrorists though. And then act like those rules don't apply when you're upset about something. That's, I mean, embarrassingly naive to people that would believe that. Or so what are the laws for then? <laughs> if you just get to go, well, but we're mad today. So who cares? Because pay, terrorist. Well, did you prove that? How do we know? You've lied about things. Doesn't matter. Shut up. You're going to go to jail next. Right to jail. Right away. The point is that they're actively shooting a child in the head, cheering about it, and that's a crime no matter how you slice that. And nobody cared. Nobody. And when I say that, you know I mean in the corporate conversation. So here they are cheering as they continue to do just that. Bombing, sniping, shooting. They sit there and they eat popcorn and they have drinks and it goes over the whole thing right here. Now, of course, look, you see that just now, by the way? It happens so often on this show. That was not on the paywall when I had this open. It literally just went to a paywall as we were looking at it. A nine-year-old article. I wonder why. It wasn't before. Here is Abby Martin. While back, I think this was, I mean, this was a decade ago, I think. And she's in is, occupied Palestine asking Israeli Jews what they think. What do you think about Palestinians? Listen to what they have to say. Israelis have to take over, and uh, they have to kick them, uh, kick them away. It will be much better not to, not to kill them, just to to go back to to Arab countries. But yeah, even though this is occupied Palestine, so they want them to go back to somebody else's country because they want that. To... Now, this is the point, though, is that you could argue that that Israeli Jew has no idea about that truth. And he's been grown up in a world that's filled his head full of lies, like most of the, like many people in this country or any country where the government wants you to think what they have done is virtuous and true and democracy and freedom and liberty as they do literally the opposite. There is an endless procession of people in this country that will tell you you're wrong if you say anything negative about the government, the military, Trump or Biden or anybody. Most of them are wrong. All right. So let's read. Let's not to give him a pass, but just realize all this shows you, in my opinion, is one of two things, possibly two or both of them, that the Israeli government are bad, that they are actively training people to think the lies about these people so they can dehumanize them and justify their murder, as they've been done for 75 years. And then possibly the secondary thing is that they also know that and don't care. But they might not. And they might just be victims of propaganda like a lot of other people. But at the same time, as I continue to point out, whether you believe the lie or not, you still somehow are okay with treating them like lesser than human. And that's pretty gross. This person says, oh, he's finishing. But it's really right. It's uh, really rightfully ours, he goes on to say. I'll let it play. Go back to, to Arab countries. But it's really rightfully ours if you look at the history and at, like the wars. And we didn't even start a lot of the wars. And it, we we conquered these places rightfully, like it's ours. Oh, they rightfully conquered them. Well, at least there's some level of truth there. Right. You So you rightly, by force, took the land from them. Yeah, and you know, and historically, people make points about that. It used, that used to be the way it worked. And quite frankly, it is literally still the way it works. But we just lie to ourselves about it. But the point is that they're the ones pretending there's some kind of legalities that they hold over the heads of anybody else they don't want to be able to do what they're doing. And then they go on to use force to take what they want. So we should use their false narrative to put them in their place and make them realize that we as the world have now come to the reality of what they pretended they were doing, which is this should not be allowed. You should not be able to use military force to rob and steal from people when you're pretending or ever, really, when you're pretending especially to be the altruistic entity. But realize, yeah, that is the way it used to be openly the way it worked, where you just by force took what you wanted and you grew your empire, right? But it's interesting how that would be the opposite of what we're told on a public discussion. There was no Palestine. 
or in other circumstances. Well, it was, but it was all desert. Or maybe not. Maybe it was, you know, it's just like, it's just, there's so many weird variations to the false narrative that it's obvious that we're being lied to. The truth is that Palestinians and, and Jews lived together in this area for a very long time until the Zionists decided to just take it from them in a bloody, violent effort. 1,400 years later, we come back. Now, I'm not saying that we can blame the people living here for what happened, but you got to accept that that's some kind of divine justice, that their great-great-great-great-grandfathers kicked my great-great-great-grandfather out of here. False. Again, provably false. I mean, let's, let's remember that the UN will still tell you it's an occupied territory. So there's just basic, objective realities that these people just don't know. And then we come back, and all of a sudden they're like, well, no, we don't want it, it's not fair. Well, here's what's interesting. Isn't that the exact reverse situation? Like what we're so he's acting like that's well, like the point is that you now have the same thing where you've got Palestinians coming in and saying this is our territory because you took it from us. And the Israelis go, well, we don't care. This is funny, right? How there's so many. The, the, this is why I make the point that the only thing that truly matters in the conversation when it comes to the legalities of it all is the original illegal occupation and the ongoing suppression of their rights. That's the true legality point that we should always stem from. And yes, we can have conversations about all the nuance after that, but you can't have a conversation without acknowledging that basic objective truth. I think that the Jews came here, they took, a, they took this land, and this is our land now, and I don't think they should be here. Thing, right? See, there's a whole faction of them that think that, yeah, we just took it because it's ours. And, and they own that sort of occupation, colonializing perspective. You know why? Because they're still doing it. They're still literally taking and stealing property and lands from Palestinians that have already been displaced because they want that territory. Homes that they that Palestinians themselves built. They just kick them out, take it, move in. Plenty of proof about that. You can look at it all over the place. Even Biden has spoken up, as I told you earlier, and says, well, stop doing that. They don't care. You know, but in a rules-based international order, though, right, guys? There are no errors. <laughs> Like Arabs, they want, we gave them Gaza, so they should go live there quietly if they want. They should go back to Iraq. To wow, man. How egregiously ignorant. They, we gave them Gaza, just live there. You mean with 98% undrinkable water and electricity that barely works and the, inter, the intermittent rape and torture and murder and, de, and unjustified deten detention and, and extended long-term never-ending detention or, you know, but yeah, just take it and live there or get out. Oh, you mean from the place that they're not allowed to leave from? My God, man. It's staggering. I don't know, to wherever they want. I may think that uh, we need to... I don't think there's any answer to it. Really? There's only one way, to, like, I would carpet bomb them. Carpet bomb them. You would that, carpet bomb them? It's the, only, it's the only way you could deal with it. Like, or... or try to stop them a different way, it, it never worked. I think that uh, we miserable the, the Arabs uh, make a big whim and uh, we need to kill the uh, Arabs. <laughs> no. I think another thing uh, that the Jews should have rights to hate them. I think we have the right to hate them. I don't... I don't to hate them. So look, you can very clearly argue that there's the same similar sentiment going both ways. But again, you have to re realize where this first began and that it obviously matters, the first illegal occupation. But then realize that this is, when you discuss this in the, on the mainstream stage, they only point to the Palestinians having hatred towards what's, what their occupiers are doing and they pretend this sentiment doesn't exist. There's just no honest part about this when it comes from the Western side of the conversation. It's not, and you can prove it. That's why it's so frustrating for people like myself that are simply trying to be objective about this and getting framed as one side. It's obvious you can prove, just like many other conversations of today, with their own words that we're being lied to. It's about a choice to ignore it or not. I think we have the right to hate them. I don't, I don't see a reason why not. I, I won't trust any of them. They're not talking about militants, guys. They're just talking about average Palestinian civilians and whoever else is in their resistance movements, but all of them. So think about that when we talk about the idea of the back and forth of it all. He says there's no chance of peace here in this country. They, uh, they, always, they always hate us. 
So if you can't have peace and if the situation can't carry on, we need to handle them in other ways. It's pretty, and guys, this is an old video of the open general sentiment of just carpet bombing, removing, displacing, murdering, and who cares, coming from open sentiments on the street from Israeli Jews and Israelis in general. I, I think we should give them a country. If you're doing any problem, you just go in there to give them a country, and then it's going to be a war between countries, you know? If they're going to throw rockets, we're going to throw one big one and done. Wow. Now, his point there is that, you know, almost kind of like the two-state solution, give them a country, but they're not going to give it from the area they're supposed to, which is part of Israel or actually part of occupied Palestine. But even then, they don't want to go to a place that is not their country, which it is, provably. Occupied Palestine. Don't don't be passive about that. This conversation is is past that point. We are not being passive about the reality anymore. It's illegal what they're doing, illegal occupation, and from there they have armed the legal right to armed rebellion. Anybody having this conversation is not expressing understanding of that is not cl claiming to understand those two points is being dishonest about this or does not know they're wrong. You have to stem from that point. Now, here is Abby Martin speaking with uh, Joe Rogan. And Words Are Words points out, the history between Israel and Palestine is much, much deeper than most know. I remember watching this summer, uh, this, this whole thing, of, and the clip is right there, last year, everyone should listen to the full episode. But just listen to this clip. Always that Israel's the good guys, the Palestinians are the bad people. That's how it was. But the mainstream perception now has very much shifted don't you think like with this 100%. last when you see like that iron dome and you're seeing these rockets being fired out of palestine which by the way how have, have i think we've proven something that i've been harping about for a decade that the iron dome is a big theater show and we're lied to about it and that means we should stand back and question the many numbers of firework shows we've been told justified a carpet bombing of gaza over the last four decades right because realize they just completely bombed right over the top of this thing and bombed all sorts of areas. So this is what it looks like when Gaza actually fires rockets. What a big surprise. How long have I been saying that, by the way? And they're all getting detonated in the air. And then you realize, like, oh, this what is... What he's talking about is the things that we are told are rockets that are just basically exploding rocket from that side. Now, look, I, 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 there's been examples of those things being fired and, you know, there and Gaza rockets firing in the past. But what we just saw pretty clearly proves to you that they have never done this kind of action, even though Israel has argued many times that they've stopped that kind of action. Very, very telling. And don't forget, your tax dollars as an American have been paying for that repeatedly over the decades, where you basically fund it. And then we, but, but there's many cases where we not only fund what they're needing to build, even though they have the money and resources to do it, but we also, as the, I said, the U.S. government, will also send a lot of things over there, web, th money for them to create and build, and then the U.S. government buys those things back. So basically double dipping from your tax dollars, big surprise. This is a kind of a crazy situation. Like one side has this insane technology and the other side is kind of in an open air prison camp. Not kind of. In a way. Like literally. you can't go anywhere. Right. You're kind of stuck. That's a prison. 25% of American Jews now after the latest onslaught in Gaza believe Israel's an apartheid state. Think about and that. That, that shows you how dramatically the narrative has completely flipped on its head. Because for the last 20 years, Israel has been losing control mm -hmm. of dictating the narrative. I mean, that, that was really what they relied on for so long, that we're acting in self-defense, that we're surrounded by people who hate us and hypothetically will commit genocide against us. And man, are they trying to push that hard now. And I'll get to that in a second. But the almost verbatim responses from everyone around the world saying the same damn thing. To basically defend the fact that they are committing de facto genocide in Gaza. That right. is the erasure of, of Gaza residents. It's the erasure of a culture. It's not just the extermination. That, that's according to the UN. But yeah, the, the tide has changed, Joe. They can no longer say that they're acting in self-defense over the last 20 years with the bombardments, with the invasions, with the colonization outside of their borders. I mean, we're talking about Lebanon, Syria, and the Golan Heights and just constantly bombing an open-air prison. It is an open-air prison. There's two million people trapped there. They cannot... For, like, I, I think the majority of which are children, which is unbelievable to me. ...leave without permits by the Israeli government or the collaborative government in Egypt. 
those people are trapped. Yep. Interesting. This is 2021. Objective realities that some people on Twitter have no idea about or simply don't care because the current narrative is politically advantageous for them. Well, I'll include this as well. I was actually lucky enough to see Gaza Fights for Freedom at the original uh, premiere in L.A., uh, and it was that's outstanding. I mean, it really is powerful. And here's the link to it if you want to watch it for yourself. As Dan says, if you didn't pay attention in 2018, Gazans attempted mass peaceful protests and civil disobedience. And guess what happened, guys? Israel killed 200 and wounded 9,000 by sniper fire. So before everyone gets on their high horse and acts like what just happened is unjustified because of an illegal occupier being pushed back, and again, that does not, in my mind, overlap with the, whether or not I condone the acts against civilians, because I don't. But the point is, people, before they get on their high horse, take a step back and realize more than once over the years, they have been trying to do what they were told. Go through the political spectrum, try to vote things in, try to peacefully pro. Well, every time they do, this is what happens. They get shot. They get murdered. They get bombed. And the people don't care. So what are they left with? When they try to do it, they get shot. 200 people, 9,000 shot. Watch the documentary, guys. It will blow your mind if you don't know this stuff. Now, what Abby Martin's pointing out as well, something that we've been saying a lot in the last year or two years or so, that this whole thing is broken. The Overton window has been shattered on the Israeli conversation, and they're desperate right now. People see what they are, and that may be why this is happening. But let's not forget, as she points out, this is an apartheid state. Also, despite the narrative circulating on right-wing Twitter, or left-wing for that matter, just politically, <laughs> the two-party paradigm liars. Israel's apartheid against Palestinians. Amnesty International. A threshold crossed. Israel authorities and their crimes of apartheid and persecution. Human Rights Watch. A, a regime of Jewish supremacy from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. This is apartheid. Beth Selim. These are the leading human rights groups in the world, guys. Beth Selim is an Israeli human rights group. It's amazing what people can ignore. But this doesn't matter to those that are fighting for a political side. Vanessa Bealy makes sure you understand, and she's quoting JD, Israeli occupation soldiers, and this, by the way, is provable, routinely invade Palestinian towns, their villages, their homes, they kidnap men. I added homes, by the way, but that's just kind of overlap with what they're being told about what had just happened and is happening, right? They, they, the idea that they're kicking in people's doors and kidnapping women and children, raping them on the Like, there's a lot of things people are saying, as I keep pointing at people like Jack Wasobic, who are just stating things that with the evidence, like, there's evidence of crimes that I can think, I can prove to you that have happened. But whether or not this was a mass effort and they were getting shot in the streets and raping people everywhere, like, that's what they were pushing simultaneously seeming, seemingly saying it was Iran, but then also Russia, depending on what narrative they wanted to push. The point is, again, that throughout the 75 years of illegal occupation plus, they routinely invade their towns, their villages, they kidnap men, women, and children, destroy property, extrajudicially extra execute, quote, wanted individuals. Where's the democracy there? Aren't they supposed to go through a trial in a democracy? No international condemnation. When Palestinian fighters turn the table, everybody cries bloody murder. Here's an interesting point, and this is where I get into the idea of how what we're talking about right now in what her statement is making, it's not about the IDF or Hamas. It is about civilians. They go into civilian territories, and some they may argue some of them may be related to it, and some of them may be. But the larger point we're making is that civilians in a regular basis as the UN will tell you, as any number of international groups will tell you, they continue to terrorize these civilian populations and collectively punish them at a whim. So thinking about that, here's an interesting overlap. As you've got people online who are screaming that if you have any kind of a balance on this and realize that there are people being affected on both sides, you're somehow a shill for Hamas now. There is no balance anymore. And I'm going to blow your mind in a second with some political statements that are being attacked because they don't come all the way out and say, this was bad and, bo and only one side is, you know, it's like, it's really interesting. Typically you see the whole, uh, you know, both sides and so on, but that's usually when it's Hamas being the victim kind of a thing or is Palestinians, but I'll get to it in a second. In this case, we're going to see them highlighting any people being hurt as terrorists on one side and anybody being hurt on the Israeli side as civilians. It's a choice to look at it that way, right? Here's what I mean. 
So Cassandra McDonald says, the amount of people I follow calling, and this was on the 7th, calling for Palestine to be totally wiped out is alarming. You realize that's one of the largest civilian populated po locations on the planet. Whether or not you think Hamas is a terrorist or the Palestinian Islamic Jihad are terrorists or any number of groups are terrorists, that's irrelevant to the point of if, if you're calling to wipe out Palestine, you're, you're calling for millions of civilians to be killed. And that's what they're doing right now online. Totally, total freaking bloodlust, she says. I don't like the thought of any civilian strangers getting killed anywhere, but I'm the extremist, I guess. And this person literally makes her point for her. So by by stating this, this is the, the actually the best point is to is by saying when somebody says Black Lives Matter and you say All Lives Matter, you're somehow the wrong one. I don't even know how that makes possible. Of course, in some senses, their argument is they're trying to say you're doing that in a manipulative way. But how in the world could they know that? Somebody saying All Lives Matter is obviously more sound and correct than saying one or the other matters. All lives matter includes all lives. Whether or not you think they're secretly trying to insult you by saying something that seems to contradict what you said, it's ridiculous. The point here is that she's saying, I don't like any civilians being hurt anywhere. Shouldn't that be the most rational statement? But it's not. Because right now, people are happy to see civilians killed on one side, but they aren't allowed to really say it because then it shows what they really are. So they attack you for acting like you're, by saying this, secretly supporting Hamas. Isn't that fascinating how this, this is how it works? This person says, no, you're just being unrealistic. So not wanting civilians to die anywhere is unrealistic? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you understand the way the West wages war, then yes. And, she, and he says, and quite frankly, stupid. Hamas wins, which, by the way, wasn't even what she was trying to get at. Just simply going, I don't want civilians to die anywhere. But he gives her a hypothetical. Okay, so Hamas wins. Remain, renames Israel to Palestine. Oh, you mean so puts it back to what it originally was, which I guarantee you he doesn't agree with or understands. He goes, how do they govern? Well, Mr. Bot, Bunt, I can clearly tell you that you don't know either. But let's listen to your assumption. He says, when they and they will start digging the mass graves, they will, then what will you say? about what, the completely contrived hypothetical that you have no idea will happen? <laughs> I mean, this, uh, this to me probably feels like a bot, if I'm quite honest. Or will Hamas bring in the most free country ever? Pick a lane. What a really stupid response. So now it's either they all die or everything's freedom. Yep, that, welcome to the two-party paradigm, guys. His brain is completely addled and broken from the illusion that is the two-party paradigm, or what it seems to me. But let's remember, the statement is, I don't want strangers to die anywhere. And that's how he responded, <laughs> almost biting her head off about how you're only supposed to say that Hamas is supposed to be killed and any Palestinian. And that's the good guy side. That's where we are right now. It's the same kind of ridiculousness you got with the peak of the Russian-Ukraine discussion, where Russian anything was bad. Russian cats were removed from cat shows on the other side of the world because that's we hate Russians, right? It's real, guys. People are losing their minds. Cassandra responds with, I don't care what side wins, to be honest. I just want to stay out of their religious battle, which I quite frankly, I don't think was a great response to that. But either way, her point is from the beginning, I don't want civilians anywhere to die. This person says, once again, showing your ignorance to an existential crisis. Really, the person that seems to not be okay with her saying one side that all citizens should be okay, which I guess you could read as we only think Israeli citizens should be the ones we defend. It says they want you dead, which they don't, and we can prove that. And is there now, and 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 it's there now, and here next. My God, these people are stupid. So what you're saying that if Palestinians are able to take back their rightful territory, that somehow they're going to then try to invade the United States? With what capabilities, first of all? Secondarily, that's not even remotely what's on the table, but you could clearly show other entities doing that all around the world. But you don't seem to care about that because you probably waive your support in anything they do without even a regard for the full narrative. But he goes, wake up, read an effing history book. Oh, my God. These people are so ridiculous. Read Watership Down if you are this young. <laughs> so the point is, read your history books that will paint this as Israel before. Or it was a desert. Now it's Israel. And we made it bloom. That's his history book for you. He's wrong. Probably doesn't even realize he's wrong. The point all of this stems from not wanting civilians to die on either side. You're getting my point? This is how far this goes when somebody just goes, I don't want any civilians to die. 
It's unbelievable. And finally, she says, you aren't going to fear monger me into cheering on a war in case people who can't defend their literal neighbors cross the ocean to destroy us. We need border security, not intervening in religious wars a world away. But yeah, but the, 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 these are people that are trying to scream people into defending the idea that only one side should matter. And that's the just side. You get it? And here's another great example. Here's Laura Loomer for you. Now, again, let's not miss the obvious connection to why she willfully ignored the Israel Zionist connection to what's going on in Ukraine. In you know, when she broke the story we've all been talking about for five years, you know, because that's what she does. She breaks the stories that everybody else is covering for a long time. And even we even we even talked with Jake, uh, you know, Q and on Shaman on Way and Wake Up. And when we broke down what was actually discussed on her podcast, it was nothing new whatsoever. It was the FBI asking if he knew the thing that everyone had talked about, including us, including Alex Burn, uh, uh, um, Burnison, now blank on his last name, all Rubinson, long before me, by the way, breaking down what these people were, showing you that Sergei uh, Dominion was a Ukrainian asset and was there screaming things in Russian. That was not new. Anyway, I go off on a tangent there. I'm just trying to make sure you guys see that there's a lot of grifters out there that are constantly trying to lead you in to things just like this and the two party illusion of it all. Laura Lou is a open, stated Zionist, and she'll say it right here. When George Galloway interviewed her, he embarrassed her because what she was saying were really ridiculous sentiments like Palestine never existed and that they're all terrorists no matter what. We're at a point in the world where hopefully people have enough understanding of basic realities to realize how insulting that should have been to your intelligence. But here's what she says. It's incredible. This person, well, first of all, this person down here simply posts a video, by the way, with no other context, just a video saying a Palestinian civilian and mother stuck in rubble after Israel bombed residential building, which I will prove to you next is very true. And the fact that they're proudly pointing these things out doesn't say anything about Zionists, doesn't say anything about whether this is happening elsewhere. It's just clearly it happened. But the Zionists are on guard, right? Because you can't point out that these are civilians being killed because that ruins the narrative, right? So she goes, incredible. How you manage to make the Palestinians the victims. Guys, please understand who this person is. You mean the people that have been occupied illegally for 75 years, who the UN maintains as a legal occupation? Who the, I mean, I could go on forever about how ridiculous that is. The victims are the people who have been stolen from. Now, that doesn't mean they've gone on, they haven't gone on to take action that is in the circumstance po from there that you made the victim the other side of that. The innocent person, you might argue, was the brunt of one of the things that they fired. But it's a very rare occurrence in the concept of the bigger picture here that you have the bottle rockets they've had for the vast majority of the time there or the illusions of rockets fired by the dome. In idea and, and, and again, how about we just do this before I just rant forever? How about we just take a quick brief dance back into the reality of what the United Nations has shown you comparatively. 308 fatalities since 2008 alone, over 6,000 on the Palestinian side. Okay, so if that is the case, which we know that it is, isn't it easy to see who the victim is here? Anyway, I digress. She goes on to say, how, you, how, do you, how you manage to make the Palestinians the victims here when you have been spreading blood libel against Jews all day long, by using Zionists as a derogatory slur. Okay, so what she's doing is saying that she knows when he says Zionist that she re he really means Jew. So another assumption by this great journalist, because that's what they do. Or just choosing to make that the case, as if you somehow know what he secretly, wink, wink, means when he says Zionist. Now, nah, maybe you're right. I don't know, because I'm not stupid enough to say that I know what he means when he says that, because that would be pretty stupid. But see, I say Zionist all the time, and I mean Zionist, because I'm not talking about all Jews, because that would also be ridiculous and racist and bigoted. But that doesn't matter to people like this. So this person's calling out the Zionist criminal actions, and she's seemingly going out of her way after he posts a video, as you can see, of families buried under rubble, saying, Mama, please don't leave me. God, that's horrifying. Now, yeah, you could, you could argue that similar things have happened anywhere. The point is, in this context, this is an innocent civilian family with a mom who is trying to say, stay with me, don't die, as they're buried in their civilian home because Israel bombed Gaza. Right? Zionists. 
She goes on to say, it's not a derogatory word. Well, you, it's, it's only derogatory in the sense that you want to take it that way. I'm not saying anything derogatory. I'm not going Zionist. <laughs> I'm simply going Zionist did this. The, it's, it's context. If you don't think Zionists have done the action, then say that. But by pointing out that Zionists commit a crime is not derogatory. It's simply stating a fact. And the Zionists have illegally occupied Palestine, and the Zionists continue to murder people in Gaza. Simple fact. She says, a Zionist is a person who believes Israel has a right to exist. I am a Zionist. Well, that's not even remotely true. A Zionist is a group that is, well, I, I take it back, actually. You can argue that's the way you could take that, but it's one small fraction of this. A Zionist is a person who believes that they have the right to take the land from the Palestinians because they believe that's their right, even though you can easily prove, well, first of all, explain to me how it's God-given when British mandate gave it to you. <laughs> Have fun with that one. Secondarily, ask yourself how it's possible there, when, if it's a, how is it possible it's a God-given land when you had multiple locations they chose from, which is also provable. The point is either she doesn't know any of this, which is embarrassing, or she does and doesn't care. What you decide for yourself. Just be careful who you choose to listen to. A Zionist is a person who believes Israel's right to exist, but at the same point believes that, the, that it, it is okay to do that at the expense of the Palestinians, as you just heard Abby Martin on her podcast where the Israelis on the ground said just that. And yeah, she is a Zionist. Do you have a problem with me? Well, I do in plenty of different ways with your terrible journalism and the fact that you rob stories from people and act like you broke them. But it goes on to say, I have been listening to you all day and observing your tweets. You clearly have no sympathy for the innocent Israelis and Jews who have been maimed and killed over the last day. Well, you can look at his work for yourself if you want to. I, the point is it's irrelevant in the context of the point. My point is about what this image shows you and the validity of that image and the fact that, that seemingly really upset her because it highlights the criminal activity in this case, whether or not you think it's happening in the reverse in regard to civilians in Gaza. And I have continued to point out the reality that there are Israelis, some of them Jews, who are being hurt as well. But if you are unable to stand back and realize that all of this stems from the beginning of the illegal occupation, then you're a dishonest person. She says, because you're more focused on spinning a false narrative that the Palestinian jihadists are the real victims. You see my point? Okay, are these Palestinian jihadists? No, these are civilians. And, in my, and the general point in, overall is that there are innocent civilians on both sides, right? Isn't that the point? Well, she won't say that because everybody in Palestine is a jihadist terrorist. She said that on the record 15 times. So now it turns into only jihadists are being heard on this side because that's our narrative that you're more focused on spinning because that's your agenda. And on the other side, it's all civilians and Israelis that are being killed because terrorists. Can't people recognize this stuff? I mean, my God. And yet, just because, again, people like us are saying people are being hurt on all sides, you get called the extremist secretly shilling for Hamas, which is what she's doing right there. Pathetic, disgusting, and embarrassing. The only true victims, only true victims are the Jews in Israel. It's right there, plain as day. So you're telling me that the civilians in Gaza that got killed, and there are civilians there, which you damn well know, aren't victims? Yes, that's what she's saying, right there. She is okay with civilians, children, women, Palestinians being murdered, and that doesn't matter. That's a Zionist for you. As far as I'm concerned, she says, everybody else is a jihadist enabler. Why? Because they're forced to live in Gaza that they're not allowed to leave from? These people are dangerous, guys. Make sure you understand that. So let's get into some of the more unnerving parts of this. Sarah Wilkinson points out, the Israeli regime is going to kill us uh, oh, excuse me, this is quoting what he's saying. The Israeli regime is going to kill us all anyway, says this person speaking. The Israelis want us kneeling, so why not fight back and die in dignity? But what's interesting is it starts with Israeli PM, uh, uh, um, politician, part of the coalition, uh, um, blanking on his name off the top of my head. <sighs> That's so frustrating. You, you guys remember this. What's his, give me the name in the chat. It's it, The point is what he says anyway, the, but... He's one of the, he was recently just one of the one of the leading parts of the coalition. I forget his name off the top of my head. That's driving me crazy. Anyway, the point is, he goes on to say that you know if they use hospitals, churches, ambulances, then we're going to bomb them. So my point is the same. What he's telling you right there, and what they'll tell you, even though we can Vanessa Bailey has proved a hundred times over this is not happening. 
But they're telling you, though, is what they, their narrative is that they're taking civilians to use them as human shields, even though you could prove they've done this millions of times. So that by that narrative, which they say, that implies that they have civilians in these hospitals, in these schools, in these ambulances, which I don't think they do. My point, though, is that then that means what he's telling you right there is that it's their fault and we're going to kill civilians because they're doing it. We're firing on a place that we are telling you are civilian loaded. Instead of doing something on the ground, which is what would happen anywhere else, they just bomb it because they did it. So they're okay with murdering civilians because that's their fault. That is how they operate. And nowhere else in the world is this even remotely allowed. Not stated publicly in this way. And I want to be very clear. A home, a school, a hospital that hosts terrorists is not a home, is not a school, and is not a hospital. It's a terror base. And as such, if they're shooting rockets at us from there, we will retaliate back. And there's already been proof. People have already broken this down in multiple posts showing, I think it was a uh, Syrian girl showing that they do not have these on these roofs, proving that showing where most of them are coming from. And yet they make this argument anyway, to just pretty much give cover to the fact that they aimlessly bomb throughout Gaza and kill civilians on a regular basis. And I'll prove it to you next. And they know this guys, Mo anybody with brain cells rubbed together can see how the toll, I mean, do I need to go back to the UN post to show you again, the civilians that are being killed? But here he is telling you it's there. It's because they're shooting stuff that we can't prove. Does anybody care to prove any of this? It's the same as what's going on in Ukraine. Ukraine says, I mean, I haven't even got a chance to cover any of this. Claiming that there was a, a cafe killed with Russian bombing. And you know what it turns out to be? Ukraine says there is literally nothing to prove what they're saying other than narrative and dead people. And we've already proven to you that Ukraine has been responsible for Poland, responsible for Kramastok, responsible for any number of locations that they already tried to blame on Russia. And nobody cares once you prove it's the other way around. But they deliberately kill their own people to try to make it seem like Russia's doing it. That's not to say that Russia's not carrying out its own, own egregious things. In fact, they've already shown you some. The point is to show you that one side is lying about killing its own people to push a narrative. And that's what, I mean... In this case, killing innocent people to push their narrative. But here's what the person that comes on next, next says about him. If you were still Israeli prime minister, would you recommend that Israel goes back in and takes control of Gaza? Now to Arafat Alari, who is a Palestinian writer and educator and resident of Gaza City. Welcome to you. Uh, tell us what's happening where you are. What's happening is that uh, an Israeli official is inciting genocide against Palestinian natives in the Gaza Strip, and the BBC is feeding him thoughts, uh, uh, perhaps suggesting uh, taking control over the Gaza Strip. This is what's going on. Uh, the uh, Western uh, mainstream media is being complicit, whitewashing Israeli crimes. I think, I think you'll find that there were questions, quite legitimate questions, no, no, to be never, asked of a former never, Israeli never, Prime Minister. Uh, I'd love to know what's man, happening there where the, you are, sir. The war criminal before me was suggesting bombing schools and homes and hospitals, and you said not a, not a word uh, to, to, to push back against that. Anyway, he, this, he, he was talking uh, about if there's Hamas this, militants uh, in those buildings, this, I think, for clarification. This, this. Okay, right. So the BBC is also okay with civilians being murdered as long as they claim a terrorist is there. And do mean claim, because you think this BBC reporter is going to prove it? You think anyone's even going to ask for evidence that they were even there? No, it turns out to see the Israeli says, Israeli government says they were there, so we killed them along with 40 civilians that happened to be provable. That's what they're doing. Now, you could argue there's a terrorist there, or maybe just a Palestinian that they claim was a terrorist, or nothing at all, and they just killed civilians to make a point which we've proven has happened throughout history. And she is completely okay with that, with these dead eyes. This preemptive attack by Palestinian resistance is legitimate and moral. This is exactly like the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. This is the Gaza Ghetto Uprising against 100 years of European and Zionist colonialism and occupation. Why do Palestinians have to pay the price for European racism and anti-Semitism and Nazism, we have been under occup occupation for over seven, 75 years. Uh, 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 that the situation is extremely difficult in Gaza currently. We talk about more than 200 Palestinians killed, uh, homes bombed, residential, residential buildings bombed, 
uh, ambulances uh, bombed. We talk about more than 1,500 injured. Uh, uh, it, this comes in a, a context of uh, destruction and annihilation against Palestinians, not only in Gaza, but in the West Bank, in Jenin, in, in Hebron, in, in Nablus, in Jerusalem, against, against Muslims and Christians in, in, in occupied, in occupied uh, Jerusalem. So what's going on is that Palestinians expectedly reacted preemptively to Israeli terror, Israeli occupation. Uh, in, in March 2023, Israel killed several Palestinian leaders and said they were planning an attack against Israel. Well, Israel exists. The Israeli occupation exists. And the Palestinians have every right to react by all means possible, by all means necessary. And this is not easy for Palestinians. I want to use Hamlet's proverbial sea of troubles. We know Israel is going to kill us anyway. We are starving. We are being besieged. I mean, even look at the, the bottom line right there. Hamas fires thousands of rockets from Gaza Strip into Israel. It's, it's just so egregiously one-sided. It's so embarrassing. You're just going to ignore the response and the civilians that have been killed? Disgusting. I mean, listen to Vanessa Bailey. She'll go to town on BBC. It's one of the worst. We are being dispossessed. We are being displaced. We know all of these. Israel is going to kill us anyway. Israel wants us kneeling. And Israel chooses to kill us when it wants to kill us. So why not fight back and die in dignity? This is the last. At, oh, see, my God, man, look at this. Look at the next one. Hamas have fired 150 rockets in response to building attack. <laughs> I mean, think about the effort it takes to some somersault around bombing a civilian building. A building attack? <laughs> I mean, I got a point they'll get into in a minute, the way they frame people dying, you know, where it's. So many Israelis killed, and then this many Palestinians have died. <laughs> I mean, it's a small point, but it matters. It's like they just died from nothing. And, you know, killed is important. They, they, they were killed. Same thing if, they were, if this, they were killed too, but they make a difference of the words to make a point. Same thing here. It's not a building attack. It is a, a war crime. ...that Israel and the West uh, have to understand that you can't oppress occupied people for about 100 years and not expect people to react to defend their very existence how much support does hamas have there this is not about hamas if you frame this as hamas this is about 12 million palestinians in right she's not even listening right after everything he just said just what she she's who supports you iran <laughs> that's they are one-minded childish people man and these these, these so-called journalists are just on a mission that's not journalism. That's propaganda, guys. She didn't even, even engage with the many different valid points he made. She just jumps right to who's responsible. Is it Rana? Is it Russia? That's where, that's where she's going with that. Gaza and the West Bank and Jerusalem. It's not me framing this as Hamas. Hamas have launched these attacks on Israel. Of course, yeah. And, 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 and the, the attacks against military bases, Israel is using its uh, third-class uh, Jews in Kupotim near Gaza as human shields. And you have seen the videos. And you didn't also push back against that. Most of the captives were soldiers, some of them taken literally from inside their tanks. And some of them were kept safe because Palestinians wanted them to be safe, because Palestinians wanted the 5,000 Palestinians imprisoned, political prisoners in Israel, to be released in exit change. Now, here's, a, here's the really important part. Now, that's a huge number of people that have been, many of them kept for years. That's and completely illegal. Nobody cares, as usual. The point, though, is that he's saying, and this is not, you could argue he's lying, which would, you know, if they were going around aimlessly killing people, you would argue they would lie about it because they don't want to say that. But my, what's interesting, though, is this is the same thing that lines up with plenty of other people's perspectives. Vanessa Bealy, for example, saying that historically, and based on what they, the people that they've met, they've interviewed, and their outward actions up until now, it, despite the narrative that we coming from one side that is, has a vested interest in lying about what they're doing, like the people we just showed you, that they go out of their way to ensure that they keep people safe because they're going to exchange them for the people they're trying to rescue, which seems to make perfect sense to me, both logically and in a war setting. So we need to wonder, are the, it, the few events that I can actually prove, are they people that are acting of their own accord because they're bad people, whatever side they're on, 
Or is that an illusion? Are we being tricked into thinking that these are people just like the same people that we, the, the, the fact that we can prove Hamas from its origin was a manipulative tactic that's now they've lost control of. So as Vanessa pointed out, there's probably still factions of them, Pete groups within Hamas that would be willing to do things they were paid for or because of Israel, the U.S. government asked them or made them do. And so that and then what their final point was that what they're doing and we'll get to it with that woman in the back of the car, which, by the way, I think I I was trying to show it on the show because I didn't there's families tuning into this. I thought it looked like the person's head was cut off and it's, it's a woman that I've come to find out, but it's because of the way the hair looked and I was just trying to skim past it. But we'll get into that in particular today. The but oh, I lost my train of thought on that. The point was. Oh, that Vanessa Billy was simply saying that the tactics they're using. And the way that they're acting and everything about it was eerily reminiscent to the people that the U.S. government were funding in Syria. And in her opinion, does not in any way represent what Hamas or any of the other groups in this resistance faction are doing or would do. Now, take that for what you will. She could be wrong. Maybe, that you know, it could be, as I said, an anomaly. It could be a random person. So just keeping that in mind, what he just said is makes more sense than anything. That they do have people that are captured and they wouldn't want to hurt these people because then that would be given they would use it against their own people but the the the, the support here is popular even from uh, uh, factions belonging to fatah islamic jihad uh, uh, leftist faction they participated in these preemptive legitimate and moral attacks against israeli uh, uh, military posts against israeli tanks you've seen the tanks you've seen the israeli military and even the, the civilians they were treated Honorably, they were uh, respected. There were videos of Palestinian freedom fighters telling those Israeli civilians that we're not going to kill you, although these are settlers living in populated areas. One of these uh, uh, Israeli villages, so-called villages, uh, has land that belongs to my grandmother. She always would, would, would point and tell me that uh, if we free Palestine, we will be rich. And I tell my grandmother, may, may God rest her soul now, that some of your, 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 your neighbor's grandmother liberated these lands, maybe momentarily. But this is how the dream comes true in the future. So think about what he's saying there. And you have to realize how important this stuff is. That woman who is now dead lived her entire life post-occupation, dreaming of a time when she just has the right to take back what is hers. And all of this time, you've had Israeli occupiers, illegal settlers, who have been reaping the benefits and have become rich because of it, because they stole her land. Very clear. And nobody's denying this, as you just heard them say of their own accord. We should kick them out. We're going to take that territory. We're going to take this town. We're going to go to the next one after that. With no regard for the people's lives or what they've done or the fact that they were already displaced to be there in the first place. People that don't include any of this are either ignorant of the reality or are bad people hiding this from you. Palestinians will keep fighting back. The Zionists, uh, aided and abetted by the West, by, by Europe, by, by, by the United Kingdom, that presented Palestine on a silver platter to the Zionist movement a hundred okay. years. We uh, will continue despite every and all genocidal uh, uh, acts by Israel. We will fight back. And if we die, we die fighting. Who funds uh, Hamas? I don't care. I don't know. Did, did you see him again after everything he just said? She just, it just breathes right over her head. Didn't care about any of it. Who, okay, who funds Hamas? The same thing she asked last time. The only thing she's trying to do is get some kind of gotcha moment about how Iran or Russia is involved, even though it's pretty clear that they're not. And we'll get to the Iran part in a second. That's all she has. It's just, it's, it really is embarrassing. I would love to meet some of these people and just laugh in their face about what a ridiculous person they are. And then, you know, anyway, talk circles around them with things they don't understand. The point here is that this is ridiculous and embarrassing to go from everything he just said, what you can prove to what she just asked. Every, and all genocidal uh, uh, acts by Israel, we will fight back. And if we die, we die fighting. Who funds uh, Hamas? I don't care. I don't know. I'm not Hamas. These uh, soldiers... <laughs> Are Hamas fighters and other Palestinian freedom fighters are modestly armed. If you've seen, okay. you've seen the arms, the weapons they, they're carrying. They, they have fired very little... thousands of rockets into Israel today and continue to do so. Where do you think those rockets come from? They are. See? It's 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 not even very. It's pretty clumsy, actually. She's trying to get to the book. Is it Iran? Is it Russia? Hamid, I don't know. I'm not a Hamas uh, spokesperson. You can ask any of them if you 
Uh, okay. They are bringing fight here. Uh, well, I'd happily talk to somebody from Hamas if they were willing to come on television and, and talk to us. Um, because They would and they will. And their statements have been ignored by BBC and everybody else. These people are criminals. The concern amongst many is that Iran actually funds Hamas and other uh, prescribed terrorist organizations, Palestinian prescribed... No, not really. I mean, I, I could easily point to you examples of support, just like the U.S. government supports all sorts of illegal extremist groups around the world. And that's not the sense that I'm talking about this being an illegal extremist group. I'm rather pointing out that's what they're claiming this is. And you could prove the U.S. government's doing that in spades around the world, but no one cares about that. In this context, you can easily prove that Iran is just ideologically involved and very clearly has support support these efforts and very clearly has stood that ground in regard to fighting ISIS, despite the lies from the U.S. government, along with Russia, easily provable. And then they assassinate Soleimani, who was clearly responsible. And the point is truly when you break it down, because they were fighting the U.S. proxy army that they pretended they were fighting themselves, like Al Qaeda, like a Mujahideen, like any of the rest of them. Easily provable break down to the immediacy Do Corbett's documentary, Ben Swan's documentary to the receipts guys that we can prove that they created these entities and they're still using them to this day. But, but she'll tell you because like, think about interviewing somebody with one point in mind, them not getting there. And so you just decide to state that point for yourself. That's not journalism. You might as well just had a guy on and go, shut up. Iran's harming them. End of show. That's all she wanted. Disgusting, stupid. Five terrorist organizations, and they're actually oh. using them for their own ends to foment um, problems in the Middle East, to try and prevent Israel making alliances with other Middle Eastern countries. Um, this, what this are your thoughts on that at all? This has nothing to do with Iran. This is Palestine, this is Gaza Please. that is defending itself. I, 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 okay. Anybody mentioning Iran is trying to, to draw, to, to make Palestinians look even more evil and justified. And just end, ends it. We're done. We're done. I can't get him to say it. So end, the, end it. End it. <laughs> Cut the feed. It's just sad, man. It really is sad that there's a show. There's. I mean, you you can ask the question, sure, and we'll get into it in a minute. You know, is maybe is Iran involved? Maybe. I, I mean, look, look at this point with what's now beginning to happen. I wouldn't surprise me if Iran steps in, just like Lebanon already is. Like we'll talk about, but that does not then mean that they've always been the ones pulling the strings. It's just not the reality. And I mean, it's it's provable in the sense that there is no evidence to suggest that that's happening the way they say it is and you can prove all sorts of examples of how what they're truly doing is based on a it's it's a larger cause than just what's happening in palestine but in regard to what just happened this is clearly not the iranian pulling the strings narrative and i'm going to prove to you that that is stemming from israel trying to make this argument and to get their the influencers that they pretend to be fighting for america saying so in the united states because at the end of the day <clears throat> It's about framing Iran as the bad guy. Let's not forget seven countries in five years and the idea of Iran being focused on all stemming back to Israel and the discussions, you know, post 9-11 and so on. I mean, it's unreal how obvious it is that they've always been trying to keep this. I mean, I mean, like, I'm not, I don't want to deviate too much, but the point of Operation Ajax, right? The illegal CIA coup of Iran. And then Israel completely immersed in that throughout the time they occupied it. And then, of course, the Iranians fight back and take their territory back. And ever since, they've been the bad guy, evil terrorist. Well, what an interesting overlap. People fight for their territory back, and they become the terrorist. Do I need to even say more? So here is Times of Gaza pointing out, which again, you just don't take Times of Gaza's word for it. You can prove this, because in many cases, you'll find Israelis proudly pointing stuff like this out. Israeli warplanes target medical staff in Gaza Strip during the ongoing aggression, which they have been doing for as long as I've been covering this. And that's my point from before. I wasn't able to find the article where you've got people on the record, people from Associated Press going, they were firing at me. I had press and they wouldn't stop because I was trying to cover what they were doing or beating up people, of amb ambulance people trying to say, or uh, uh, me uh, medics trying to help people on the ground. And that's a war crime. They don't care. They cheer for this stuff. Now I'm going to show you another example on the other side of it too, for those that are already jumping the gun. It'll be there in a second. Times of Gaza also points out the destruction caused to a UN school in the Gaza Strip after being hit by an Israeli airstrike. But nobody cares about this because, you know, they're going to pretend that they were terrorists there, even though you can prove that they weren't because it's, it's literally, but not because of this, but it's also actually a UN school. So you could argue that there was UN personnel, but the idea being that this is not a location that was being used, which you can prove. And just so you can see the video.
Now, whether this was a wayward rocket or whatever, the point is that this stuff happens on a regular basis and nobody cries foul about the school being bombed or any of the rest of what happened or whether people died when it was that when it was ongoing. Here's an update. And this is from Times of Gaza. So we're only being told now 200 Palestinians, but they're claiming 370 have been killed, more than 2000 injured during the Israeli aggression. Here are just a few pictures of not IDF, mil or, excuse me, I keep doing that, not Hamas militants, but random civilians, children being bombed with bleeding. But, you know, I guess it only matters when it's a Syrian child that you can blame on Assad. Then the whole world cares. But when you got a child sitting in an ambulance that's bloody or outside of one, that happens to be a Palestinian, uh, you know, a real example, by the way, not the Oman version that we proved they faked and put fake blood on and told him they'd give him food. And he later testified that they, he was lying about that because they offered him food. And his dad stood there with him as he said that. You know, oops, even though... MSNBC famously cried on air because of Oman was so sad. They lied to us, you know, like babies in incubators, cold floors, and the, uh, um, I'm looking on the name. In any case, the, I have her name is in my head. I can't remember now. The, you know, the classic discussion of her claiming in front of Congress that they were putting cold babies on the floor of their incubators and killing them. And it turns out that she was actually the daughter of a U.S. ambassador, and they lied about it. And it's all history. You can prove it. Even Wikipedia will point it out. My point is, this is an actual child that was hurt, as you can prove. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Here's a dead or dying civilian, another an infant baby that they're dealing with because they bombed an area where the baby is suffering. On and on and on. All this stuff matters, guys, but no one's talking about the other side of it. Low Key, who's a pretty famous singer, host of the Watchdog podcast. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm right. I thought he was a singer. Huh. Tell me if I'm wrong. I thought he was also a singer, but he also hosts a podcast in the Mid-Press News. Simply pointing out, Israeli occupation forces just killed five children in the Abu Dhaka family in Khan Yunus, Gaza. This type of violence our media barely mentions and our governments actively support. Many different civilians have been killed in this discussion. Here's a good example of it. Megatron points out the Israeli army begins mass killing civilians in Gaza Strip with missiles. Entire residential buildings are razed to the ground. There are hundreds of dead, dead under the rubble, which you already saw a video for. Now, again, don't believe it because Megatron said so. The point is this is an easily verifiable point that's already been proudly paraded around by Israelis on the internet because they show you what happens when you put when you attack Israel. That's, this is why it's so easy to prove this stuff. And this is an easily provable civilian area. And all they're going to say is that they were terrorists there. And nobody cares to even push in because that's what they're supposed to do. What I said is, where's the outrage about this? Does anybody care that it's happening in reverse? Even if you claim it happened to them first, which you could prove that it didn't. What not that a contradict contradiction? Isn't that a double standard? Yeah, it really is. It's disgusting hypocrisy. My point is, before you ask who started it, even get into that conversation. As I've said many times, and for those that haven't heard it, realize that it was started by Zionists 75 years ago. Fact. Illegal occupation. No way around it. It is now and always has been an illegal occupation per the United Nations. Fact. According to the Geneva Conventions, an occupied territory has the right to armed rebellion. Fact. Regardless of whether you're attacked. Easily, if you care, you can do the research on this. And I've done entire shows on this. And prove this of your own accord. Prove the UN maintained that it's an occupied territory. Prove that the Geneva Conventions argue that you have the right to armed rebellion and all of the international community have signed on with that. If you care enough, you'll prove that to yourself and it's easily provable. The point is that that then means that no matter what has happened since, the fault is the Israeli government because they're illegal occupying and because all the Palestinians are trying to do is take back their territory. At you, and again, as I said earlier, you can get into the conversations about illegal actions and civilians being killed because no matter what the context, that's not what this is talking about. It's talking about military. So if that does happen, yes, in Israeli, Palestinian, they should be accountable for it. Go to jail if necessary. The point, though, is that you can't pretend what is happening is all because terrorists want to take away what is the Israelis. That's not true. It's simply provable. Just another example of Israeli warplanes bombing a house. In Gaza, which happens, I mean, it's not, it's just, it's almost routine to these people. It's been going on for 75 years with all sorts of narratives. <clears throat> Here is Muhammad uh, Shihada pointing out, this is what one single Israeli airstrike has done to an entire neighborhood, a civilian neighborhood in Gaza. All civilians, a high-rise building with a hundred apartments wiped out 
just to terrorize and collectively punish a caged civilian population. Now, that's what's important. Let's just say for sake of conversation, everything you're saying that the Palestinians have been doing inside of Israel is true. Are you then going to argue that justifies the murder of an entire civilian Arpara building? If you believe that, then you're a disgusting person. The same thing I point out about the U.S. government saying, well, we're going to give cluster bombs to the Ukraine because, well, Russia's using them. Well, that's not like that's a really super useful tool anyway. Just, I mean, the point is it's about punishing people. So you're going to be just as bad because they did it first? What are you, six? Clearly it proves that you don't care about human rights or you don't care about showing the example of the rules-based international order. You just do whatever you want as long as you have an excuse. Same thing here. We're going to murder civilians because bad guys. And everyone closes their eyes to it. There's been tens of these strikes today. There'll be more tonight. Here's what it looks like. Oh, I see. I think it's just right here. No real sound to it. Just showing you the video so you can see. And this is an entirely civilian area, guys. Now, look, even if you want to pretend that there was people using these areas, which I think we've proven that they haven't in past shows, but as well as the discussions about Syrian girl pointing out that they weren't firing from these areas, the idea is that there are provably civilians that live in these areas. Their entire homes are destroyed. So whether it's being stolen from them or whether it's being bombed in front of them with their families buried in the rubble seems the same to them. And this is nothing new. There's, I mean, there's kids walking around. These are, this is where they live. Imagine this was your block. Pretty sad. Now this one is footage of the aftermath of the strikes in the Gaza Strip. So similar point. Just more footage showing you civilian neighborhoods. Let's not forget, again, civil Gaza is a densely civilian populated area. One of the most in the world. So bombing into it is a guarantee you're going to kill civilians, which happens every time. Look at all this, guys. I mean, these are huge apartment buildings that are gone. Now, whether there were in, there were civilians in there, mind you, especially because they were bombing overnight. The point, though, is that this is their home. Their homes are gone, whether they were there or not. Doesn't that matter? And these people are not Hamas. That's the other point to remember, just because Laura Loomer wants to stupidly tell you that everybody there is a terrorist because she's existing back in 1995. The point is that this is obviously wrong. These people are just civilians that will actively many of them will speak up and say, I don't want, I don't want any part of this. I just want to live my life. Far more happening on the other side of this because people in this case are forced to live and face the destruction and the attacks and the checkpoints and the stealing and the water that kills them and the electricity doesn't work. But my point is that there are some of them. My, on the other side, there's far more Israelis that want, like, just want to back away and not acknowledge what their government is doing. My point, though, is on either side of it, you've got people that just don't want any part in this and are forced to take part in any way because of what, they're, what it was done to them. In this case the bombing of their homes and their families. And they're called terrorists for it. Typical. Now here in reverse is somebody pointing out one of the areas that they're saying is a massacre to Israel. Now, what I think is interesting in this difference is that you can show some bombs landing, plenty of them, lots of them, in fact, in inside the area. But I've yet to see any huge examples other than burning cars in a parking lot or different things like that of massive, ma you know, huge block wide civilian casualties. I have not seen that. Interesting. Now, that's, people have died on both sides. But the overlap is ridiculous when you look at what just happened in Gaza and the building continual numbers and the mass bombing of openly civilian areas. So what this is showing you is a street where you've got cars burned out on the side. And I guess we could look at this as what happened to Israel, or you could look at this as something that happened back and forth, right? That you have People that, I mean, look, I think the bottom line is just comparing the way they look. So here is a street with cars and, and clearly some chaos, which does look like a war zone. That is what this, that's what seems to be happening. But I think what's interesting is, you know, looking at these comparatively, like the idea of a huge neighborhood in rubble compared to some cars burned out on the road, which is bad, you know, I mean, it's wartime, which has been for 75 years. Let's understand that. I just think it's interesting.
So this is a massacre in Israel, whereas this is something we're supposed to ignore. You getting the point? Now, here is an interesting example for those that it were about the other point about the, the ambulance. So what this is, is a, it's a video that's been spread around showing Hamas bombing an ambulance. Now, the argument on the other side of this is, well, the Palestinians are using these things to hide what they're doing. And look, the other point we just showed you is, is undeniably an example of people. And again, my point is we've shown you this probably in my experience 15 times on the show. Blatantly provable where you've got ambulance medics coming to help people and getting shot, bombed. It's, it's an open secret. I mean, they even, they even parry it around when, when they want to. This point, or the other point was, that, that was one of those examples of an of ambulance that was bombed in the process of helping people. And, but you can still go ahead and feel free to argue that there was some secret agenda we didn't know. Certainly possible. In this case, same thing. You got an ambulance. Now, what's interesting, though, is I've only seen this posted by people arguing this is Hamas showing this. I have yet to be able to prove that Hamas is the one that posted this, but it wouldn't surprise me. They're claiming Hamas posted this video bombing an ambulance, showing that they're committing war crimes, right? So first, let's just look at the, the this bomb drops. Now, first of all, if anybody can recognize that, I'm interested to know if you think that that is even a bomb that Hamas would drop. Because if somebody who knows better, if you can prove that that's not a bomb that they would drop, that would be an interesting point to make. That something, you know, we've seen them fake things like this, even killing their own people to give, to make it look like something's happening. But that's not what I'm saying here. But just if you know more, let me know. But again, Hamas drops a bomb, they say, right? On an ambulance. Doesn't seem like a huge explosion, quite frankly, but a little bit of a pop right there. Okay, so my point is, what they're arguing is Hamas released the video of themselves bombing an Israeli ambulance. They are literally providing evidence of their own war crimes. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. The entire world must join Israel against the these barbarian monsters. Fact, cl classic, right? First of all, Anas says, fact check, they were using ambulance as military personnel carriers. Now, I can't verify what he's saying. Wouldn't surprise me. But I can show you a close-up image of what this is, what this ambulance is doing. Okay, so you see them running. It gets a little closer. Okay, check this out. You see an IDF car, and you see IDF members. Those are three members of the military. And they seemingly got one of them. That's a member of the military. Now, nothing in the ambulance was hurt. They bombed the military members. Now, two things you could argue. Either that was them militarily using an ambulance, which would arguably be a war crime, or they tactfully bombed just the military people and didn't hurt the ambulance. Because that's ultimately what happened. Look at it. It's not even, they bombed right to the left of this. It's not even barely hurt. Now, look, I'm not going to say that, that maybe that's, the, if there was a person in the front seat, that maybe they, didn't, they got shrapnel or something hurt them. All I'm pointing out is that seems like three military personnel that got bombed. And yet they're making this big point about how they're deliberately bombing ambulances, even though you can prove an ongoing policy of doing that or shooting children, as we already showed you. It just seems like a bunch of hypocritical lies to me in most cases. Now, Max Egan, who you guys know, points out, I have much footage of Israel bombing ambulances in Gaza, as does anybody that's been paying attention. It's a standard Israeli tactic, and there is no surprise to see their own methods being used against them. Now, this is one of the many things that I probably could have pulled into the show, as I'm saying those examples, and you know, don't take my word for it. Do your research. But you'll, you'll come to see, there's just so many angles to this topic that I just didn't have time to grab all of this stuff or it would have been five hours instead of four, which seems like it's going to be. But realize that it's easy to show. And again, we'll proudly point this stuff out. But that's not the, the point is whether this is what they say it is. And to me, it seems pretty obvious that it's not. Now, here's the thread that I was showing you the other day. Eight million views on this. She's, this is a defense attorney, conservative for Politico, I guess. I don't know. But it says thread of videos showing Palestinian cruelties. Well, most of these seem like images to me, quite frankly. But what I just found interesting is from one day, check this out. Looks like most of them have been deleted. What do you know? Now, that could be because they're at least Twitter sees them as being fake and they remove them. Or it could be because they got deleted because they're fake or any number of other reasons, but those are some of the most usual possibilities. So I'm not saying, again, do not hear this as there was no actions taken by Palestinians that would be seen as war crimes. I disagree with that, in fact. 
But what's interesting is that this is one of the threads that was early being circulated as all the proof. Jack was so big under that post we pointed out the other day, sharing all of this. Now, this one we'll talk about in a second. This, it, and even this has been posted as an Israeli woman, and it turns out it wasn't. So just seeing it, it's so much misinformation flying around. But I think it's important to see that there are some of these we'll get into. But overall, that most of these, I was going to show you one of these, I think was this one. Okay. So w- this is one of the ones that people keep saying, showing, you know, you don't care. They're killing some elderly people. Okay. I, of course I do. Is that what happened? All I've ever seen from this is an image. Now, excuse me, guys. I apologize for those watching with family and so on. This is a uh, graphic image. It's only an image, but it's graphic. Saying Palestinian terrorists are shooting elderly at the bus stop. Now, all I see is dead people at a bus stop. Could it have been the Palestinians? Of course it could have. Do we know that? No. I don't know why anybody is naive enough to just take a screen. Oh, I do. Twitter files. That's why. Because you just got Twitter filed. If you're now, that, by the way, that doesn't mean when I say that that you're wrong. It simply means that you're taking at face value an image or a screenshot because you've been trained to think that that means everything. You don't think that this could have been IDF that killed them? You don't think this could have been an old picture that they lied about? Actually, let's let's just, just for sake of uh, conversation, let's look. Again, I didn't have, I forgot to do this. Didn't have time. You guys have done this with me many times. If you don't remember this, Ten Eye is one of many reverse image searches that you, at the very least, you should start with. Where is it? Can I just download that? Dang it. Okay, what in the heck? That's pretty frustrating. Sorry for the delay. Is that literally not that? Am I blind? There it is. God, I am blind. Sorry about that. Okay, zero matches, which usually suggests that it is new, but you know that just that's most likely the case. Okay, so my point though is the same. We don't know, and if you think for one second that they wouldn't kill people that were just to sell you on a narrative, any of the governments we're talking about, you're you're naive. But also recognize that we just simply don't know, and people are already parading this around as proof of things that we can't verify. And then on top of all of it, could it have been? Could it have been the Palestinians? Certainly possible. Could it have been people that are being are, are acting as Palestinians, as we talked about with Vanessa? Of course, that's possible too. And that's why I'm pointing this out to people sharing this as if it proves anything doesn't. It, it's, I mean, even the corporate media says the stupid narrative of the fog of breaking war, or of breaking news, or the fog of war, same kind of thing. Now, this is the one. Uh, let me see which one this was. Okay, yeah, this is the same one. We'll get to it in a second. I don't want to get too graphic on it. It's the woman that is the the one that I think we can prove, who is a German tattoo artist. Anyway, I guess that you know the point is you're going to see a lot of pictures of things that people claim are something, and then apparently, like almost all of them have been removed, which is just pretty ridiculous. Now, this is one that I do find very interesting that's being misrepresented, which is which is hard to watch just because it's scary what seems to be happening to this person, whether it's IDF or anybody else. But first, this is what's being presented as a civilian being taken. Now, some posts are going, here's an American that was taken. Some posts are saying, here's that German girl being taken. Both of those are wrong. Some of them are saying it's a civilian being taken, which is also wrong. Noah, is her name apparently, was partying in the south of Israel in a peace music festival when when Hamas terrorists kidnapped her and dragged her from Israel to Gaza. Noah was held hostage by Hamas. So as far as we know, there's no evidence anything has happened to her. But I'll show you the video in a second. Well, first of all, Dr. Saeed, well, let's watch the video first. Hmm. Thought I downloaded it. Hold on. Maybe I was going to watch it right there. Oh, I think that's, I think I was just going to show it right here. Okay. So this is the video of this person. Now, note what she's wearing, by the way, being taken along with another guy. Now, yes, look, there, in, in the sense of the idea of people, let's not forget the earlier points about how routinely Israel has taken hostages and kicked in doors and taken family members, in many cases indefinitely. That's why there's thousands of people held in Israel that they're hoping to get returned with no, no, no due process, no criminal trial, you know, but democracy. 
Now, that's no way to justify the illegal action in return, because that would be stupid, even though that's what a lot of people are doing today about Palestinians. But the point is that this is just to show you that people are being taken and then are then making sure you understand what they would see as the justifiable reason for doing so, whether you agree with that. And then also noting that this is that, there, that we don't know what happened after this. Let's watch it. Oh, that's at the end. Sorry. Let's, it'll start over. Here we go. That's her right there. So that's scary. Whether, whether whoever they are, wherever they're from, that's that's scary, right? That's the, the you're in an un, unstable situation where people could do whatever they want, right? That's wartime, and that's why I always point this out. Who's to say that this random individual right here isn't going to decide to do whatever he wants when he gets the moment, right? That's terrifying, and that should not be used to say everyone on one side or the other is a certain way because that would be really dumb. But a lot of people are pretty dumb today. Now, what she was wearing is uh what well, it's i don't know why i can't stop it in here hold on i'll get back to it <laughs> appears to be an idf outfit and that does it that it turns out that's what it is now first of all dr saeed says kind of weird these don't really look like palestinians in all these videos aha well that might mean something maybe not but let's not forget, we have examples of many but very highly respected people in this field, like Vanessa Peely, saying that there's examples that they suggest to them that these are not Palestinians, or rather that these are people that are posing as this, or that are Hamas working for somebody else, that are carrying out the acts that are going to be used to justify what they do back. Just consider that as a possibility. That's all. Now here, this say under the same tweet, Bean points out, also a soldier. So playing her part in war and occupation. Right. So if, and this person says, no, a German tattoo artist who traveled there for a peace festival. Now they're incorrect. What they're thinking of is the other person. And this person says no, and gives you the example directly from their uh, Instagram, which you can check for yourself. And that is her. She's wearing the IDF outfit. It's in, in, and you can clearly tell this is a person. There's her name, Noah from Israel. Interesting. Okay, so the first one people are spreading around is, in, act, in fact, an IDF member, and that would mean being taken in the middle of a war would be at least a justifiable act. Now, whether crimes were committed against her, tortured, raped, anything like that is horrifying, and I hope that's not what happens. And the people that do so should go to prison for it, whatever side. But we don't know. And until we know, we shouldn't guess, because that's stupid. Here's another point. <clears throat> Nuan Soturo points out, the lives of both innocent Israelis and Palestinians hold equal value and importance. Hate and animosity are never the best solutions to end hostility as they result in more loss of lives and suffering. My deepest condolences go out to the families who have lost their loved ones in this tragic conflict. Now, doesn't that seem like what everybody should be saying? Like if we're actually pretending we are what they say they are in the mainstream discussion, that we care about human life, that we care about human rights when we know that none of them really do, wouldn't you argue that's what you would say? That we hold life valuable on any conversation? <clears throat> Whether that's the family members of what they call terrorists or not? Whether that, you know, it's, it's obvious that that is logic. That is actual compassion. But guess what they get responded to? You cannot negotiate with terrorists. Okay, well, are we talking about terrorists? No, he didn't say Hamas or IDF. He simply said innocent people on both sides, just like the other point. But you see, people in this conversation can't handle that right now. If you say both sides matter, you're the person saying all lives matter. So what, you hate black people? It's like, what do you, what do you, how do you hear that when I say all lives matter? Same thing here. They're going, no, they're all terrorists. But okay, you're either saying that even innocent civilians in Gaza are terrorists, or you're saying that there is no conversation where you can decouple them from each other and that there is that you bomb them all and it doesn't matter. They're bad people, guys, or they're completely misguided. This person said, no, I'm talking about terrorists. Or I'm not talking about terrorists. I'm talking about innocent people. He even reiterates that. God, look how hard it was to get to that response. It's so stupid how controlled Twitter is right now. This person says, sadly, part of what terrorists do is use innocent people as human shields. Well, we know that. The U.S. government does it. Israel, Israel does it. 
We know all sorts of the U.S.-backed manipulators all around the world do it on a regular basis and blame the other side. You can prove it. But that's, you know, but doesn't, so what is his point, though? That because bad people use human shields that we shouldn't care about human life? He says, but you are ignoring the terrorists with some kind of moral equivalency. It's despicable, really. Wow. And there's my point. So by actually saying that both sides' lives matter, you're now the bad guy who's making, because, because the current zeitgeist is that only one side matters and only one side is the good guy and anybody else is terrorist. Okay, we're right back in 2001. Right, which is kind of the point. As some people would argue, this is about setting up the next kind of nine, or the, the, the using the narrative, this is Israel's 9-11 because they're going to revamp all of this stuff. Certainly possible. But either way, that is what we should be talking about. Now, here is the one about the German tattoo artist. Now, this is the Daily Mail. I wouldn't trust the Daily Mail as far as I could throw them, but it does seem that there are plenty of people that are making this argument, so at least consider that. But personally, other than statements, I mean, look, it, what I can see, this is the, and, and apparently we have the mother who is saying that's her. So, it, it, I mean, arguably it does seem this is the case. Either way, it seems like an egregious war crime, whoever committed it. Now, my point is, and it's that, that's that video right there, and all it is a face down, what we're talking about here is the case that this is where it comes into play about people like I mean, Vanessa Bealey and plenty of others making the argument that these people are acting in ways that seem to represent and are eerily similar to what the U.S. backed extremists in Syria were doing. And her argument is that she does not believe that Hamas or the rest of them as an ideological entity would do this. But that does not mean that you wouldn't find the individual that would decide to do so. But you have all these people here and none of them are dressed like Hamas, mind you. So you could argue it's random people, but it's either so it's either a Hamas organized effort or it's random Palestinians. And if it's random Palestinians, you can't pretend that represents everybody in some kind of movement. But you see, it doesn't matter. It's a nebulous, always moving circle of nonsense. They just say what they want you to think. Now, the point, though, is it seems a, a German tattoo artist, 30 years old, died. They claim it's killed by Hamas. And I'd like proof of that. But the sad thing is it happened. Now, first of all, we realize we should point out that this in a situation where you're where you're in a wartime situation. Now, she didn't know that, obviously, aside from the fact that everybody should have been aware that you're going to a concert on occupied territory where people are unhappy with that. But she's not told that she's not raised to think that the media doesn't tell her that. So she has no idea, most likely. But then something happens now in a war zone situation. Bad things like this happen. No way should anybody justify that. This should be, no one should condone this. But what we do see, and it's everywhere on Twitter, is condoning this in reverse. Didn't we just show you civilian bomb, entire civilian buildings bombed, that they cheer and eat popcorn and watch happen? How is that different? It's very disconcerting to see how bl willfully blind people are to the overlaps here. Now, I'm more than willing to say this is egregiously bad. This is terrible. And un a civilian woman, who knows what happened? That's disgusting. And the people responsible should be charged for that. But then if we're willing to say that, as anybody should, who cares, why can't the other side of people claiming that none of this is, a, that only one side counts, say that what happened in Gaza with the civilians matters? You get the point. Now here is, um, oh, wait, wait a minute. I thought I had that video. Oh, I guess I don't. Well, just the, so I'm going down to this. I thought I had the other tweet with the, the, the video. This is the, the girl who is was there, and they believe that she's dead. I think that's the sentiment. Here's the mom holding it up. Now, I'm interested to know how they know that's her. It's probably because of marks on the body, I would argue. If the mom knows that that's her, then it's probably something we should take it reasonably at face value because I think a mom would be able to tell for the most part. Now, I was going through this earlier, and just, you know, the point is, here, oh, it's right here. Let's read this. Hamas has claimed the body was a female Israeli soldier, but it was last night confirmed to be Shawnee by her cousin who told Daily the, the Mail they recognized the distinctive leg tattoos. That, that's what I thought. But still, you could argue that that's it's somewhat dispute, but I, I think it's pretty clear that was her. And it's disgusting. And Hamas then either thought it was an Israeli soldier, why, we don't know, and acted that way because they thought that, but even still, well, I mean, look, if it, if, they, if if they thought it was an Israeli soldier, you would argue in the context of war that that would be something that they would think they could shoot at and kill. 
But even then, I think it's obvious that it was not a soldier. So ultimately, this is something that they would know if they were actively trying to do this, they were killing somebody. My point is simply just to make it clear that if this was exactly what it looks like, then this is a crime and they should be charged for it. But I'm interested by both the fact that they claim it was an Israeli soldier, so they either killed an innocent civilian to argue they killed an innocent soldier or a soldier, even though they actually did kill soldiers. Like something just doesn't seem to add up there, but you guys decide for yourselves. But by pointing out that there's an overwhelming amount more of civilians being killed on one side of this is not to diminish the fact that this person was killed and that this is wrong. I want people to hear me on that because people are going to go out of their way to make it a make the statement that this is about some kind of rationalization of what side is right and wrong. And that's not the case when it comes down to the legalities. Yes, there is right and wrong. When it comes down to killing civilians, both sides are wrong if that's happening and we can see it. It's amazing. People can't come to that conclusion. That's the same point here. By saying both sides matter, you are a bad person apparently today. Now, here's an example of a civilian, an Israeli elderly woman who is quite literally being carted around, which, you know, who knows, maybe something happened after this. But as Vanessa Bealey also showed us, there's a lot of evidence of completely unmolested in the sense of like being beat up or anything or molested in that sense, Israeli hostages that they've taken in the sense of trying to get back their people. So if they were to hurt them, they likely wouldn't get them back. And here she is being driven around. Just laughing. Interesting, right? Just kind of, it doesn't suck. If, if based on the narratives we're being, they're being spun about all of these people, wouldn't it stand to reason that that's not what would happen? But, you know, just by not seeing it in that one clip does not mean that it didn't happen later. Just showing you have some objective points. Now here, I saw Abaku uh, 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 Halil, excuse me, says, talking about hostage taking, Israel has perfected it to an art form. Regularly, Israel kidnaps the sisters, brothers, parents, children of wanted Palestinians in order to force the person to surrender. I mean, again, whether that's collective punishment or just blatant war crimes against civilians, it's a regular tactic that they openly talk about. He says that, however, does not horrify Ilan Omar, Bernie Sanders, or anybody else hiding that fact. Right? I mean, the whole point of before is not to try to rationalize that bad things are happening, but to make sure we understand that it always happens in war and realize that where this begins and ask the question whether this would be happening the same way if their land hadn't been stolen from them 75 years ago. Maybe it would. But I think it's an obvious point to recognize who has created this problem. It's like saying that when Syrians fight back against American soldiers in Syria, that they're somehow terrorists. Well, that's exactly what they said. When Iran defended Syrian against the U.S. occupation, that's why they called the, the IRGC terrorists. Do you not see the overlap? An illegal occupier and people that fight against them, and they get called the terrorists. There's a reason that there's an overlap there, guys. And in the sense there, there probably are civilians that get killed on both sides of it. And that's too bad, and everyone should be accountable for it. But who started the illegal invasion? It's, not an, it's a very valid point, and you know it. Now, here is an interesting overlap going back to post-9-11, post where we have the ridiculous person who is called Howard Stern, who is saying that they should murder Palestinian children in the streets. Now, Robert wrote about this recently, saying exception to cancel culture, calling for killing Palestinian children is fine with corporate media, and we're seeing that yet again today. Robert's been knocking out of the park lately. You should make sure you, you check all this out. But the bottom line is he just simply, well, here, maybe I should just grab it for you. I, didn't, I wasn't planning on it, but just do this real quick, show you this whole process. Now, this, this video is just him after all that, actively calling for their killing because, well, they're going to grow up to be terrorists. Doesn't that sound eerily familiar to what we just played you from the Israeli government? It is. Here's what he had to say. Oh, hold on. Now I got to find it again. I just downloaded it. Hold on. I thought I did. Why is it so confusing me right now? Apologize for that. Okay, I'm pretty sure I just downloaded that. Hey, hi. By the way, I hope you guys like the new setup. We're trying to make that work. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, in the in the show notes here. And I want to be. Oh, that's what I did. 
apologize for this, guys. I'm getting all over the place. The re just for you guys know, the reason I'm having trouble finding this stuff is I had all this stuff downloaded. And I added an I just added another one to it. And now it's like impossible to find. I don't know why. There it is. My God, I can't believe I can't see that. Apologize for the delay twice so far. Man, this is why I shouldn't grab these peripheral things without having them ready. But in any case, I think this is important to hear. So here, here is what this ridiculous human being said. I don't like camera in the Middle East. I think maybe Palestine. And they're just celebrating in the street. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they're uh, so oh, oh, also, no, don't miss the earliest point in there. Maybe Palestine. <laughs> we don't even know if they're Palestinian, but let's kill Palestinian children anyway, because maybe they're maybe that's who they are. These people are so stupid. I'm in the Middle East, I think maybe Palestine. And they're just celebrating in the street. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they're uh, celebrating. They the jump down. Wreck the their lives. Wreck their lives. For once, it, uh, allow us. Whether you need Israel to do it or the United States to do it, I don't care which. You know, to me, that alone is a reason to bomb yeah, Allow yeah, us to bomb them. them. So people celebrating in the streets is enough to... I mean, think about how crazy that is. Even though they know that the U.S. government is predominantly involved with what is happening to them and what's been ongoing with their occupied territory. And so this happens, and they, and they cheer. Whatever your thoughts are, I'm not condoning the fact that they're celebrating that people died, because that's that's... It's horrifying. But the reality is that they said that's a reason to bomb people. <laughs> I mean, and even then, do we know what they were celebrating? Were they celebrating the fact that that happened and people died? Or were they celebrating the fact that this, I mean, you, there's a lot of ways to look at this. The bottom line is, whatever your perspective, to argue we should murder children is somehow the moral stance. I mean, guys, these people are bad and it, they're now slowly sweeping people into this to to make the, people genuinely have this stance now as if it's the righteous way to look at things and they're blind that's the same this is what we we're saying earlier about israel about ukraine where they are turning people in their country in their their occupied people into sympathizers with their disgusting agenda it's crazy to me i'm on right now bomb them now in the street how how would they have a nuclear in the street, weapon five years old jumping up and down celebrating five year olds those and five year olds will grow up to attack our okay, children they're showing it right now if you if kill if, them if you look at nbc kill them for four. celebrating kill in them in their schools at five look, years old they're being indoctrinated there they are. Is they're, they're, did she just say bomb their schools <laughs> They're all celebrating in the streets. Yeah, like they uh, Today, drop the nuclear bomb on them. So was that like seven times in a row they've said kill them all, kill them all, bomb them today, do nuclear weapons, bomb their schools? Right, but these are the good people. No oh, reason for we have to teach them a lesson. Give them nuclear warfare. It's the only thing they understand. Oh, right, because all Palestinians are stupid and don't understand anything but terrorism and war. Right, because they're the stupid ones. Right, Howard? <laughs> My God, like, a, like the bastard really children they are. Wow. It's terrible. I can't even believe that. Name, now, I will say that this guy's a shock jockey, right? The whole point is about being shocking. But let's realize he's made his stances clear all the way up until today. He's a bad person. I think it's great you guys are still on the air, though. You know. uh, I'm getting too worked up, and I'm starting to say stuff. I, hey, look yep. at how good the Japanese behave now after World War II. They're oh, my God. Look at how good the Japanese, right? Despite the fact that they bombed, even though all Japanese fronts were in retreat, but we'll promote that as look at how well they behave today. <laughs> I'm tell, there's an American sentiment that is this disgusting running through the two party paradigm, guys, on both sides. On such good behavior. I know. We country, stripped them of all their dignity, and it's time to do it again. Uh, we have the power. Now they just want exactly, to do business. Country Remove them the power, of all their dignity. The Japanese really have. now are playing by they the book. soft anymore. The Japanese, they can buy up all they want. The Japanese can build stuff for us. They can be our servants. But we don't allow them to smile anymore because we burn the smiles off their faces. Yeah, it just goes to show how vulnerable, even we're vulnerable to this. You know, dun, 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 dun. Remember that? Boom. That. That's and that people, song. Even if you think he's joking, people listen to people like this. They take them seriously. Just the same thing I point out with all the different left-right pundits out there. God damn, that's so messed up. Make sure you read this. Now, Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East point out a very important escalation. Now, this was posted a little less than 24 hours ago by a member of Israeli parliament. Ariel Kulner, member of the Israeli parliament, Lukud, Lukud and chair of, chair of the Parliamentary Caucus on EU and Israel Relations, just tweeted this. Nakba now. 
one goal, Nakba. Nakba to overshadow the Nakba of 48, Nakba in Gaza, and everywhere else. Now, first of all, when he says overshadow 48, that means ethnically cleanse more Palestinians, not idea, not, or not Mahamas, but civilians, guys. Because in the beginning, that's all it was, all civilians. It was a bunch of Palestinian people that they killed and displaced. It's amazing how we pretend that's not the reality. Even though they then proudly pointed out when you ask them on the street, right? And everywhere else, that's a little ominous. Let's not forget the overlap of what they, you know, from the Ukrainian perspective, when they're saying they want to spread this white, their white race around the world. That's from the Ukrainian Azov movement perspective. But what's interesting is they say Russia wants to invade everywhere as the U.S. government marches around invading everywhere. Interesting how they point at other people and say what they're going to do. So when they say, and everywhere else, maybe he doesn't only mean Palestine when he says everywhere else. Just a thought. But Nakba refers to the forced expulsion of 700,000 plus Palestinians. 700,000 plus Palestinians during the illegal creation of Israel. When a Likud lawmaker calls for Nakba now, he's calling for ethnic cleansing. That's not even a dis that's not even up for debate. They just feel empowered right now because they feel they have momentum with all what the, their narratives they're spinning. These genocidal statements from Israeli leadership require condemnation now, but you will not hear a peep from people in the U.S. government or anywhere else that is now seemingly right now like trying to compete for who is the most pro-Israel. It's unbelievable. So let's talk about some of the lies we see spinning around before we get into the statements coming from the U.S. politicians. Because this is it's this kind of stuff that really upsets me because you've got these huge accounts, like in this case, Ian Miles Chong, who are spreading things that are easily verifiably false. Who he's now tried to fall. I think it's down here somewhere. He's tried to follow up on this and go, well, oh, it's a hold on. First of all, so he says, well, we'll start with this. Hamas is going house to house. And this is what we see people like Posobiec using to share this. And this is where these narratives are coming from. Saying they're going house to house and killing people inside and raping people in the streets. That's where this narrative comes from is stuff like this. Hamas house to house butchering people inside, including women and children taking shelter in basements. This is the narrative. Imagine if that was happening in your neighborhood, your family. And you know what he shows? A video of the IDF. Easily verifiable. And these people are who are people are listening to. Even down here, it says, nope, those are Israeli uniforms. Now, what's embarrassing, and plenty of the people down here that are sort of even on the same side are going, come on, man, that's, this is Israel. You can see it. I thought it was down here somewhere. I made fun of him after he posted it, but basically he said, well, they're, they're stolen uniforms per reports. <laughs> I just think I said, you're a, you're a clown per reports. But anyway, the point is that Maybe that's the case, but if now all you're doing is jumping from somebody else's narrative argument, or no, no, well, you would have said that. If you thought it was their stolen uniforms, you would have said that. You didn't even care to check, man. You're sharing something that's probably either about clicks or about towing a line. Too many of these people are out there. And I said, these are Israeli troops, but that does not stop these clowns from lying for the agenda. Here, by the way, was Charlie Kirk before he deleted it because he realized it was wrong. And I just said, why am I not surprised you are blindly repeating the same false info? I hope people start I hope people start taking note of just how many of you in the two party illusion do absolutely zero due diligence. These are Israeli soldiers. But you know, he deletes it. And he probably pretends like it never happened. Now here is the other side of this. Now I could go on forever with that kind of stuff. Same thing happening in regard to Russia. Or rather, I, I mean, this, this part's just about sp spreading things that they claim are happening in, in Israel that we can't verify. This is about trying to frame whatever they can to blame against the current, you know, bad guy of the moment. You know, we support the current thing. And that's right now we hate Russia or we hate this. Same thing's happening with Israel right now. This Jan Kahlberg literally just said this. Have no illusions. The attack in Israel, killing civilians and kidnapping of children and parents, which I don't think we can prove is about anything other than bargaining in regard to getting their own people back. But he says our bargaining ships are directed from Moscow. So now Russia is doing this. Anybody have any evidence of that? Or even like a logical reason why they would do so? The Putin, by the way, plenty of arguments to point out how 
ideologically, actually, or even politically aligned Russia is with Israel. But no one cares about that when it comes to the discussions of who is the bad guy today. The Putin, he, the, he goes on to say the Putin regime needed to escalate without getting into direct conflict. Oh, so he knows, right? I love how he's already speaking as if he's inside Putin's mind. These people are so childish. How in the world do you pretend that you know that he needed to escalate because his direct conflict with NATO uh, divert interest from Ukraine and wipe out any normalization of the Middle East and end the U.S. borrowing munitions from warehouses in Israel for Ukraine needs? All of that somehow makes sense of the fact that you know, I mean, well, the point is, how would you think he knows any of that? Certainly a possibility, but you somehow know that he wants it for these reasons. What you're doing is saying, here's what I think. But apparently this PhD is not able to discern between a, an assumption, a thought, and an absolute fact. Maybe you shouldn't listen to him. But it says, Russia is betting on a larger conflict in the Middle East after Israel answers Hamas. Again, <laughs> So you think that is what you're saying. There's no evidence to suggest any of this. The Ru this says then Russia has ensured that the U.S. is busy with other than Ukraine. Russia is on its way to becoming the same terrorist financier that the Soviet Union once was. Every terrorist group that killed wanted to kill the Westerners had a checking account in Moscow. My God, these people are so ridiculous. Russia invests in chaos and death to achieve its political goals. No, that's the U.S. government, guys. That's Israel. Terror is now in the game. And those who supported Ukraine became targets for Russian finance terrorism. Not the Ukrainian Nazi terrorists that are openly murdering people in Dom. No, none of that. None of that. But the argument is the wink-wink secret Russia movements that we can't see because it's not happening. That he says are secretly going on through all these chessboard moves. Maybe. Now, my point is simply that you can prove that is what the U.S. government does every damn day. Is, is the Russian government any better? Not in my opinion, but they're not doing the action. They're not outwardly invading countries, destabilizing economies over and over and over with the guise of freedom. It's not happening. They claim it's some kind of secret game where they're using proxy forces, but you can prove, again, that's exactly what, is, what U.S. government and Israel are doing. And then all you have is narrative and secret wink-wink things that we think are happening. I mean, it's really embarrassing. And this, again, is why people can see through it today. They're falling apart. People aren't trusting what they're saying anymore. And that's all they have. Trust me. National security. It says, we are back in the 80s. That's what they would love. That's what they want to pretend is that you have another Soviet Union who wants to take over the world. That's not what's happening today. It's the other way around, in fact, most likely. But again, whether there's a wink, wink secret going on, I don't know. And neither does he. But this person. Oh, well, this guy says, I respectfully disagree. I have spoken with Israeli soldiers who are on the ground, and they say that Hamas was using Israeli uniforms and inserting people through paragliders. This doesn't just happen overnight. This was years in the making. Now, I don't agree with that. That's a narrative coming from the Israeli government about whether they're using that. I mean, it's certainly possible. But to just simply blindly take at face value that they stole uniforms, it's the same thing they used in Venezuela, guys. They sold this narrative about how they stole uniforms and trucks to hide the fact that they were literally running over protesters with trucks. And we proved that. These are the same, the same tactics over and over. Did, might they have stolen the uniforms? Certainly possible. And it would even make sense to me. But I can't prove it, so I'm not going to be stupid enough to say that as a fact. But overall, the point to me is that he's simply saying that this was not some kind of massive Russian use. He's of the mind this is something that was allowed to happen, it seems. Or rather that they built this up and they executed it with a way that, that you, Israel wasn't able to stop. Which either of those are really hard to wrap your mind around. But he says, I don't think they are Moscow trained or Russia provided any infrastructure. It might be all Iranian. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Didn't you just say, have no illusions, this is Russia? Yeah, you really did. And then 30 seconds later, you go, well, maybe Iran. <laughs> That's my point, guys. He's going, I think this is what's happening, but people don't hear that because he's not saying that. He's going, this is what's happening. But in today's axis of evil ecosystem, an attack of this size would need an okay from Moscow. So this guy is just childishly towing the line directly from the CIA and the intelligence apparatus. Because it's not like they've ever lied to us about literally everything in our entire lives. Totally not. I just, I just don't even know. I'm speechless almost and how stupid that is. Now, here's what we get into the Iran overlap. And this gets really interesting to me. This is Mats Nielsen. 
arguing that this is an illusion, a fake, a lie, a false flag of sorts. He says, the alleged Taliban march, which is what they're actually saying here. So this is where we tie back in with the old school narratives, Iran, and even to Russia. And this is, as clum this is the clumsiest thing I have ever seen. The Taliban, the group that the U.S. government has literally been working with for 20 years, had meetings with, talks to, to literally with the Biden administration having talks with the Taliban, or it happened during Trump's administration too. And the reality being that they did not go there to fight them. They went there for many different reasons. And the Taliban was their entity coming from the Mujahideen, the overlap they're in, not exactly the same thing, obviously, but we're talking about the same groups that have been used, right? The Mujahideen were the group that became Al-Qaeda and then went on to be later you become ISIS and used the same way they were using against Russia. The Taliban are the group that have been left in control of Afghanistan, but the groups that nonetheless are completely connected to the U.S. government in a thousand different ways and arguing this is somehow now a Russian entity is embarrassing. But here's what they say. This overlaps with both of them, Iran and, and Russia. The alleged Taliban march on Jerusalem is fake. The original source of the, the fake <clears throat> is a resource reminiscent of the Panorama News Agency. Jerusalem Post reported that the Taliban were planning to march on Jerusalem and therefore requested the right to passage for their militants from Iran, Iraq, and Jordan. <laughs> I just, it's just ridiculous. The Jerusalem Post referred to supposedly famous Afghanist, Afghanists Afghanists, that's a weird, I think that's just a typo, Afghanistan, Afghanistanist, or Afghan, how would you say that? Afghanis, I would argue, form a certain, uh, from a certain resource, from, looks like uh, Visgrad 24, like a France, French agency, 24, who in turn did not refer to anything at all. So a statement saying, we were told with no source material. So what this amounts to is Jerusalem Post selling you this because it suits their narrative. Not a single official Taliban resource declared their desire to march on Jerusalem either, which is strange for the Taliban. If they wanted this, they would have already announced it on all their social networks. The publication of uh, Sputnik Afghanistan discovered where the news about the Taliban's campaign against Jerusalem was born, however. This is a semi-parody joke account known in the Afghan segment of Twitter X, which the Taliban does not represent. So they used a knowably not a Taliban-associated account that's regarded as a parody account to sell this narrative. Because it's not about the truth, guys. It's about propaganda. Here the news was published, and they're just, they're just showing you the overlap and how it just became went from this group using a parody account to Jerusalem Post. Then, of course, it appeared on the mainstream platforms. You know what it's saying here? And this, this is the... Taliban Public Relations Department, which is not the real Taliban, is what we're being told. This evening, the Foreign Office contracted, they're basically saying that we want to be able to go all the way here. Here's the map. But I, I doubt, I, I, what's interesting, by the way, apparently, no matter where you start from, you can't get clear directions to Israel. Isn't that interesting? On the other side of the world, using an app on my phone, I can't find out how to get to Israel from a place around the area. Talk about security controls. Directions, not available. How very interesting. I wonder why that would be. Anywhere else, works fine. But here it is. So we're talking about Afghanistan. Over here. Has to go through Iran. Through Iraq. And then through Jordan. Or Syria. And then into Occupy Palestine. So we're supposed to believe. We're supposed to believe that Afghanistan is asking permission from all three countries to what? travel over in there to join something that is not even, I mean, this is a false story designed to make you think that all of these powers are converging to work against Israel and that they want it to be, that this is a, this is an Israeli propaganda tactic. And let me go right to their article. Get back to your, okay. This is from Express in the UK. Taliban vows to conquer Jerusalem if Iran, Iraq, and Jordan allow past Israel. So let's be clear. They're using something that stems from Jerusalem Post that stems to something you can prove as a parody account. 2007. Or I mean, uh, October 7, excuse me, 2023. The Taliban has reportedly asked Iran, Iraq, and Jordan to grant them passage to conquer Jerusalem. Now, why in the world Afghanistan would even want that doesn't make any sense to me. A statement widely circulating online suggests, see, they're already taking steps away from it. 
uh, suggest Taliban's foreign office has contacted Middle Eastern governments requesting passage, seemingly to aid Hamas terrorists and promoting to, promising to take control of Jerusalem. The statement could not be confirmed. So why did you write an entire article about it? Because it's a propaganda tool, that's why. And here's the best part. Russia's allies, the Taliban terrorist organization, supported Hamas. If the Muslim countries neighboring Israel grant us right of passage, we will conquer Jerusalem. So do you think the Taliban is openly arguing that they're allies with Russia? I mean, look, there's overlaps to all of this, but you can clearly see the work alongside the U.S. government for much of the time they were occupying Afghanistan to the point where they had talks with them in multiple administrations, and then the point where they leave them all of the, the U.S. military equipment, all the tanks, all of the... I mean, they left near everything there. And we're going to pretend this is a Russian ally? I think that's pretty embarrassing. But what it tells me is the narrative is about Russia and Iran being involved in the bad guy thing. Well, who, where do you think that's coming from? Especially since you have literally no evidence to back it up. Well... I think it's a pretty easy guess to argue it's likely coming from the U.S. or Israel. The Taliban government is currently not recognized by any country after the terrorist group seized Afghanistan <laughs> following 20 years of insurgency. Seized Afghanistan? You mean when, it, when they left it to them with basically no response? 20 years of insurgency? I mean, it's just the way that they frame this stuff is it's just it's talking points, guys. And then here is the even worse. This is the Jerusalem Post. The Taliban has asked Iran for passage to join the terror campaign. So do you think they're going to go, I want to join your terror campaign? Or do you think they would frame it as a resistance campaign if it was actually what they were saying? You get the point. This is, in my opinion, a ridiculously fake story. Oh, and then if, you, if, I, if I try to open it, it seemingly says it's not available. So let you discern that for what you will going forward. Roseanne Barr, because she's so in the know, comes in and says, praying for Israel, being attacked by Iran. Because right now, my, the point is, this is what's spinning out through the right-wing talking points right now, the right-wing media. Because apparently they're all blindly following the Jack Posobics of the world to just state things without any evidence. And now apparently we're all, this is being, an, this Israel's being attacked by Iran in some context of the conversation. And it all stems to money that Biden sent to Iran that has, by the way, has not actually gotten, they're, they're, they're not in control of it yet. So how that even works out, but also on the idea that that was Iran's money to begin with. Anybody saying otherwise is woefully uninformed. I, I'm, there's people that I like, like Viva Frey, for example, who is going after me. How stupid are you? This is not the money and, and highlighting a bunch of titles from mainstream articles. The point is it's so easy to verify that this was money that was Iran's, that was seized, and now they're simply giving it back to them. It shouldn't be our prerogative to tell them in any sense what they can use it for, because they're a sovereign country like anybody else. This game only makes sense when you pretend they're a terrorist entity who's only out to murder everybody everywhere so they don't have any rights. It's, it's a child's game. They've proven themselves over the years to not be anything even remotely close to what they framed them as. And, and being highly technologically advanced. No, none of these things. People in the U.S. government and the U.S. who pretend they are what we're told pretend they're a bunch of people in caves with terrorist mentalities. It's, in, it's really embarrassing, but a lot of people believe this stuff. So framing this as Iran attacked Israel, I mean, guys, you, you're not doing any due diligence. You're just towing narratives as partisanship. After we gave them billions is exactly what we w knew would happen and what I feared most when I called out the Obama plan. So you feared that Iran would, would, would get Hamas to attack Israel because they gave them, six, uh, gave them their money back when, when Obama was in power? Well, first of all, if you thought that, Roseanne, you're woefully uninformed because Hamas wasn't even capable, I argue, of doing that at the time. Whether or not you argue Israel, Iran was shuttling in weapons, which they argue they're stopping on a regular basis in the sense of not allowing it to even be possible. Like, don't we, didn't we just make clear that this is a controlled open air prison, which she probably doesn't even understand? The point is to say that somehow giving money to Iran would then in some way influence what Gaza did outside of discussion is pretty embarrassingly uninformed. But as she says, make no mistake, this has been underway for years, and this is not Biden. Well, that's the interesting deviation. Most of the right seem to think this is all Biden. 
Well, because that's the easy thing to do. Because the current administration is the part is the responsible for all your woes. And the next one will change everything. It never, ever, ever happens because two-party paradigm. But this, talking about misinformation, is something that I had to go over. And I'm, I'm probably going to skip past it now because we're already at 314. But I just, there's so many grifters out there. Now, first of all, I just want to make sure we understand. I'm going to get into a raw next that this is, it's just, it's embarrassing. It's not the reality. Now, I'm not going to say that, in my opinion, I'm not going to say that there might not be some influence from that. But overall, we know that this has been something that has been going on long. This is about Palestinians fighting back for their territory. To argue this is about Iran trying to destroy Israel is just a, again, an uninformed talking point coming from political, top, from political paradigms. Now, this is Matt Wallace. I'm, I'm blocked by him. That's why I can't see it, just so you know that. And then typically when somebody blocks me, I block them just because, you know, they don't, I don't want them to be able to look at your whatever. So we both have each other blocked. Nonetheless, as I've shown you more than once on this show, Twitter posts his things, not all the time, just certain ones on my screen. I get a, I, my screen is locked and I get a pop-up from Twitter that says, Matt Wallace, breaking news. How do you explain that? In every way, on any account, I have him blocked. And he has me blocked. And yet Twitter posts his things on my phone. The only way to take that is Twitter is choosing to promote what he's doing. Now, he is, without fail, one of the most egregiously obvious manipulators and grifters and liars. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Now, I rarely go that far, well, even especially on an individual. But guys, I have to show you this. Because right now, this is what he's saying. World War III initiation, Iran false flag operation underway. This is about Israel. Two-minute video. Now, I want, the only reason I'm making a point about this is because, and just like we saw with Hawaii, which is still ongoing, there are people that are blindly deceiving everybody with very low intelligence, I mean, poorly produced garbage. And somehow, magically, he's got 1.3 million followers. Maybe because Twitter is promoting him to people that don't even want to see what he's doing. Maybe because they want everyone to think, sort of like the Stu Peters example, that this is what they all are, including people like me. This is the parody of what honest journalism is. Now, let me show you what I mean. Now, here is what he posted just today. The same thing over and over and over and over. Here is their all in capitals, usually with five or 17,000 red sirens and breaking news before and after. Here is their full World War III plan exposed. Watch this fast before they take it down. I'll show you right now. The full plan exposed. Remember that. Because nothing he says in there is anything but subjective, overview, superficial points that everyone's considering with nothing but graphics behind and it ends. That they're doing this and Israel's, Iran's behind it because Biden did this and that's the story. That's his breaking story that nobody else has. This is how he frames this stuff. And then he posted three times. Their full plan. Hurry. They probably take it down. False flag exposed. Share this video quick. Okay. And then again, and this, this was also today as well. The elites are about to start World War III with a false flag. We're exposing everything tonight. That's my point. That's the way he frames this. We are running out of time. He scares people because that gets people to look with hype. Which, look, I'm just as concerned about where things are going. But this is people grifting on that fear, not helping anybody. False flag exposed. Share it quickly before it's taken down. Same thing. Okay, understand, we will ex be exposing everything tonight. Let's watch this. Now, I apologize for forcing you to watch this thing because it's unbelievable. This is exposing everything we're told. Prepare for phase two of this operation. They're planning a false flag attack on a major U.S. city. We don't know yet which major U.S. city it will be. But what we do know for a fact is that this is coming very soon here. And they're going to try to. Wow. Okay, let's just dissect what we already heard. In a very in just bad English, I would argue, barely seems like he can understand. It doesn't seem like he's an intelligent person. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being very critical here clumsily patching together saying that we don't we know for it's going to bomb a u.s city somewhere we don't know which one or where or what time but we know for sure for fact that it's going to happen soon okay 
any evidence, any source material. There's nothing in the video. Okay, this is the kind of thing that is being pushed in front of everybody. Let's continue. So, so far, nothing but hyperbole, subjective comments, and conjecture. And saying the one thing we know for sure is that it's coming soon. How exactly? I'd love to hear how he knows for sure that this is coming soon. Blame it on Russia. This is in cahoots with fact is that this is coming very soon here. And they're going to try to blame it on Russia. This is in cahoots with the... Who's they? Who, they're going to try and blame it on Russia? Iranian government, who we have seen chanting, going to try to blame it on Russia. This is in cahoots with the Iranian government, who we have seen chanting through their parliament that the USA must die. Yeah, right. So now he's just kind of roping in old concepts and the reality of how they've 47 times over the years made it clear that what we're saying when we say that is that we want the government to, they're talking about the U.S. government. They have made that clear. The Palestinians have made that clear. When we say death to America, we're talking about the government, not the civilians who side with us. So, so far, he's hyping things that we can't verify and saying that because Iran has chanted death to America, that that means that they're in cahoots with Russia to carry out a false flag in the United States in some country or some state we don't know yet, but it's happening for sure. Do you follow? This is 1.3 million follower level news. And as we continue to see this conflict with Israel, with Ukraine, with Russia, with Iran, heating up. Okay, so this conflict with Russia, with Iran, with Ukraine, with Israel, just kind of all blummed together, blobbed together in some kind of nebulous, nebulous concept. As much as I could draw parallels between them, and I have, this is meaningless nonsense. Hopefully we can avoid it, though, as what they want to do is take out civilization as we know. You may wonder, why would... See, he's not even stringing full thoughts together. Listen to that again. With Russia, with Iran, heating up. Hopefully we can avoid it, though, as what... Hopefully we can avoid it, though... What they want to do is take out civilization as we know. You may wonder, he's, why would... He's, he's just jumping from thought to thought. This is incoherent nonsense. The elites, why would they be trying to start something like this, a global conflict that will end civilization as we know it? Well, it's very simple. They all have bunkers that they have been preparing for years. Okay, so now we've kind of weirdly stepped back to just all globalists? They all have bunkers? Or are you talking about Russia in particular? Or maybe just Iran? Or maybe just all of the people you glumped together just now? I mean, you get the point, guys. I'm just, just going to play out. This is embarrassing. They are going to live down there until all of this blows over to some degree and emerge. They already have things in place. So that Okay, so he somehow, sorry, but I somehow knows that all these people are doing this because they all have their bunkers ready and they're all going to go to their bunkers. And when it happens, they already have things in place afterward. Yeah, I'd love to see a source material. Levers of powers will be entirely up to them. They want to control and reshape Earth and their image and start it over. They don't want there to be any religion. They don't want there to be anything besides just simply them at the top and everyone else. Sub I mean, guys, all he's just saying power, government. Governments want control and they want to be at the top. This is nothing new or unique or even an intelligent take. He's just kind of scooping up things from the zeitgeist, just dumping them in a clumsy way back at you. And somehow people buy this, or maybe they don't. His YouTube, his YouTube account only has 45,000 followers. Some magical spin of nonsense. He's got over a million followers on Twitter, which probably nets him lots and lots and lots of money, which maybe that's the only reason he's posting things like this. Servant to them. They cannot do certain things. They have been limited. So instead of just simply changing society to make it worse in our eyes and better in theirs, they're going to completely and totally wreck it as we know it and restart very scary stuff indeed as we need to call it out. The way they're going to do this is extremely wow. sneaky because Russia would never launch an attack on a major U.S. city. That right there is propaganda. Well, cuts, that is, by the way. And restart it very... 2.17, two, two, <laughs> two minutes long and multiple cuts. Scary stuff indeed as we need to call it out. The way they're going to do this is extremely sneaky because Russia would never launch an attack on a major US city. That right there is propaganda. That is lies. The media may have you believing they would do something like that, but they would not. They are going to be blamed for it. And if the US government falls for this, by the way, I'm in talks right now with multiple people in Congress letting them know what this plan is. My God, I quite frankly don't buy that for a second. I don't think anybody with any intelligence would even give grace this guy with 30 seconds. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's really bad. And so this is where a lot of this stems from. The people are acting like there's just, a, you know, a nuclear war. Is, I mean, look, it's, isn't that always possible? No one's arguing that a nuclear bomb is not possible. 
but to continue to argue that somehow he knows this is going to happen and that they will blame it on him. He's just scooping up something that if he gets right, he'll be the prophet because that'll, they'll say, oh, he knew it, even though I can prove to you that he doesn't. And on, on top of that, if it doesn't happen, he'll spin some other secondary narrative on why we stopped it. It's just it's this, it's a QAnon level of an individual is the way we have access to this information is that officials in the Chinese government have actually caught on to this and have sent it to a number of independent journalists, including myself. Oh, okay. So here's the source. Chinese, somebody, have sent him something that he shows, but he won't show you because, you know, source material. Realize there is nothing but this. Listen to that again, and then I'll end. I'm in... Talks right now with multiple people in Congress letting them know what this plan is. The way we have access to this information is that officials in the Chinese government have actually caught on to this and have sent it to a number of independent journalists, including myself. They don't. Okay, and how do we know that's even true? We're, not, we're gonna vet the Chinese government? Do you think this guy who can barely speak properly is gonna know how to vet the governments of China? The different factions and the people involved, or the, the fact that it may have been lied to about where it came from? Do you think he even knows how to verify that it was a Chinese government? I mean, this is embarrassing. Don't trust the governments. They can't tell it to anyone besides people who are actually going to bring it to an audience right now. We have to have this be public. If the governments alone are who knows, it will not be stopped. We must make sure to call this out and expose it. And if you want I to, I don't even know how to frame how dumb. Like just, I, I'm going to stop it right now. Just this is just too much for me. Like, am I the only one that catches how the way that he's speaking is almost as if he doesn't know what he's going to say right before he says it? And it's just, it's just, it's incoherent. And the bottom line is, there's nothing. Literally nothing. There's no source material. There is nothing. Except a bunch of links for his thing. Buy gold. Buy it right now. Shocking footage. Buy gold. Staggering. Please be careful. Because it's pretty clear to me that Twitter, primary role is pushing these people in your face because this is what they want to pretend independent media is or are. It's what they're doing. Now, to get into it, Ron, and some other general topics, let's get into a recent post from The Guardian from yesterday. White House condemns Hamas and pledges support for Israel after attacks. Joe Biden said he spoke to Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, on Saturday, yesterday, assuring him that the American government is, quote, after everything we just went over, by the way, ready to offer all appropriate means of support to the government and people of Israel. All support which we'll show you, and it was seemingly going to trans, trans become more money. Quote, he says, terrorism is never justified. <laughs> okay, is there somebody arguing terrorism is justified? Right? I mean, all they're really trying to do is argue if you say what they do isn't terrorism, that you're somehow saying terrorism is justified. It's a semantics point. It's like saying, we, we support their right to defend themselves, which he literally says next. <laughs> Nobody argues anybody doesn't have a right to defend themselves. Just like I don't think anybody is saying we think terrorism is justified. What they're saying is we think that violence to defend, like because of the Geneva Conventions and the right to armed rebellion if you're illegally occupied, well, that's not terrorism. That's violence justified under the law. Or ask yourself what they call when they illegally invade Iraq. Was that terrorism? Well, no, it's fighting for freedom. So clearly you do think terrorism is justified if you claim it's for freedom. But your point is it's just a political nonsensical point. I'm sure Biden doesn't even know what time it is or where he is at the, at the moment. But he says, Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Now, I'm going to make a point about that. It's, it's, it's ridiculous that they keep pushing this as something that anybody disagrees with. But it says, the world has seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in the space of hours raining down Israel cities. As if we just woke up today and recognized this. What about the last 75 years of, of missiles raining down on civilian territories in Gaza? because of a couple of rockets that didn't even reach anything. Landed in a field and didn't happen. Over, and how long I've been covering that? And then they bomb a bunch of buildings, buildings and nobody blat, bats an eye. Where were they then? Where was Biden then? Cheering on Israel is where he was. Quote, in the street, in their homes, innocent people wounded. We talking about Gaza? No, he's talking about Israel. Entire families taken hostage by Hamas, which again, I can't verify that. I've seen a few examples. It's certainly possible entire families will take it. It wouldn't surprise me. But again, they're stating things that we can't prove. Just days after Israel marked the holiest days in the Jewish calendar. Oh, so now you're going to make it about a Jewish religious thing because that's what they want you to think. Despite the fact that on every important Muslim holiday, they do things in Al-Aqsa Al Mosque and on and on. Or even just in the Christian holidays, they do the same thing. 
bomb Christian locations in Syria every Christmas, literally every Christmas. He doesn't care about that because Biden is a proud Zionist, which is a contradiction, excuse me, contradiction in regard to being a Christian. We just, we just showed you the concept of the Zionists spitting at the feet of Christians, or in this, or in this case, Zionist Jews, but realize there are Zionists that aren't Jews. But either way, the point is Zionists who are acting like they care about anything other than the Zionist agenda. Quote, over the coming days, the Department of Defense will work to ensure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. Don't they right now? Don't they? Aren't they the ones arguing they've got the best intelligence in the world, the best military in the world? That's what they're telling us. Were they lying? I don't think so. But if they were, wouldn't that, ma wouldn't that matter? And on top of that, that you're talking about possible on the ground well, military support in the sense of money, which is guarantee is going to happen, even though that's already what goes on. So there's nothing really new there. They're just justifying a lot more money to a country that does not need our money. But also the possibility of actual U.S. involvement, which I'll get into in a second, I don't think is likely. To pr protect civilians from indiscriminate violence and terrorism. It's just amazing that they just seem they are the gall it takes to make that statement. Well, you can prove that they're bombing civilian areas in Gaza. All that really shows you is in her inherently they either think that they don't doesn't matter or that it's justified because of what happened on this side. These are bad people, guys. Quote, Iran has helped fund this war against Israel. And this is coming from uh, um, Ron DeSantis. Of course it is, because that's the talking point, and it trickles down through all the right-wing talking point, talking heads. Iran has helped fund this war against Israel, and Joe Biden's policies that have gone easy on Iran has helped to fill their coffers. Israel is now paying the price for these policies, said Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, Republican running for his party's presidential nomination. <clears throat> well, Iran has made it clear that they support Palestine. Other than that, I do not see any indication that there's a direct attack on Israel or an effort to do anything other than defend itself against what Israel and the U.S. government have continued to do. You don't see Israel lining up around Iran. You see the reverse in every single context. DeSantis appeared to be referring to a prisoner swap deal the Biden administration arranged with Iran last month. Under the deal, the United States waived sanctions to allow the transfer of $6 billion in Iranian funds from South Korea to Qatar, a step needed to carry out the U.S. plan prisoner swap, which, by the way, has been up in the air for a long time. And whether or not the Guardian said it, it's easy to prove it is, in fact, Iran's money that has been seized. So what you're really arguing is that they gave back Iranian money that was theirs that you illegally held, and that somehow is Biden helping the war against Israel? It's a super clumsy argument. Vanessa and I talked about it in the last interview. Quote, we are united in standing with and supporting our ally Israel as it responds to terrorist, attack, terrorist attacks from Gaza, says House Democrats, Debbie Washerman Schultz and plenty of others. What's funny about this is there's no break. Every one of them are doing their best to go, we support Israel everywhere, all the time. Even within that, though, you've got people going, but Biden doesn't, though, because he armed Iran. But the point is, they're all saying it, though. So instead of having any kind of real debate, you got everybody lockstep in we support Israel and then debates about who really doesn't support Israel. Think about how alarming that is from a U.S. perspective. These people are biting each other at the neck to defend who supports Israel more. I mean, doesn't that alarm anybody? Like, it's just a ridiculous idea. It says, quote, Hamas has declared war on the Israel and her people. Now, it's not true. The reality is that they've occupied Palestine and they're fighting back for what's theirs. And if you argue within that they've declared war on the occupier, well, then that is true. But not in the sense that this is some new declarative attack because of yesterday forward. Our alliance with Israel is unbreakable, he says. Our commitment to Israel's security is ironclad. Why is that the case? Why is the commitment to other countries' security so important at to, to the point to where it's at the expense of the U.S. individual? Just like with Ukraine. You, you start to see a common thread here. We extend our condolences to the families of all those killed, our hopes for recovery of the many hundreds wounded, and pray for the safe and immediate return of all hostages taken. They're only talking about the Israeli side. They could not care less about the people that have been killed in Gaza. We support Israel's right to defend itself, to protect its people and communities, and we will do what we can to ensure Israel has the ability and capacity to restore and maintain its security and the safety of all its citizens. So all that means is everything we can put forward to get back what we think is Israel's control over occupied territory at the expense of everything, including Americans. Pretty wild. 
Now let's talk about what some of the U.S. politicians have said. First of all, Ursula von der Leyen says today Hamas terrorists have struck at the heart of Israel, capturing and killing innocent women and children. Again, does she know that? How could she possibly know that? She's simply saying what she is told happened, probably at the the behest of Israeli forces. Israel has the right to defend itself over and over and over. Why does it? I, I mean, I'm waiting for my tweet to make this point. Nobody disputes that. So keep asking yourself why it's so necessary to keep saying that. And when you come to notice that literally every politician the world around has made that same point, ask yourself what that means. Because it's not because you, it's just they have the right to it's not, not It's not about defense. Nobody needs to state that everybody has the right to. I mean, I'm trying to think of something super benign, super obvious. That everybody has the right to wear clothes or whatever. <laughs> something really stupid. Because everybody knows that. No one's going to say, you don't have the right. Everybody anywhere in the world has the right to defend themselves. Nobody, I, as far as I can tell, has even ever argued that they don't have the right to defend themselves. Because it's one of those really basic things we all understand. So again, since we know that, why is it so important to keep saying that? Today and in the days to come, or just in general for everybody all the time, right? The European Union stands with Israel, where uh, Claire Daly, who's part of the European, a part of the of the European Parliament, says, "Why do you think? Who do you think you are? You're unelected that have no authority to determine EU foreign policy, which is set by the EU Council." See, most Americans or even Europeans don't really understand that. I should say most Europeans, probably some a good more amount, but most Americans don't understand that. Europe does not stand with Israel. And I even agree with that. I think in most cases, that's the case. That's clear today. We stand for peace. You do not speak for us. If you've nothing constructive to say, you can, you clearly don't shut up. <laughs> Here is RFK. You saw this yesterday and guys, this is terrifying. I mean, I've made the point from the beginning of this. I like a lot of what RFK says more so than most politicians. And in fact, if I had to base it on some kind of balancing scale of who says what appear to be the best rea- best kind of presented politician, I think that's RFK Jr. That's if you lived in a world where your vote made any difference at all and it wasn't a complete scam that we've proven 40,000 times over from either side of the paradigm, but we all so vote harder. That's the only way. It's childishly stupid, but I'm not talking about that today. RFK Jr., I've said may- from the very beginning, his stance on Israel is morally indefensible. When he's got Dennis, uh, um, what's his name? K- 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 Dennis K, I forget his last name, who is obviously a staunch supporter of Palestine. He, Robert RFK Jr., knows the dynamic. So outside of the rare possibility that he's only saying all this to get elected and he's going to prove he's different when he comes, I don't buy that. Quite frankly, I hope you're right, but I don't buy it. His stance is morally indefensible. And here's what he just said after what happened. This ignominious, which I was, I've was i never even heard that before yesterday, which essentially means, as, as Vanessa told me, deserving or causing public disgrace or shame, unprovoked, which it clearly was not, and everybody with a brain knows that, and I would argue including him, and barbaric attack on Israel must be met with world condemnation and unequivocal support for the Jewish state's right to self-defense. There it is. Everybody has that. No question. We must provide, the, the question is whether they're actually defending themselves or pretend, and, oh, and here's the point, and again, I want to wait for my tweet. The reason they say it in lar- largely is because they act with the Bethlehem Doctrine, which is that they have the right to preemptive self-defense, and they all just pretend that's self-defense. It's not. I'll get there in a second. We must provide Israel with whatever it needs to defend itself. Now, whatever it needs? So you realize that that means something. Whatever means whatever. So if they want everything Americans have, then they get whatever they need. So Americans can't feed their families, whatever they need. Now you could pretend that I'm taking it too literally, but this is what they're telling everybody with whatever it needs to defend itself. So right now they're telling you that everything, nothing is as important as making sure Israel is defended or rather allowed to attack people without question. And we'll call that defense. As president, I'll make sure that our policy is unambiguous so that the enemies of Israel will think long and hard before attempting aggression of any kind. Well, that's already where we are. You think, is anybody confused about Israel's, U.S.'s stance on Israel? Anybody, anywhere? <laughs> it's, it's all just politics, man. 
Every politician ever in history that I can see in this country has had a very unambiguous stance on Israel. Trump went out of his way to be the most pro-Israel president in the world, in the history of this country, and they still called him anti-Semitic. It's embarrassing. He goes on to say, I applaud the strong statements of support from Biden in Israel in her, in her hour of need. However, the scale of these attacks means it is likely that Israel will need to wage a sustained military campaign to protect its citizens. Statements of support are fine, but we must follow through with unwavering, resolute, and practical action. They're literally all vying for who is the most pro-Israel, who is the most belligerent about what we may have to do. America must stand by our ally throughout this operation and beyond as it exercises its sovereign right to self-defense. He said it twice. Make sure you understand that. Here's President Biden. Today I spoke with Prime Minister Israeli Prime Minister about the appalling Hamas terrorist attack in Israel. I offered our support and reiterated my unwavering commitment to Israel's security, and I express our heartfelt condolences to the families and lost loved ones. Now, by the way, his other, I've already shown you the tweets where he's very right out of the gate, was like, we support the right to self-defense. This is just the one I wanted to show you that on top of that. Here is Lindsey Graham. As far as I'm concerned, Israel should do whatever it takes. Same point. As long as it takes, even further, to destroy this threat. They mean Gaza, guys, what they mean. You could say, uh, where was it in here? Graham saying the same thing plenty of other places, that they have the right to self-defense. Whatever it takes, as long as it takes. This guy is one of the most classically belligerent people who somebody assassinate Putin for us. If anybody else did that in the world, it would be the biggest deal ever, but they do it all the time. Here's Miss Pelosi. Don't miss the obvious back and forth left right left right left right it's all the same thing when it comes to war in israel or really in general but this is when you can see it the terrorist attacks in hamas against israel including against children and civilians are monstrous and unacceptable did you do you care about the children and civilians killed in gaza why not we all join in condemning this assault and praying for the lost lives in israel which is what you just said the u.s stands unwaveringly with israel and supports her right her right to defend herself <laughs> Where did this all come from all of a sudden? Her, her, in her hour of need, security in Israel must be swift and permanently restored. I'm willing to bet you that they have some kind of a study or something that showed them that if you dress it like this, that it makes people more endeared. Like it's some kind of a, you know, in her hour of need. It's like I, I, That's how this stuff tends to work. Just my opinion. Here's another interesting one, though. DeSantis. The dastardly terrorist attacks perpetuated against innocent Israeli civilians by a Ron backed terror group Hamas. Not just Palestine, but Hamas and terror group in Iran, of course, because he's weaving in the other guy, the other argument, deserve a swift and lethal response. Israel not only has the right to defend itself against these attacks, it has a duty to respond with overwhelming force. These guys are, man, this is everybody. This is the point about how there's nobody honest in this situation, guys. If they're in this position, most likely they're not somebody who is on your side. Now, I'm not saying we should assume that. I'm always willing to hope to say Trump or anybody else is the person people think he is. But clearly, these people are advocating genocide. I stand with Israel. America must stand with Israel. <laughs> cool. Now I not to vote. Not to vote for you. Do you think that Trump would be any different? He's not. Here he is. The horrible attack on Israel, much like the attack on Ukraine, interesting, would never have happened if I were president. Zero chance. That's his kind of wishy-washy way to pretend like he's siding with Israel, even though he literally did. But then also kind of just acting like it wouldn't have happened, as if then some people will argue he's calling for peace. You know, the people that want to ignorantly pretend that's what he meant to say, even though we know that what he has repeatedly said elsewhere is exactly what everyone else is saying. And if he was in power, he would be saying the same thing. But here's what he said elsewhere. And this was before this, October 7th. Let's not forget that Hamas's terrorist activities are funded from Iran. What do you know? Who funds Iran? Joe Biden. <laughs> that, I mean, now you're going to have people in, in, in you know, following Trump that are literally just going to say in a clumsy way that uh, Biden funds Iran as opposed to just returned money that we stole from them. And then you could argue that led to something, sure. But th this is just politically clumsy because they they're speaking to the lowest common denominator who by the way are pretty much the only people that vote anymore who delivered pallets of cash to iran obama joe biden who gave six billion in cash to iran just one month joe biden none of that's true it's 
money that was seized from Iran that was rightfully theirs that they then gave stipulations on giving back. It's amazing. And the only reason that makes sense to some people is because Iran is a terrorist organization. That's how stupid most people are in the context of the two-party paradigm. Here's Giuliani. The war crimes being committed by the Palestinian Authority. I, it's like they're just trying to, I mean, here's the embarrassing part. Is it Hamas or is it the Palestinian Authority? Or are you pretending they're the same thing? Or do you not know? I mean, I argue he knows. The point is that's either an effort to conflate these things or an effort to kind of just pull in all of Palestine in the conversation of what they're attacking. So if it's the Palestinian Authority that makes all Palestinians involved with the terror attack, that's probably what this is. But first of all, the Palestinian Authority is an agent of Israel. It's very clear, and Robert has been breaking this down for a very long time. They have not had elections in a decade, despite them wanting that, because Abbas is maintaining power and has routinely shown himself to shoot, to detain anybody that Israel tells them to. They're not fighting for Palestine. But he says the war crimes being committed by the Palestinian Authority against the civilian population, what he's talking about is what they claim is Hamas, of Israel, and are, are at least as heinous as Putin's invasion of Ukraine. These people are just clumsily trying to patch all this together in a way that does not make sense. I can show you where it connects, but it's sure as hell not the way they're doing it. Now here was finally where I was trying to get with this. I should have probably put it sooner. But this is why I was waiting to show it, because here's what Netanyahu has to say. Out of our, all, in addition to everything else we just showed you, he's going, to, going on to say, I spoke with the German chancellor, with the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, Italian prime minister, and the British prime minister. All of them expressed unqualified support. And that's what they mean. Doesn't matter what you need, we're there for you. Even if it's the expense of our own people, especially if it is. To support for Israel's right to defend itself as necessary. So disgusting. So here's what I said. This is really important. I've said, already kind of said it many times, but I'll make sure I stretch it out, you know, extrapolate the point. Is what Does anyone out there right now think? Anyone. Anywhere in the world does not have the right to defend themselves. I mean, I really think, does anyone in the chat think that anyone anywhere, because of certain circumstances, don't have the right to defend themselves? That's a no-brainer that the world around will argue. If you're attacked, you can defend yourself, right? The answer is no. Nobody anywhere that I've ever seen will defend or argue that no one has that right. So what this game is really about is meant to, what it's meant to do is one, and there's more than just two, but mostly one, make you think they're defending themselves, right? So if you keep hearing that, you're, it's, it's drilled into your brain. They have the right to defend themselves. Therefore, when they act, they're defending themselves. It's propaganda. But two, to allow them to conflate their war crimes with defense. And what I mean is the openly and admitted to and proven attacks on civilian areas in Gaza. Just because, look, even if you were attacked first, to say that because you have the right to defend yourself that we're going to ignore that you just bombed an apartment building, it, when anywhere else in the world it gets pointed at, especially if it's one of the bad guy countries, even when you could prove it wasn't even true. But it doesn't matter, though. The narrative is more important than what you can prove right in front of you, as long as you yell freedom or defense. Now, the point is, I, I think, I swear, I don't, I think I, I, I didn't mean to put an E there. I mis misspelled that apparently. I hate typos on Twitter, but the point is the Bethlehem Doctrine that apparently only the UK, Israel, and the United States actually utilize. It's a doctrine. It's a written down policy that was actually secret for a long time, which outlines the fact that they argue that they have the unique right to preemptively defend themselves. It's not a joke. That's in, embarrassingly contradictory. If you're acting first, there is no defense to be had. So no matter how long you like, the point is in the context of the current situation. Now, you could argue in the sense of like Palestine, for example, that the illegal occupation started everything. But then when you go forward five years and Palestine attacks, you still argue that they have the justifiable legal right to do so. But you could still argue they started that, that whatever you want to call it, that battle. Right. So it's not defending yourself in that moment when you decide to attack with now current thing behind you, even if you have the legal right to do so. So in this case, they don't have the legal right to do so because it's, they're attacking innocent civilians, but they still pretend because we think we th that they're going to do something that we can just attack them first. They show this in Iran. They show this all around the world. They show it in Palestine on a regular basis. And the, U the United States uses this now. 
That was the that was the John Bolton credible threat with Iran. They claimed they could act, and they sure as hell did, and they were caught because they claimed they were going to do something, and it turned out to be nothing more than boats in their harbors. They lied to us, is the point, and so too does Israel, claiming that they're going to do something. Now, either way, all that aside, the point is that they all scream, they have the right to defend themselves. Now, what they mean is they have the right to attack them should they think something's going to happen, and we name that defense. That's what they mean. And here, somebody points out, the puppets are once again in lockstep. Can you spot the recurring phase? I'm sure you can. The right to defend itself. The right to defend itself. There's, there's more than that, in fact. That all these things are the same, just gushing, nonsensical, ignorance to one side arguments, but right to defend itself, right to defend itself, right to defend itself. Every single one of them around the world. Why? Because they want you to think that's what's happening. Now, Hussam Zomlut points out, such language from the UK government and other in international actors will only escalate the situation. Statements about Israel's right to defend itself will only be interpreted by the most fanatical Israeli government as a green light to commit further massacres, which, by the way, is what they know they're doing, I would argue, against the occupied people of Palestine. Already around 200 plus Palestinians have been killed, seems in some cases over 300, by the Israeli war machine since the morning and over 1,600 have been wounded, it is time the international community holds the Israeli occupation responsible for decades of systemic crimes and violations, which again is why they are called an apartheid state by every human rights watch that matters, or uh, every uh, um, human rights group that matters. Because that's what they're doing. Because it's amazing that we can ignore the UN, human rights groups, and every other provable factor, including their own statements about what they want to do, because your government tells you something else. That's two-party paradigm, team sport politics. And all he's saying is the same thing. Right to defend itself. Now, here is the interesting dynamic. Now, I am no fan of literally any politician, let alone Governor Whitmer. But check this out, guys. She comes out and says a very, which I would also argue is a milk toast, meaningless political statement that's meant to go right down the middle, which, by the way, Trump does with, all, not very tactfully, but all the time. She comes out and says, I have been in touch with communities impacted by what's happening in the region. It is abhorrent. My heart is with all those impacted. We need peace in the region. Now, that is exactly what they say when, when they bomb Palestine, if they're pushed to it, right? So in the past, you'd have a rocket that hits an open field, and Israel would bomb Palestine into the dust. Murdering civilians. It, that was the common recurrence, and most Americans are probably even unaware that was going on. And this is what you would hear, and it's infuriating. We call for de-escalation on all sides. What do you mean, all sides? It's a one-sided affair, but it doesn't matter, right? So either she didn't get the message and she put out the same kind of benign talking point, or my point is that the argument should be that we want peace in the region, that we care about all sides being affected. That's the point we were just making before. But look at how people responded to this. Oops, hold on. How did I do that? There's Dave Rubin, of all people, says they're injecting to Botox too close to your brain, lady. <laughs> to clearly towing the direct line from Israel. What? So now, I mean, how do you even respond like that? My heart is with all those impacted because what they're really saying is, well, how can that be? You're only allowed to care about one side civilians. See my point? And they don't even need to say that. If you're upset with the statement that says everyone should care, we should care about everyone, that shows the, your true colors. And then this person says, carefully crafted wording to avoid committing to any principal position without saying the quiet part out loud. She is pandering to pro-Hamas Islamists. By saying everybody matters? It's the same point. This is what happens when you're caught up in the political fervor. People have lost their minds. You're going to see the flat. It's already happening right next to the Israeli, the Ukraine flag and Israeli flags. It's the thing of the day. And this is the thing you're supposed to say. You can't care for everybody. If you do, you're secretly part of Hamas. You're an Assad apologist. You're an Iraq, you're a, you're a Saddam apologist. Same thing. We are always being played. I, I mean, I, I know the Dave Rubin is real, but I don't know everybody else. I frankly believe a lot of this is manipulative accounts online trying to sell narratives. But how can you argue that saying that our hearts are with everybody, that you're, I mean, it's just, here's another example. Here's Ezra Levant. 
who, again, somebody who seems to have the, the reasonable pulse on what goes on with COVID-19, yet, as you would expect, loses it when it comes to Israel. Another one of Trudeau's Hamas apologists, Hamas apologists, I told you, draws an equivalence between the terrorist slaughter of Israeli civilians and Israel's targeted response against Hamas terrorists. So according to Ezra Levant, even though we can verb prove to you, even though I can prove to you Israel is parading around that they killed the civilians, he, and it's, it's what I was just telling you. In his mind, there's only two things happening. The slaughter of only Israeli civilians and not IDF members. No, of course not. And on the other side of it, only precision-targeted attacks on just Hamas that were apparently in 100-story, 100 100-apartment 100 build, uh, buildings, apartment buildings with 100 apartments or open civilian areas where you can see civilians bleeding and lying on the ground. But no, because Israel says otherwise. That's pretty embarrassing, man. It's pretty stupid. She really meant it. She, and he goes, she, she really meant it when they cheered for the Nazis, didn't she? Wow, what an interesting parallel. You mean the Nazis that Israel are funding in Ukraine? Oh, no, excuse me. She meant the Nazis that they were cheering for in, in Canada. Oh, but Zelensky was there cheering as well, who was funded by Kolomoisky, who was part of the Jewish Congress. But nobody cares about the real point. It's only about Israel good, everybody else bad. Right, Ezra? Well, here's what they're pointing at. You're going you're gonna to love this. This is the statement he's saying is an Hamas apologist. I have spent my day listening to and consoling residents in, in, the area, in the areas where they saw the horrific attacks against Israel and Gaza. Both. This cycle of violence is not the answer. The perpetuators of violence are often not the ones who suffer the consequences. Yeah, the civilians on both sides. I unequivocally condemn these attacks. My heart is with the innocent people who have been injured and lost their lives in Israel and Gaza. The trauma and toll it takes on families today and for the generations to come. The international community must do all we can to support those working on the front line to help people in need. We must work to de-escalate de de the violence, counter any kind of extremism, and build solidarity, re re reconciliation, and peace in the region. What a terrorist! I mean, guys, this is actually kind of alarming. We're talking about people that are putting forward what is the most obvious, objective balanced perspective about how everybody's lives matter and we should stop all extremism and the real extremists are like whoa hell no <laughs> you can't pretend we like the point is what you're talking about is one of the most openly fascist entities on the planet and even the adl has said that about the Zion, religious zionism party that they're extremist and when somebody says we should stop all extremism people like ezra will step up and say oh you're just apologists for hamas because only civil i just made the point i mean isn't that terrifying does he really not know that that's ridiculous or is he simply towing it because somebody's telling him to or because that is what he wants to believe because he's so pro-Israel? I don't know, but I think that's pretty alarming. This kind of statement is what every good person should be saying. Now, you could have your opinions about what side is in the right or wrong, but to be able to stand back and say, look, I condemn attacks on any civilians because that's what he's talking about, not the terrorists fighting the IDF, whatever you want to frame it as, but the innocent people in Gaza, which there are, and the innocent people in, in Israel, which there are. Because in his mind, there are no innocent people in Gaza, and that's where he shows his colors. It's very sad, man. It really is. But I just, before we go past that, guys, I just, it's an alarming fact for me because we're at a point in time where people who are trying to be balanced and objective are now being framed as the extremists. That's terrifying. And people that are being the extremists are standing up with huge followings and acting like the balanced presenters. It's pretty alarming. Now, this senior managing editor of Politico is seemingly towing lines for the U.S. government and for Israel because that's what Paul, that's what journalists do, right? Lawmakers want to help Israel, but political chaos means it won't be fast. Pointing out when you read the article, it's about how we desperately need to get aid to Israel. And because of Republicans, it's not going to happen. Typical. Typical bull BS. Raw News Alerts points out the Pentagon is now set to announce emergency military aid for Israel as soon as today. Money. Now, even though that first thing that circulated was actually shown to be false, who knows? Maybe it'll end up being that or more. The point is, this doesn't make any sense. You as an American are already suffering because they sent billions, tens of billions of dollars. Or how, I mean, even more than that, I think. Almost, how was it, 100 billion? I forget the exact number when you really factor in all of the money that has gone to Ukraine. 
And e they even told you, take it on the chin. Stay, let's fight for freedom. When your bill is 14 times what it should be. I mean, it's, 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 it's I can't even think of a right word for it. It's not just insulting, right? It's not just bad. This is, this is, it's like they're violating an agreement that we, like some kind of sacred agreement that we think we have with our government, right? But we should wake up and realize that that's not even remotely the truth or rather that they don't care about that agreement. But acting like we're just, we need to take your money and give it to whoever we want while we siphon off some for ourselves and then say it's your responsibility to suffer for it. I mean, that's, there's just no words for that. And now they're going to send them more, even though they don't need your money. And they already siphon off all sorts of money in a thousand different ways to Israel that they then use to take more things from the United States. And that's the Zionist government we're talking about. And on top of that, they're now reporting that they're, going, they're planning to move U.S. Navy ships and U.S. military aircraft closer to Israel as a show of support. That is not a show of support. That it's a show of force. And it's only going to escalate the problem. Right. And that's the whole point. Let's not forget that Russia and China back Palestine. But here's where this gets especially interesting. There's two different dynamics here. We have the example of the fact that we have NATO allies that are seemingly kind of be stepping into this as specifically Turkey, saying that they will defend Palestine and warning away the United States from doing anything. But we also have the example, the interesting overlap of Anthony Blinken telling us that there are. Americans that were killed, even though I don't think I've been able to prove that yet, and that that might mean that the U.S. has to get involved. Fiorella Isabella points out, breaking U.S. security, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken tells CNN that the U.S. has reports that several Americans were killed among the conflict between Israel and Palestine. He adds, we're working overtime to verify this. Well, earlier we recorded a, a clip with Fiorella to get her take on this. Let's go to that now and, and see what she has to say about the, about the whole thing. Hey, Fiorella, thanks for joining me today. How are you? I know you're busy, so thanks for making the time. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So let's get right into it. I really just wanted to get your take on, on what's going on in, in you know, really the, the broader sense, because I know this discussion over, overlaps with a lot of other topics, but specifically occupied Palestine and the, you know, the lead up into what's happened today and, and what is now taking place. So just start wherever you'd like. What, what's your thought? What are your thoughts on what's going on? Okay, well, this is, I mean, what's happening now gets a little bit more complicated, but I do want to start off by talking about the fact that this isn't a conflict that began a few days ago. This is a conflict that has been going on a really long time. You could even say beyond the 75 years of since the Nakba, which was a recent uh, anniversary. And uh, this is a conflict that there is so much disagreement as to how to resolve it. Now, the vast majority of states in the global south are calling for peace, are calling for a two-state solution. That includes Russia, China, that includes, uh, you know, the UN. They're, they're following the UN's diplomatic stance. Now, Palestinians and the resistance movement and people who support the Palestinian resistance movement do not believe in this two-state solution, primarily because as long as Israel exists, they will continuously try to oppress and undermine and expand into Palestine. Now, if you look at to the creation of Israel, you understand that this is true, that the whole purpose of Israel as it exists now is basically a military uh, extension of the United States. They have just, you know, right now they're looking into giving them more money, more funding, and we fund Israel to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. Ukraine is becoming another Israel for us in that sense. And, um, now, th this conflict just, just shows how uh, tied the United States is to Israel. Remember that Joe Biden had previously said that if Israel didn't exist, they would create one. So this is, uh, this is, this is the reality now. So clearly the United States is on board with this. But this conflict, I think, is a lot of things. It is a buildup of the uh, hegemony, the actual apartheid, the open air prison that has been ongoing in in Palestine. I mean, Palestinians don't have access to clean water, to food. They can't travel. They can't even get access to medical care. This this is long known, and you can look at this in many documentaries that have been done. Uh, this is a reality. It's an open air prison, and many people who have gone to Palestine 
have seen the reality of this and how they are attacked constantly. Apart from what I'm sure you know, and I'm, I'm sure other guests will talk about, is the stealing of their their properties, the demolishment of their houses, all of this. When the world didn't accept apartheid South Africa, um, it was because it, it existed in apartheid. But for some reason, uh, Palestine isn't looked on as that way. In fact, you don't really hear about what happened in Syria you know, from these radical factions that are supported by NATO, right? You don't talk about those civilian deaths. You don't talk about the civilian deaths that Israel has caused with their various attacks all over the Middle East, whether it was Syria, Lebanon, um, Iran. I mean, it, it goes on and on. And of course, Palestinians. But the moment Israel is attacked with a sort of a taste of their own medicine by Hamas, it people are outraged. And this is what I think Hamas is a red herring. Hamas has been used time and time again to distract from the crimes that Israel has committed on the people of Palestine. Uh, Hamas is a group that is divisive. It is a group that is uh, believed by many to be a, a group that has already uh, supported various factions of the West, that has done the bidding of the West. It was also created by the West to undermine Palestinian uh, the Palestinian government. And so knowing all of this, right, it, it's, it seems to me that what's going on is these, there are rebel, I would say, I would call them rogue factions of Hamas that are doing some of these crimes that would be condemned by the likes of Hezbollah that are being condemned, uh, you know, in, in several reports. Now, this isn't confirmed, but knowing the nature of Hezbollah, knowing the nature of these other factions that are uh, basically, they would never resort to some of the attacks that are being done by these rogue entities. It does seem to me that there could be an attempt to undermine the Palestinian resistance, because as I said, Hamas has always been used as a red herring to say, look, these are terrorists. And because these are terrorists, we cannot uh, support Palestinians. And therefore, it gets expanded to all of the Palestinian resistance. And the last thing I want to say before I go back to you is that the Palestinian resistance is made up of so much more than Hamas. I just mentioned Hezbollah, who has claimed that they did attacks uh, three regions of um, of the what they say is occupied by Israel, they say this is their territory. So this they have attacked three military zones, and they are now you know supportive, and they always have been. But the Palestinian resistance or the axis of the Palestinian resistance goes much more than Hamas. But Hamas is always used to distract and distort the 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 fact that you know Palestinians have been. Uh, living in this open air prison and have undergone apartheid because now everyone focuses on what Hamas has been doing and not necessarily on everything else that has happened up until then. And we can even draw parallels to the Ukraine conflict when they were trying to say that the conflict happened a year ago on February of 2022. But we know that the conflict happened. It was ramping up even beyond uh, 2014, even as far back as the Orange Revolution. So this is what I'm talking about here. This It's so hard for people to um, understand conflicts without going back to the history and, you know, and understanding how that led us to this moment. And, of course, the emotions get out there and there's so so many emotional right now neoliberals and neocons joining hands to say that they're ready to attack you know all of palestine and support israel which is extremely dangerous because i've also seen them trying to blame iran iran is backing hamas iran backs hamas and now this is a nuclear country this is where it could get very tricky yeah it's 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 amazing how war brings together all the people that are at each other's throats all the time. It, it shows you the illusion, in my opinion. And I love the the parallels being drawn by people with no evidence whatsoever saying Russia made this happen. Iran's behind this with nothing to back it up. I mean, anything's possible, you know, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's infuriating to watch people that present themselves as objective journalists just towing lines that suit their partisanship. But I, I think what's interesting is the the false nature of this that I'm going to I'm poking into more today or the possible false nature of a part of the aspect of like how Hamas could be used. I've covered this in the past about the reality of the questionable origins of Hamas and where the, you know, the creation of it, how it's been used, in, you know, in ways that people might not be aware of to actually progress the agenda from Israel's perspective. And so mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting thing that we need to consider whether in, in and there are people I'm going to get into this more today in regards to people in Israel, even 
uh, questioning, like, there's no way this happened the way that it did. This feels like a setup. This feels like something Israel was involved in allowing to happen. I'm not saying I even have evidence to speak to that, but that's something that Israelis believe to some degree, which is mm -hmm. interesting. And then the dynamic of Hamas and how that might be played into that is is interesting and possible but like you said and vanessa shared the same sentiment seeing some very clear overlaps that from the same kind of people that we saw in being used in syria the u.s backed extremists the western backed extremists and we've even mm -hmm. seen the overlap of them being brought over to ukraine them being brought to the border of israel there's all this interesting overlap of this and so then it becomes very possible that some of these things we're seeing are meant to be carried out to be used in this exact way even now having the justification to possibly say, well, now they've got hostages. So now we have to release these people that they likely wanted to release anyway because of political pressure. It's a very interesting possibility. So I think that's a, a val very valid point you bring up. And then also I thought the, an interesting point about – I made the same point in my title yesterday. that it's You, you could pretend all you want this started yesterday. But 75 years ago, I guess the joke I made is Netanyahu says we're now at war with a group we've been at war with for 75 years. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. But what's interesting is if you yeah. understand the context of the ongoing battle, that you realize that this is really just another response in an ongoing back and forth. Like It's like looking at the war in Ukraine and acting like every time Russia carries out an attack that they're terrorists. When, you know, it's, it's a war, so it's, it's attacks will go back and forth. It's just interesting, the dishonest framing. And, and so I appreciate all of your important perspectives. Before you go, I would like to ask you one point about the American overlap, which I think this is where it gets really alarming, whether it's a lie mm -hmm. or not, where we have, as you just wrote this morning, uh, Blinken telling us that, the, that there's reports that there's been Americans killed, which is not hard to wrap our minds around and saying that they're working to verify. But what that might mean is important. Of course, we, they didn't seem to care when journalist Shireen Abu Akleh was killed and that we found out the U.S. was acutely involved in covering that up. Interesting how they don't care about that. Or Nikki Haley continue to say that this is an attack on America. So where do you think right. this goes from here in your perspective? Yes, I mean, I, you know, and just going back to the the, the Hamas thing, I mean, I, that is that is a huge part of this, because if that if that is is the reality where you know we're seeing the, these uh, attacks on civilians, which again the Palestinian resistance hasn't really done uh, on that note, they are completely against that. So if you see these rogue, and I, I see this throughout any sort of resistance movements anywhere in the world, that you always have rogue factions, you always have this sort of problem. So that is again the excuse used to say, okay, so these are terrorists, right? Because we have used that excuse before in the United States. So then you say these are terrorists. Terrorists, we need to take out these terrorists. And then uh, now, if Americans are being killed, as Blinken claims, then you're saying, okay, so now, since Americans are involved, and now, because it's not a, a, a Palestinian American journalist working for Al Jazeera, but it's, you know, American young tourists, or whatever it is, now, okay, well, we have to respond in some sort of way. I do think the United States is going to continue to fund Israel. I think they're going to continue um, harping on it. Uh, you know, you're going to see more statements like you saw from RFK Jr., like you saw from... Nikki Haley, and like you're you're seeing for, from the Biden administration as well, they're competing to see who is the most you know pro-Israel, most pro-Zionist, uh, you know, and a uh, politician. Like they're all in competition, and that's unfor the unfortunate state of the United States, where you know all everybody's really bad on this whole issue. But I think you're going to see that. I don't think we're going to necessarily see. Uh, an outward ex escalation. We could see more U.S. involvement in terms of, of military support. But if, if this is used as a sort of Pearl Harbor, what they would be what they would be in trouble with is Iran, because Iran will uh, never uh, not support uh, Palestine. In fact, I was just in Iran, and I know this is a little off topic, but I was just in Iran. And I and I got to really see what the reality was on the ground in Iran compared to all the things that are being, you know, thrown at us. And while Iran is a theocratic country that, you know, it's a Muslim country where there's no alcohol, where, you know, they, they believe they in, in the Muslim ideology, they uh, the things about women being bashed in the head for not wearing a hijab. Uh, I saw many women without a hijab, many women without a headscarf, and they were not being bashed in the head. And so I, I these are things that, you know, we're getting told. But Iran is a country that was largely is largely pro-Palestinian. There was so many echoes uh, calling for the freedom of Palestine in Iran by the government itself. 
So I do think that the potential for a conflict is so big there with Iran that it wouldn't be in the U.S.'s interest to uh, to move in that direction because I don't think it it, it would be uh, I don't think it would be good for them to have a multi pronged uh, conflict where they're dealing with, of course, right now in Ukraine and Iran. But I don't put it past them. I do think that this is an attempt to sort of see how the public will react and see and sort of show this bravado. But I, I am really hesitating to say that the United States is really just going to go fully in. I do think they're going to continue ramping up support, ramping up the rhetoric and all of that. But um, again, you know, nobody knows a solution to this because, again, two state solution seems like the diplomatic option. But again, uh, Israel would still be there. And so you always have that argument of that. So I, I do well, think this conflict is, isn't going to stop until there is a, some sort of like uh, recognition to what Palestine wants. And uh, yeah, it, it, it could get out of hand. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just and I think that it's you know, there there is no solution, but a one state solution in this certain. And that's because of what Israel has made the reality. Right. I mean, then, and, and as right. far as I'm concerned at this point, if we're going to be legal and, and talk about liberty and rights and so on, then you go back to the original occupied Palestine situation and return land that was taken. But, you know, you have to have consideration for people that have no stake in this game that grew up and lived there that, have, you know, many people, many of which support Palestine from Israel, you know, and so it's like there is a, a, a difficult conversation to have, but you got to stand with what's right, you know, and that's what I think is important. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And, you know, really, they lie from one side of it about what they want in regard to a two state solution, whereas the religious Zionism party will outwardly tell you that's never going to happen in general. And that's really yeah. where I see this ending, where you've got the extremist actions of the groups like the Azov movement and the religious Zionism faction that are seemingly driving this to a very dangerous state. And I don't think they have logic in mind. So that's my last worry for whether they force the hand of a belligerent government like the U.S. where they can't not act. So I thank you for your for your insight. Any last thoughts you want to leave us with before you get back to work? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Nice to have her on to get some insight. You know, she does a great job around the world getting a different, you know, different perspective, which brings her a lot of negative attention from people in the U S but largely around the world that she, you know, she's more, what's the right word for it? You know, worldly, like understands the different perspectives of different locations. And there's a lot of people in the U S that have never even been to Iran that would say she's wrong. And, you know, just look at her work and decide for yourself. I think she does great work in this regard, but I, I did find some, uh, posts that I was talking about beforehand while we were watching that. This is the one I was mentioning before, one of the many, and this is from 2018. Israeli forces shoot Canadian doctor in Gaza, a Canadian doctor. Canada didn't seem to care. Like same thing you'd see in the United States in reverse, but you can go through and read this for yourself. The source links are here bo on both of these pla platforms with cover the story. And it, it's just, it's crazy. The, it, multiple examples of doctors or medics or journalists being in place and being shot and nobody seems to care about it. I was, I'm going to include this as well. An article from Robert last year, Palestinian Authority does Israel's dirty work, one killed in clashes. I just want to make sure, oh, here, let me do this so before I forget. Add them to today's show notes so you guys can check these out later. Add this one. Israel uses its civilians as human shields during its attack on Gaza. Interesting overlap, which is what they, which is what they ultimately just did in a recent example in May 2023. And yet it's a lot of fingers pointing in the opposite direction. And then, of course, I just saw this and thought it was interesting to include. I made this image myself, which is a little bit clumsy, but it's still funny. If anything, the United States is the home base of Al Qaeda, not Iran 2021. Also Robert Inlikesh. But to her points, in general, we're at a position now where they're trying to make the argument that this is, you know, that the U.S. has to get involved. But as I pointed out in our discussion, I think it's really embarrassing that they are, you know, telling that they would ignore a U.S. journalist being killed by Israel. Conclusively proven, by the way, which they've now admitted to, but they claim it's an accident, which you can prove it wasn't. It's all in these articles you can watch, for your, you read for yourself. Here's the one he followed up with. Israel covered up the murder of, uh, of Shireen with U.S. help. And by the way, here's just the image of where the IDF tried to knock over the coffin while they were bringing it because, you know. Freedom, democracy, right? Oh, that's for me to remember. Um, now, she also mentioned this, what I think is important. The, the no word, no the word unhinged of tight connects with nobody better than Nikki Haley. I mean, she is like she's trying to be the old school neocon. 
Like she's not going to win, in my opinion, but I think she's desperate to try to pretend to be what they what the powers that shouldn't be want her to be outwardly. And that's aggressively pro-Israel. Everything you ever heard, propaganda wise from the US government is exactly the line. Assad's a murdering terrorist that does chemical weapon attacks, Ukraine's fighting for freedom, you know, on and on and on. Just nonsense. But she says the unhinged sentiment of not just of not just Republican neocons like Nikki Haley, but soon to be independents like RFK Jr., Democrats like Biden. This is what they sell to already propagandized U.S. public who can't figure out why Ukraine, full of Nazis, and Israel, full of Zionists, two sides of the same coin, get billions. Here's her sentiment. It's terrifying. Fact, because I want the American people to kind of take this in for a second. Just imagine that here the Israelis woke up and communities were bombarded. Yeah, which happens every day in Gaza, but she doesn't care. Families were murdered. Happens every day in Gaza, but she doesn't care. Women and children were taken hostage, dragged through the streets. The elderly were taken. Which happens every day in Gaza. You get the point, and she doesn't care. Now, all of the things she's stating, by the way, I, there's a lot of statements about that. All I've seen is people being taken and in many cases being held because they're going to be exchanged. Now we have the example of the German tattoo artist who was killed. At the very least, I think it's possible that this was somebody other than that, but it's possible just as likely that Hamas would do it because of the fact that individuals would act, or maybe it's because you think they might. But either way, that is a fraction compared to what continues to happen right now and has continued to happen for 75 years to innocent people in Gaza. Not IDF, not military, not terrorists, innocent civilians. You've heard this already today. All of this has happened in front of everyone on top of thousands of rockets. What does that even mean? All this has happened in front of everyone? How is it different anywhere else? Rockets that hit Israel. This should be personal for every woman and man in America. Why? Because when they did this, when they did this surprise attack, when they took these hostages, when they murdered these families, they were celebrating. And what were they celebrating? They were saying death to Israel, death to America. Well, that's an, I, I can't prove that anywhere, by the way, at all. But it still wouldn't surprise me at all. But that's probably an easy thing for them to float because probably something that they might say, but I don't have any examples of that. But my point is when they've made clear both Iran Palestine and all the rest of them that when they say that they're talking about the governments that are occupying them, not the peoples like us who they know are fighting for their cause for freedom and just causes like illegal occupation being coming to an end. But what she's trying to make you think is that these people, first of all, are you, are you, are you somehow not realizing that people are celebrating that Gaza just got bombed? Israel's they're cheering. How is that any different? Oh, because one side's terrorist, one side's not. I get it. So we're back in kindergarten where we're just going to pretend that one side works and the other doesn't because you're on that side. In fact, even though you make that argument, we can again prove that this starts from an illegal statement. The bottom line is it's about saying that we only care about civilians when they're on this side, when they have this color, when they come from this territory. It's disgusting. And these are the people acting like they care about race and equality. This is not just an attack on Israel. This is an attack on America because they hate us just as much. I mean, see, th th this is my point about this. She's pulling cards from old school, tired, neocon, neoliberal kind of mindsets to tell they hate our freedom. Thanks, George Bush, <laughs> which was never the truth, guys. They, they, they hated that the, our government stole everything from them and murdered their families. And that's when they say they're coming from uh, South America for freedom. No, they're coming because you blew up their home and they have nowhere else to go and they might as well take what they can get. That's largely what's really going on. But Nikki Haley, and this is why she's not going to win, because she is an old she is a cartoon of what we used to take seriously. Now they're all, I mean, they're all cartoons, but people are still buying what's currently being sold. She's taking a, a book for a, a page from an old book. They hate us all. No, they really don't. And it's very easy to prove, but she's hoping to get elected by maybe resonating with some old school hate that people have for brown people on the other sides of the world. That is quite unhinged. <clears throat> now, the Gateway Pundit was reporting Several Americans reportedly slaughtered and abducted by Hamas terrorists in Israel, according to Anthony Blinken. Well, what he's telling you is that we think and we're trying to verify. But it wouldn't surprise me that a partisan outlet would frame this in what makes you think that the bad guys they don't like are the bad guys and that America's involved and we're going to fight for freedom. It's pretty easy to sell, get clicks and shares in that way. Massive surprise attack. We'll get into this next. 
But all he's saying is several Americans may be among the dead. That's where this is coming from. Maybe. That's what this ends with. Okay? So we don't know. Do you really think for a second that they wouldn't float the possibility that Americans are involved just to get people to write these articles, just to get people to go along with the agenda of continuing to murder civilians in Gaza because they killed maybe a couple Americans that we can't confirm? Too many people are, are willing to go along. Like, think about the interesting point of saying that you're a sympathizer or a propagandist for Hamas by saying everyone's life matters. But when they come out and say we should murder people because maybe an American died and that's okay. So doesn't that seem to suggest, one, that Americans' lives are more important than anybody else, and that if the possibility exists that we'll take action now? Isn't it interesting? It's the same point, guys. It goes back to the fact that they're framing the objective, caring people as extremists, as the real extremists are sitting here telling you that it's righteous to murder civilians. Crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Paul O'Connell points out an interesting point. I think we're going to go past five hours today. At least... 70 killed in Israel, killed, 198 dead in Gaza. <laughs> now, it is a minor point, but you guys, everywhere this stuff happens, you have people in propaganda's outlets trying to frame things to make you feel a certain way without you realizing it. And he simply makes the point. Should, someone should really look into this phenomenon of Palestinians spontaneously dying with apparently no cause. Because that's what they're, just, they're dead. So why? Do they get bombed? They get murdered? They get shot? Well, you, they're, It's interesting how Israelis are killed where they just died obvious point it's propaganda they're trying to sell you a sentiment now israel this is from current and I'm, I'll, I'll update in a second the one before it said uh, over 600 de dead they're claiming israel declares war and approves significant steps to retaliate for surprise attack by hamas so they're planning to attack back again not on hamas but a populated civilian area as punishment for being there because they're mad about what happened is really what this amounts to and that will they'll scream to the world that they were fighting terrorism and they just are bloodthirsty at this moment and that's easily provable what they're saying on the streets guys it's saying that they're they're the fighting ahead is the toll passes 900 dead and thousands wounded on both sides it's saying wait the surprise attack how, how do you read that? Like past 900 on both sides? They're combining it? It's saying here at least 600 people have been killed in Israel, which is not what even the Israeli government seems to be saying, but it's saying in 300 have been killed in Gaza. But now it's interesting. How typically they want to undersell what happened, but I think right now they're trying to oversell it to make an argument that they're the ones that are more suffering. I think that both sides are probably to some degree doing that, but I think it's pretty good guess that you can have a lot more casualties in a place where they're directly trying to bomb civilian areas. Just, just one of my guesses. And I would argue that this number is wildly overblown, if you want my honest opinion. I haven't seen even a fraction of enough evidence to suggest that 600 people died in Israel. Certainly possible with bombings, but I'm just saying I haven't been able to verify. But what you can prove with 100 apartments being bombed where people are living in their apartments that it's more easy to wrap your mind around 300 plus. But here is the interesting part about this where I think this is going to get way worse if they're allowed to keep pushing. But that doesn't mean I think this might necessarily spin out into some net world war kind of a situation. I'm worried about it because people are pretty extreme in these situations. And I mean the Israeli government, the Ukraine government, the U.S. government. But what's interesting and alarming is that Netanyahu is saying that all Palestinians in Gaza have to leave now. Let me see if it says... It's just in tra it's translated. But so he's saying that all Gazans have to leave now because they're going to act with force everywhere. Which, by the way, just so you're aware, and th what this statement is meant for is the average person who thinks this is new. They do this all the time. They bomb broadly throughout civilian areas after anything happens. And the world looks away. So now they're just going to keep doing that under the guys that now they're going to keep doing. But the point is, the difference is now going everyone in Gaza get out of the way. Again, playing on the ignorance of the average person. Here's what I said. Well, this chief nerd shared this as well. He says, all the places where Hamas is organized, of the city of evil, of this city of evil, the whole Gaza area, all the places where Hamas hides, operates from, we will turn the cities to of ruins. I say to the residents of Gaza, get out of there now, because we will act everywhere with all strength. So even though the whole city is evil, we're pretending we're letting you get out of the way. 
But here's the point. This is the Israeli government hoping to play on the ignorance of the average person who may not know these people are in a Zionist-controlled open-air prison. They are in for a surprise, though, in my opinion, regarding what people are aware of today. This could lead to another Zionist-led massacre if allowed, because as this person asks, ah, dang it, I accidentally hit it twice, closed it, as this person asked, this is an open call for expulsion and genocide. Gaza is besieged. Borders are closed. Where are they going to go? Like, really think about that. Their argument's going to probably be because they rolled down a fence or whatever they can all run. But we're, we're where are they supposed to go? First of all, you displaced these people. And, ba and you barely will even recognize the places they have now. And if you want, you'll bulldoze their house and do, build, build a pool right now. But now because you decide you want them out of the way or you want the world to think that you care about their lives, you say, quick, get out of the way. And they're, they're already bombing, by the way. They never stop. All last night and continued right now, they're bombing in the area or, you know, intermittently. The point is that these people then are going to have a choice to either stay there when likely they have no ability to go anywhere, no money, no, no effort, like no resources to make that happen. But even if they do, so now they're supposed to give up another home and get out of the way so they can bomb their home again? Again, every sentiment in this conversation comes from people that don't care at all about the lives of these people, their families, their, their entire Life, everything, their, their, their heirlooms, their, their generational hand, everything is gone again once this happens. And once with the, they're already bombing places. Why don't people care about their lives? Because people like Laura Luma will tell you they're all terrorists because that's a terrible person. Now, inversionism points a good, makes a good point. And in regard to this whole thing about the get out of the way. So what happens to the innocent residents that don't get out in time? Just another casualty of war, even the women and children. I can sure as hell tell you that if anything like that happened in reverse, they would cry foul for the rest of our lives. But of course, when if this happens and they do kill children that just didn't get out of the way or weren't able to, the West won't care. They will look the other way. They'll say terrorists when they have to, but when really put to it, they'll say, well, they should have gotten out of the way. Mark my words. I hope to God that doesn't happen. I'm all for there being real justice against those responsible for the attacks on Israeli civilians, as really anybody should be. Attacks on civilians should never be okay. But have we not learned anything from 9-11 or the weapons of mass destruction or the inc babies on cold incubator floors? Or that's not the right, babies from incubators on the cold floor, whatever it was. One million people in Iraq died because of the lie about weapons of mass destruction, which we all should know was a lie. Many women and children. Do I, need, do I need to bring up the Madeleine Albright clip where she literally says, I mean, I don't even know if I have that still. Let me see. Well, that doesn't look like it. I, I could I search for it real quick, but I don't want to download it. But, you know, the point we all should remember, Madeleine Albright saying that, you know, 500,000 children was worth it. Literally on the record saying that 500,000 children being killed, which is not civilian, all civilians, of course, was worth it. For what? For a destroyed country? For no weapons of mass destruction? Or for stealing all the oil, gold, and resources? Yeah, I think we know now. Or we should, if we have any brain or any sense. Has anyone considered the possibility, he goes on, that there was a more complex conspiracy to allow the attack, to justify the invasion of leveling of Gaza? It's possible we're going to it, we'll get into it to end. Why are we believing the same people that just orchestrated the greatest psyop and crime against humanity that the world has ever seen with COVID and the vaccine? Am I crazy for asking that question? Are people going to call me an anti-Semite for wondering what really happened and not blindly believing that in Yahoo, despite the fact that the only real Semites in this conversation are Palestinians? None of this feels organic. And the rhetoric from people I really respect is starting to scare me and bum me out honestly. It's because this guy, I mean, I, this, this account is new to me. But in my experience so far, this account has shown itself to be trying its best and doing so in every way I've seen so far to be objective, to be open minded about these things and seems like a good person. Because right now, most people who have all these large accounts they follow that are saying Israel good, Palestine bad are either being dead silent or towing the line, too, because maybe it'll get them reach or maybe I'm wrong about it. No one of them have the gumption, the Constitution to go, no. That's wrong. I don't care how large you are. I don't care what it's going to do to my following. You're wrong. You're being a disgusting person and you're, you're obfuscating civilian casualties because Netanyahu said so. But again, 
Good job, man. This account's doing a great job. Why are we believing the same people that just lied to us? None of this feels organic, he said. And the rhetoric from people I really respect is starting to scare me and bum me out. Another contrived trap. Now, this is just a clip of Joe Rogan talking about Operation Northwoods. You know, which if you don't know, is about a, I mean, you can look it up on Wikipedia. It is an operation that was presented to Kennedy that was about bombing inside the United States and blaming it on Russia. Well, look at that. Another, I'm willing to bet you that Matt Wallace got wind of this old concept and because of videos like this and just was like, oh, I'm going to make a breaking story and make him t- and b- pretend that's what's going to happen. Certainly possible. Can you tell I don't think highly of the guy that's, that's continuing to lie to people for clicks and shares and money? The point is that it's certainly something that is always possible, as I said when I showed you his video. The point is that it's something that is in the past what they put forward and that they then, I guess the argument is, Kennedy stopped. But the point of the clip is that they're capable of doing so and they've carried out false flags around the world as we should know. Why we would trust now is inversionism point. I don't know. Now, rockets that uh, this Defender account points out have been launched from southern Lebanon, as uh, Isabella was telling us as well, or Fee, Fiorella Isabella, telling us that Lebanon, uh, southern Lebanon has now launched attacks into Israel. She claimed three different locations that are occupied, which are to Lebanese territory, and even Robert's written about, written about this. The IDF is currently responding with artillery fire. So now you've got Lebanon that's seemingly involved in the ongoing skirmishes, if you whatever you want to call it. Hezbollah attacks the borders, we just told you, and, and they're claiming solidarity with Palestine, which I, ever, nobody should be shocked about. They've been actively standing with Palestine for a long time. And she's also pointing out, Fiorella, that reports have now confirmed that Palestinian resistance fighters, and this was at 10 a.m. this morning, central time today, that they were 10 kilometers away from occupied West Bank. Now, that's a really interesting thing. If they actually were able to connect these two territories, that would be a really big deal. I mean, right now what's happening, as I think Robert's going to be either having an article up tonight or tomorrow about all of this, it's unprecedented, guys, as you should know by now. It's, this is a huge deal. If this connects, though, that will be monumentous, and that might signal the end of this current era. We'll see what happens. I think it's really important. Now, as Sarah Abdallah points out, as you might expect, like with Lebanon, massive numbers in Yemen have taken to the streets to show solidarity with, Pal- solidarity, solidarity, excuse me, with Palestine. And we can see, I mean, again, it's not hard to wrap your mind around. They're actively in support. Now, the point is they like to pretend that these are all just Iran proxies, and it's just a clumsy narrative to say Iran bad guy. They just support their allies very clearly. You also have Africa for Palestine. <clears throat> saying the party of Nelson Mandela, South Africa's liberation movement organization, and today's governing party, the ANC, has come out in full support of Palestinian resistance. The decision by Palestinians to respond to the brutality ongoing for 75 years of the settler Israeli apartheid regime is unsurprising. The ANC stands with the people of occupied Palestine as it is clear that the denigration of the dege- degenerate generating security situation oh i see i was like that doesn't make sense degenerating security i I thought it said something else at first but so the degenerating security situation is directly linked to the unlawful israeli occupation so a lot of people are standing up in solidarity iraq for example buildings are decorated with the palestinian flag in the name of the current battle with israel despite iraq being currently occupied by the united states telling you guys things are shifting here is Manchester right now. Manchester supports Palestinian resistance as they march through the streets. And here is one of the most important points. Now, there's not much we're going to dwell on here, but I just it was in the title because I think this is an important development. Turkish President Erdogan is now saying America must stay away, that we will defend Palestine. Now, Robert was saying in his statement, he's talking about the deployment of the aircraft carriers and basically warning them to stay away because there will be consequences. I think this is an important statement. This is a NATO ally. And Robert has also written a lot about what happened in Syria before. But the last time Turkey pushed into Syria to go after one of the U.S.'s allies, the Kurdish, or rather their proxy useful idiots out there that they use repeatedly and, and throw to the wind whenever they want to. When Turkey pushed in to go after them because Turkey sees them as a terrorist group, the U.S. backed away. And then when they pulled back, the U.S. retook the territory. Now, the point is that if Turkey 
in, let's just take Syria, for example, decides to do something again, which seems to be developing, it might be that U.S. pulls back. But the point is that puts them in a really weak position right now. And on top of that, in the same context or same dynamic, if Turkey is saying, you better not step into this, money is one thing. But if they're literally, as RFK is asking for, going to put troops on the ground, Turkey is saying, we will defend Palestine. And then you've got NATO versus NATO, which is already something that seemed to have spun up with the recent bombing in Syria, right? Because they bombed the military cer ceremony, killed mostly civilians. Nobody seemed to care, as they're all crying foul now, hypocrites. But then right away, you had Turkey having a drone shot down by the United States in Syria. So we don't know whether that was the cover-up of the fact that Turkey was the one that did this or Turkey was, I mean, there's all these different overlaps or Israel was involved. There's, it's, it seems it's seemingly undefined at the moment. My point, though, is that they have an ability to change the, the standing here as a NATO ally because the U.S. does not want at least outwardly to be seen at odds with a NATO ally. Other than maybe, you know, bombing Germany's pipeline. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how much this how broken all this is. But I think that's an important part, and we're going to follow up on this as this goes forward. But I think that puts a huge stick in the spokes. My opinion is that will be largely a reason why this does not escalate into more violence, not the other way around. Now, to finish, hopefully quickly, as we're at four hours and 40 minutes, I think this might want to be the longest shows we've done. I didn't expect it to be this long, but I just I told myself I was going to go through all this because all this is important. Now, as much as this might, you know, lower the amount of rage this whole video gets. I still think it's important to put this out there. Please, please clip this up, break it out, use it all you want. I don't even care. As long as you put it out, T-Lab, right? That's all I want. Make sure people know where they can get the source material. That's all I want. Now, Efrat Fengenson, who I pointed this out the other day, points this out in the beginning, saying Israeli citizens in Israeli towns near Gaza Strip begging for help from Israel police or army, and they're not there. Very strange. This is on the 7th, by the way. Six hours after this started, what happened to the strongest army in the world? How come border crossings were wide open? Something is very wrong here. It's very interesting. So early on, people were saying something seems amiss. Now here are two examples of Israelis in Israel saying that their government's involved. Saying that there's no way this happened the way that it did saying that they were either sold out by the Israeli government or that this is a means to an end to accomplish something, but at the expense of Israeli life. It's, I mean, this is the point about how all this is shift. They've lost control. That's why you have a huge protest from Israeli Jews against the Israeli government because of the judicial reforms. Literally trying to turn this into a theocratic country, which it largely already is, as they're criticizing Iran for the same thing. It's, it's hilarious. But my point is that they are, there's a huge sentiment about why the, this was allowed to happen. Now we'll get in a second to why that might be, but first let's, well, I think this one's a, uh, it's in um, captions anyway. So let's read it to you. So this is uh, Narwaz pointing this out. It says, I served in the Israeli defense force, Gaza division, this person speaking during 2014 Gaza war. She says, listen to me and listen. Well, there is no way in hell that someone can approach the border without us knowing about it. They've talked about, random, you know, animals setting this stuff off. Like, it's really, really interesting. Now it says, share as much as you can. She says, uh, served in the infantry. During operation, uh, she served in God's division. As you were just saying, throughout my service, I was in the logistics support during the 14, 2014 war in the Gaza division. She says, there's no way in the world, as he just wrote, that anyone can approach the border without us knowing about it. it. The observers sit in bunkers. Four hours, they can't move their eyes like this. They sit in front of a screen. There's no way in hell they would wake me up at nights for a pigeon, for a stork that got too close to the border, for a cockroach that went under the barrier. They would, ro they would roust all oops, the forces in the sector. How could they enter the track the, the the tractors, and how could four hundred men enter the tractor with tractors? You know, I mean, it's it's a fair. Who knows? I mean, there's it doesn't mean that it's not possible. The argument they claim is they were at high alert for West Bank, but her point is that I mean, my point is that there's more than enough personnel. They would argue at least the way they present themselves to man all this stuff. 
and if they're really saying that one heightened security alert somehow empties the entire area, I agree with that doesn't make any sense to me. But it doesn't then verify to me that it was allowed to happen. There could be something else going on. But I'm entertaining that possibility. What would it mean for Israel to allow this to happen? And why would they do that? Here's another video. And this one's much more compelling. Now, uh, oh, and th this is the uh, same person, Efrat Fangenson. Now, I don't agree with everything she says here. I, I, you know, calling Hamas terrorists, for example, I just don't agree with that. I don't think that's true. It's like saying Hezbollah are terrorists or Iran, IGR, or IRGC, or they're not, guys. These are just military elements of these resist of the elected forces, both in Palestine, in in. Uh, well, I mean, it's much more than that today in Lebanon, but also in, in all of these places or or the Houthis in Yemen. They, they call all of these groups terrorists because these are the groups that are fighting back against the oppressive forces. And sure, that, that could mean that there are also actions we might not agree with that happened there. And I would condemn those when I saw them. But you can't pretend they're all terrorists. Anyway, that being said, because they're not, this is what she says here is really important <clears throat> and goes over the fact that she believes that there's something else going on here. October 7th, 2023. This is Afat Fenningson, and I'm here to share an update from Israel-Hamas war, which started this morning. I'm going to share some key details and concerns mostly based on Israeli citizens' voices from the ground and based on official statements. This is a very tough day for me and for us in Israel, and it is tough for people of Palestine too, especially now that Israel is starting to attack back. This war and every war is a horrible thing for everyone involved, except for those who get rich from it, right? Yeah, and this is why I appreciate her, right? As much as as much as we may disagree on on whether or not Hamas are terrorists and so on, you know, she sees both sides of the discussion. And I think that's important, at the very least, to understand that there are victims on all sides of this and that the people that are really benefiting are the people that, you know, the, the rich man wars kind of a thing, right? I mean, that's how this tends to go. It's it's constant. And so I like that she can see that I mean, or anybody that can. And I, I can find some kind of a common ground there where we can all realize that we're all kind of being played by the powerful. Ultimately, this morning around 6 a.m., Around sunrise, hundreds of Hamas terrorists, at least 300, breached the border fence in multiple places, completely unimpeded, leading to terror attacks and kidnappings in Israeli towns or villages. And I've made my statements on that already. The terrorists infiltrated a significant number of dry land outposts, as well as a naval, naval infiltration point in Zikim. As we speak, Israel is actively engaged in combat in 22 outposts. Huge. This is from the IDF statement, the official statement. The attacks have already resulted in over 100 casualties and more than 100 kidnaps of Israeli citizens. In one village, 50 Israelis have been taken hostage, leaving people locked in shelters for long periods of eight to nine hours without rescue. By the way, the 100 kidnappings is not the official number. It's what we hear from people on the ground. I think official numbers talk about 30 or 40 people, but we know there are more. Now, the point in this is, you know, whether whatever your opinion on, in, is on whether or not that many people were taken, however, how, how they were treated, what she's getting to is the point that all of this doesn't make sense. The fact that all of this could happen speaks to some kind of either a breakdown in their intelligence or their abilities or that they let it happen. And that's where she's building the point to that all this is going on. And she might make sure you understand that I don't necessarily agree with the entire framing of, of that, all of that. I've already made, I've made the point 14 times throughout the show today. So I'll keep it going. Um, in some places, the terrorists were burning the village and people didn't know if to leave the shelter and surrender or stay and pray for the fire to not reach them. Many young people who were in a big outdoor party near the Gaza Envelope villages were attacked there. Some ran away, some were injured, and some are still missing. Apparently, Israeli... Def now, apparently, that's where the German girl was, that, the, the whole peace concert thing. That's, that, that's what they're talking about. So it just that's, that's what they're referencing. And that's the image you see of people kind of running in the desert or the, the dirt area with the kind of like night, nightclub clothes on. Like there's a couple of those clips. That's what that's from forces that were supposed to be around Gaza were placed around the West Bank because of security concerns so that the, the Gaza envelope was left 
unoccupied with military. They say around 60 to 80 percent of that area was left without the IDF forces that were supposed to be there. No way. Soldiers are being recruited for reserves as we speak from uh, this morning, but because of stupid reasons such as no public transport, they're waiting hours to get to the bases. Now, I don't believe that. I've already seen numerous reports. I mean, it could be part true in some case. I've seen numerous reports that are already showing that the reservists and the people, the, the, the you know, not the full-time military members, the ones they call in, are refusing service because they don't want to go get killed. Because there are, like, the point is they're well aware of how these things end up. And there's Israeli statements of that, that they're refusing to be deployed. So it makes sense to me they would frame it as, oh, logistical problems, instead of just nobody wants to fight for us anymore. Interesting. Mainstream media, this is an interesting point, apparently uh, admits that IDF spokesperson is forbidding them to tell the complete truth about what's happening, highlighting a lack of transparency. And this is to the Israeli citizens. I'm not. Think about that. They're admitting that they're keeping the truth from Israel. Make sense of that for me without recognizing that even the Israeli people are getting hip to their lies and realize that should the Israeli people find out what's going on, they might find out that they allowed their, their own people to die for their agenda like they have done throughout the years of their existence, the Zionist regime that doesn't really care about Judaism or Jews. They care about their own agenda, as plenty of Orthodox Jews will tell you openly before they get beat up by the IDF. Even talking about overseas, I'm talking about to the people of Israel here. For hours and hours, the reports that came from the mainstream media were completely lacking, and people started to rely mostly on the news from each other, from Think people on the ground. There. Only now, 6 p.m. Israel time, or it's actually 7 already, uh, 12 hours after the event started, we received the first formal statement from the IDF spokesperson, and I will include an article with that statement in the notes. A year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare for such events, and ongoingly there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises serious questions for me, anyway, about Israeli intelligence, what happened? Two years ago, there, were, um, there was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly on these kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has one of the most advanced and high-tech armies. How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I now, it's possible that we were lied to about that, like they lie about the Iron Dome, but something tells me that's not true. But I want to make sure you hear that as a possibility, because we are lied to about a lot of this stuff, their capabilities, the numbers that people have died. So they could have just been hyping what their capabilities are. But with what we know about all of their te technological advances, I don't think that's true, ultimately. So it seems more likely that this was allowed to some degree, or at the very least was meant to be a setup. And then the Palestinians got wind of it and took advantage or, you know, any number of possibilities. But the point is, it just does not seem like they just surprised them and it happened. Cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. A cat moving alongside the fence is triggering all forces. So this? What happened to the strongest army in the world? How come border crossings were wide open? Something is very wrong here. Something is very strange. And Vanessa told us that that main checkpoint they're talking about apparently has multiple different checkpoints to go through. And apparently it's a two mile long area and nobody was there. I mean, just that seems highly unlikely. This chain of events is very unusual and not typical for the Israeli defense system. With the recent normalization efforts of Israel and Palestine led by Saudi Arabia, I wonder whether a prisoner's exchange deal is something that could only be seriously considered by Israel if a shocking event like that happened. Is it a possibility that only with Israel hostages it can be justified to release dangerous prisoners from Israeli prisons? Very interesting. So here, this is, she's an Israeli telling you or considering the possibility that Israel might have allowed people to be taken. And then through the current narrative, that would mean people being killed alongside that so that they can release their own prisoners without looking weak for doing so. Think about that. 
Also, don't forget that from Vanessa, when I talked yesterday, that was one of the thoughts that popped into my head that maybe from from a different perspective, but maybe it's likely that the religious Zionism extremist element of this want to want people to be killed so they can use that as the reason to go even further against Gaza, which is what they want. Either way you look at this, it seems like this is potentially, for, even from Israeli perspective, something that they allowed to happen. I find that really interesting. And, and remember, they've got thousands of prisoners, and, th and this is a discussion in regard to the normalization that they're claiming they're trying to do through Saudi Arabia. And, you know, maybe that's the whole point. They just want an excuse to be like, we're not weak. Well, now it's just a fair deal. Wouldn't surprise me. All at the expense of you, wherever you are. I don't know. Mainstream media reported that Deputy Hamas leader Salah al aruri suggests using Israeli prisoners for leverage in negotiations. So maybe. A point about the situation in Israel in the past few years, which I want to make, is related to, uh, and those who follow me know, that there's a general sense of insecurity in Israel. There's political and social instability and unrest. Public funds are being misused on agendas uh -huh. such as COVID, climate, j judicial reform. And this is a huge sentiment throughout the Israeli Jewish population. Israeli in general, but specifically the Israeli Jew, because we're talking about the judicial reform aspect where they are going into, a, like basically the long story short of is they're talking about going into a position where they no longer have the legal avenues to change what the government is making the reality through their own religious tenets. The Zionism concept, right? This And this is using Judaism, and it's not even really about that, right? This is about control. But the point is, they're telling you, they're misusing funds for COVID, for climate change, for judicial reforms, abolishing cash for the Great Reset. Re guys, we need to realize how much more in common we all have as the individuals of, of governments. Not the ones that blindly go along in the U.S., I would call it the paradigm. But in other countries, just the people that blindly tow lines of the government on any pair, any party, any coalition, but people like this, where we all really see what's going on. And maybe we disagree on certain points, but we recognize who the real power structures are. And it's at all of our expense all the time until we can realize that we're not fighting each other. We are all collectively supposed to be fighting them. Abolishing cash and many more. The current government is highly corrupt in my view, while the previous one was no better. I don't care about having a popular opinion. I care about exposing evil forces wherever and whomever they are. I value so that. to me, this surprise attack seems like a planned operation on all fronts. This is a failure to protect the people of Israel, for sure. Perhaps the biggest failure since the Yom Kippur War exactly 50 years ago, if not bigger. By the way, is it a coincidence it's exactly 50 years ago, almost on the day? Usually the isn't. Not when it's something like that. Things that happen on 9-11 or the re repeated bombings of every Christmas. There's a reason these things continue to happen on certain dates. Exactly 50 years ago. Can't miss that. The Yom Kippur War was on October 6, 1973. If I was a conspiracy theorist, I, I would that. say that this feels like the work of the deep state. Why can't you just say it feels like the work of the deep state? Why can't you just say that? Why do you have to preface that with comparisons? I, I hate that. Because anyway, you, you know why. It feels like the people of Israel and the people of Palestine have been sold once again to the higher powers that be. Well done. At the same time, this is still very, very difficult to fathom. Have a good evening. Right. The people of Palestine and the people of Israel have been sold out. I love it. I mean, I, I just, as much as I made, I disagree on certain points. Like, this is my point. We have more in common than we don't. We see it around the world, guys. Now, I point out, let's talk Zora Ranch here, makes the same point as, as a lot of the, as Orwell agrees and the people in our, in our chat over here. He says, hey, look, another Hollywood quality production straight out of air, airportless open air prison. Just pointing out this, this, I, the point about their drones. And Orwell says, they knew this was coming. Nothing could change my mind. And he says, they knew. And considering the history of real Spike Cohen, who is the, uh, I'm not sure, founder and president of Yap o Official, saying, posted about, they need they likely needed this to happen so another Middle Eastern 9-11 can happen. Bring BB all the wars and judicial reforms of his choice. That's Netanyahu. So just showing you that people's general people's thoughts online seem to line up with that general idea. And then Mohammed El-Kurd points out the narrative that, quote, this is Israel's 9-11 
which by the way, interestingly enough, is what they're saying on the Israeli side of this and a large proportion of the conversation. So look at that interesting lineup, right? Is a preemptive excuse for genocide, which is interestingly what the other side is saying they're going to do it for. It's almost like it all connects perfectly. No more, no less. Israeli, American, and European politicians are already on TV explicitly calling for genocide with no retort, no challenge from the spineless journalists interviewing them. Crazy. Now, I'll end really quickly with the point that we already discussed this, right? The idea of how all this connects, even through the Ukraine conversation or the forces, or rather more specifically, the un the <laughs> maniacal powers that are funding and driving all of them together, Weapons supplied by the West to Ukraine already resurfaced near Israel's border. That was on June 23rd of this year. It, I'm not sure how you, you could take this a few different ways, but the idea is that this is weapons being supplied by the West in, to Ukraine have ended up in, in near the border. Now, you could argue that that is weapons that are sold and end up in the hands of terrorists. Or you could argue, because of what we just heard, this was something that was set up to take place using weapons from the West that they're also funding. Let's not forget, the same groups in the same area. This is from 2018. Rights groups demand Israel stop arming neo-Nazis. Literally, the Azov movement. It's just ridiculous today. But the point is, this is all connected in my mind. Either that they funded to a group that ended up using them against their allies, or the point is that this was something that seems likely to have been set up. And as even Vanessa points out, an interesting tie from Israel to Ukraine, or as Isabella or uh, Fiorella points out, is something that they already said that they're going to uh, make another big Israel and so on. Like it says here, Zelensky wants Ukraine to be a big Israel. There's, there's interesting t talks about the possibility of Israel moving to somewhere like Ukraine. As Vanessa points out, the apparently the historical origin of Zion's gate is in Ukraine. So there's weird overlaps here. But overall that there may be more to the story and it ties together. And that's the point to point out to end here, the idea that Ukraine is using U.S.-backed terrorists from the Syrian war, which are now being used all around, in, currently being used in this case, but discussed in the idea of the very same people that are being used as chess pieces in all of the bad guy areas they want to pretend they want to fight. And those weapons and those forces now being used in this sense, it would seem. But I think it's interesting that the same ISIS forces that you can tie right back to the U.S. government and the same powers, Israel arming and funding and supporting them in the in Golan Heights and everywhere else, are in fact being used against in Ukraine. And we have the examples of these coming from the cradle, showing ex-ISIS members being transferred to Syria from Ukraine. So the question simply becomes, are these the same kind of people being jumped around? Maybe the same ones that Vanessa's talking about that are cutting people's heads off. Or excuse me, it wasn't that. It was killing that woman and killing people on the streets realize they've already moved these people around and potentially right to the border of Israel. So are we talking about the same entities being shuttled around and used? Realize in this picture, if you don't miss it, are Ukrainians, this is even an image from corporate media where he literally has an ISIS patch on his arm. There's two other examples of it right there. It's crazy. It's, and it's easy to prove. It's an Associated Press image. It's not doctored. So I think that's part of this. Here's an older one. CIA recruits ISIS fighters from the SDF-run prisons in Syria to fight in Ukraine. Now, what else are they being used? Now, to show you the overlap of the Ukrainians on the ground already trying to tap into this discussion and even trying to tie it back to Russia, just like the politicians we already saw earlier bringing this whole thing full circle, DD Ge Geopolitics says, here come all the psycho pro-Ukrainians to blame Russia for what's now happening in Israel. Literally. It's all Israel making this happen, in, or excuse me, all Russia making this happen in Israel. So I think what's interesting about this is the same accounts that are lying about what, what's been ongoing in Ukraine are now suddenly lying about what's happening in Israel. Why? Because there's more connected here than we realize. And to finish, Eric Matheny is pointing out, why is it that I've seen more footage of the war in Israel just in the last 10 minutes, this was on the 7th, than I've seen of the Ukraine war in the entire last year? Well, I think it's because what's going on in Ukraine is an entirely managed drag the dog kind of scenario. And that's not to say that people aren't being killed in Donbass. But what we're now seeing is sort of a, this is what, you know, overlaps with what, if it wasn't planned and this was, or taken advantage of, even if it was planned, it seems to suggest that there's more of an organic rebellion happening here. And that's what we're getting people. This is the same point I've made about the, the rockets being, you know, shot in the air and there's no footage for it. The point is that it's being an organic effort. There's people all over with phones taking pictures of whatever they see, Right. 
That's why I pointed out in the past when they're, sh- I'm like, where's all the video of the supposed rockets flying into, into Israel before, the, before they're shot down? Weird how we never see that, despite the fact there's phones everywhere. Now, in an interesting contradiction to that, we see footage everywhere of everything because that's what happens in a real situation. Very interesting. Now, overall, I think a lot of this stuff is very clear. I think the evidence that we have in front of us and all of the contradictions that are being presented and the false information being put forward by those same people exposes the very least that they know what they're doing is wrong. (laughs) Specifically with the civilians they're bombing, but if not everywhere else. Bottom line is, guys, we need to remember where this started and realize that people's lives matter anywhere. And everyone out there trying to sell you as an altruistic idea that only people in Israel should matter are bad people. And I think where we're at now, I think we can see that this is only going to get worse unless more people stand up and express their awareness of what's actually going on. And that doesn't have to mean we agree with every data point, but simply that we need to stop governments from indiscriminately bombing civilians and acting like that's justified, regardless of how it started. Because you realize that's the point from the side of Hamas here, that nobody should claim it's okay to murder Israelis just because they have a justifiable point to fight back against the other, the government of Israel. And that is the Geneva Conventions and the UN occupied territories. And I think that is the main point to sell. So thank you for being here today. Five hours and five minutes. Probably one of the longest we've done. So help me get this out, chop this up and share it. If you'd like to support this platform, we have a lot of ways to do so. The donation portal is right on the website. One dollar a month signing up for recurring donation goes more ways than you could possibly imagine. If we get just a few hundred more people doing so, we can even, you know, the point is that I'm bringing on new people and tomorrow I'll probably be able to tell you about one of them. And to continue to grow this platform and do it the right way, we need your continued support. Now, I'm not asking for the people already out there supporting. I mean, feel free if you'd like to or you have the ability to. But I'm asking for those out there that appreciate this show, that believe in what we're doing, that believe what we're doing is important and that we're doing it in an objective way, even if we may be wrong from time to time. And and that's happened. But I will give myself a shout out in the regard that I think we have an obvious track record that speaks for itself. That if you believe in what we're trying to do, then show that support. Because we don't have advertisements. It's value for value here, as I think the No Agenda podcast made famous. The idea that we're putting out our value. No cost. Because we think it's important. So if you think what that is, what we're doing is important, then show us. Thank you for being here. I love you all, as always. Question everything. Come to your own conclusions. Stay vigilant.